Uh, what can we do here? And my camera's a little pointed up, but I don't want to angle it down too much because it's kind of a janky, super heavy setup. But yeah, if there's no buffering for some people and buffering on others, it's hard for me to, to diagnose if that's my fault or their fault. Keep in mind, there's no CDNs here. So like people in other countries maybe will get it worse just due to like round trip times, but it's a pretty low bandwidth. What is this? This is up to 12, 12 megabit, 12,000 divided by eight, 1.5 megabytes. I feel like I should be able to do that across the world. So I don't know. I don't know how to do the authenticated like usernames and stuff. We're going to try this out. Every time I've watched someone doing these streams on Owncast, it's kind of been shit. Uh, hopefully that's something that's in my control. But if it's not, then I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what we have. And I could, I don't know. Maybe all of them are, are CBR. Uh, no issues with latency in Colorado? Yeah. My ping should be pretty good, and ultimately, it's like a 15-second buffer. So the odds that you fall behind on that are pretty hard. So let's see, when I go to this screen, is this going to affect my bitrate? And I don't think so. Even though I'm doing VBR, it's just going to put all of its encoding prowess onto this corner of the screen. So really, the only way that I'm going to seriously drop the bitrate is by not having a webcam. And obviously, that's not an option because people want to see my face. So we'll play around with this. Uh, as people have issues, I'll try and ask like what their issues are, and we can try and diagnose them. Um, I don't have great insight here, even though everything is running off my end. I just have like a shitty web UI that sh shows like scream health as a percentage, which like who the fuck knows what that means. Um, yeah, so my ping is smaller than your ping. What's your ping to 8888? Look at that, that's pretty good ping. That's pretty good ping, okay? That's pretty good ping. Look at look at that standard deviation. Should I do the what's the flood ping dash f? Is it this? All right, let's do a flood ping. Look at that. Look at that, dude. Look look at that standard deviation. Mwah. Mwah. Worst ping. Slightly slightly worse than the average. Let's fucking go. That's what I like to see. That's some good quality internet right there. Shout out to Comcast for providing my internet. <laughs> but yeah, so far, this is what it looks like for a host. Okay, that's useless, isn't it? So this is currently where we're at hosting this. So you can see it's like jumpy, but that's, that's buffering, right? That's the magic of buffering. Um... It looks like I'm averaging about 41 megabit, which makes sense because I have 15 viewers and the average viewer is probably getting whatever this bit rate is, which is six megabit, which is 90. So maybe some people are on lower speeds. Maybe buffering does magical shit. Maybe my bit rate estimations are not accurate, but that's my actual like outgoing, which is really not that bad. Um, I don't know. <laughs> We'll see how it fucking goes. It might be a shit show. Let's uh, uh, let's fire up some Zenotic. And I'm not going to do this for long, but this is just going to try and stress some of this streaming setup. Hopefully. All right? So, in fact, we'll even do local just so we are just absolutely going for max frames. But in terms of my, my side, encoding and streaming stuff, zero drop frames. Literally zero. So it really comes down to how well this software scales, how well Nginx proxy scales. I would imagine Nginx proxy scales quite fucking well. It probably doesn't do well to a single recipient, but it probably does well to multiple recipients. Um, so yeah. 
so we'll see how how this quality is but this should be like really stressing bitrate and encoding and stuff like that because this is just a super fast paced 3d game with the whole screen making big changes um so yeah how's everyone doing hopefully this stream works I don't know how to use the shotgun, and I don't know this level at all. I have no idea where the spawns are. Here we go. This is the next. Looks good enough? Hell yeah. The quality should, in theory, be better than Twitch. Um, Because I get to set the quality. So on Twitch, I don't think we were able to do 4K60. I think we did 4K30 on Twitch? And that would have been at 6 megabit, so this is at 12 megabit, although I don't know how targeted it is right now to use um, to use the 6 megabit. Because I said the max of 12 and target of 6, I don't know how aggressively it targets 6. Um, yeah. I need the mortar. I don't know how to use any other weapons other than the next and the mortar. Damn. I need the mortar! Also, on these, like, tight maps, I feel like these bots are really good at using the, um... The shotgun... Uh, right-click. I do see compression artifacts, but it seems reasonable. Oh, I won. Yeah, so this is... I should probably turn up that target bitrate. Unfortunately, I can't without starting and restarting the stream. But what about, what about uh, like terminal text? Perfect, here's some red. Red is one of the hardest things to encode. So if you full screen the stream, um, once you catch up to this, if you go to the, the highest quality stream, you should see like pixel perfect colors and fonts here, uh, like blues and reds and everything. But if you do 1080p 60, you'll see that it gets really shit. And the reason that it gets really shit is uh, what we did a stream on before, which was the 420-444 differences. So by forcing 4K, even though this is a 1080p stream or screen or whatever, you get the, I'm upscaling it such that when it's re-encoded to 420, you get all the color information. You don't get that weird blurriness that you get when you switch to the 1080p stream. Looks great in full stream? Fuck yeah. So I, I imagine that it looks the same on my end that it does for other people. Um, which is really all I can do. Gotta hate chroma subsampling. Yeah, I, I've wondered if like I could modify the software myself to allow streaming in 444. But yeah, try try playing around with switching between the different encodings. Uh, see if that breaks anything. Um, I don't have great control over those things, but this is all open source software, and honestly, it has like a pretty big team of people making improvements. So in the grand scheme of things, we could probably get a lot of these things improved if there were issues. Um, so far, it's looking pretty good. Uh, my bandwidth is doing totally fine. I mean, I'm snoozing on this bandwidth. But, yeah. You probably can. It might cause some devices to use software video decoding. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part that I'm a little spooked about. But, um, yeah. I don't know. Sweet. It does look like it is working which is fucking wild. The stream health says one out of 12 viewers are ex uh, consuming video slower than or too close to your bitrate of 1200, which probably just means that someone is watching on like super pleb quality or on their phone or on mobile or something. So um, yeah, I need suggestions. I don't even know what Twitch has for default like streaming qualities and options, but I can add more. Uh, especially like the shittier ones, like the lower bitrate ones, I think are way easier to add. I think I've got a lot of room for, for more there. Um, so I could potentially add like a 480p, maybe a 240p, which is 
effectively just audio only at that point, but maybe add some like 400 kilobit things, just really, really, really low quality streams. Um, but so far I picked kind of what I think a decent smattering is. Um, effectively, if you're on a desktop or on a computer or on Wi-Fi, you probably should just be using the, the like full uh, source stream that's uh, 4K60 at six uh, megabit. Um, but yeah, yeah, I played around with it to get the to get rid of a lot of the artifacts when I was playing uh, Xenotic, uh was I think I needed to go to like 30, uh, 30 megabit, which obviously I could have that as a mode, but it's just a little excessive for anything I do. That being said, since I do variable bitrate, maybe it would be okay, although my video in the corner, my webcam in the corner could cause issues. So, are you getting 60 FPS? Um, I guess mouse movement is my easiest way of telling uh, 60 FPS, so here's some mouse movement. I could also stream in 120 and 144. Like, I'm in full control of what I can encode over here, uh, and FFmpeg with my 3090 seems to be doing fine, especially on Windows. Seem to have, seem to work better on Windows, probably because there's just better support. And then I also have, uh, I had to put in a 100 gigabit NIC into my gaming computer, which I wanted to do anyways. Um, I couldn't put my Mellanox NICs in, so I had to steal one out of one of my, like, powerful computers and grab one of my Intel NICs. But the Intel NICs worked. The installer didn't work. It didn't detect them. But when I manually, like, updated drivers and pointed it to, like, the, the unzipped folder of drivers, it, it fucking found it. And it worked, and I'm, I'm getting everything. That being said, maybe I didn't have to put that in because, you'll, well, I think both computers are doing the, I think the stream is coming from my gaming computer and then I'm receiving that in Nginx proxy and then re-encoding it and adding HTTPS out to you. Um, and I'm doing that on two different computers, which is actually kind of okay for balancing out the load a little bit, but it also means I have two computers that are basically using the full bandwidth that I'm uplinking. But right now with 18 viewers, it's just nothing. It's no load. So um, even the lowest quality is readable and full screen. It's a bit blurry though. Yeah. So I've noticed that the, like, the web UI is not fantastic for this yet, but I bet that that will be the thing that gets better fastest. Um, so yeah, I'm going to preheat my oven because I do need to eat something today. I've been setting all this up. So I'm going to uh, turn on my oven. We'll make like a pizza or something like that. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Hey, Tim. <laughs> I have join messages turned off, but I, there's no way to turn off renaming. Uh, I imagine that stuff will change eventually. Oh, I lost some frames due to encoding lag, but that's okay. I'm expecting to lose 18 out of 150,000 frames were lost, which is really not that bad. So then if we go into this, Hopefully we're really stressing the video quality. That doesn't look like 60 to me. Maybe that is 60. Uh, but that's not a problem with the stream. That's a problem with whatever I am doing for capture. And let's see. Oh, it's literally set to 30. Let's set that to 60. Okay. Oh, let's fucking go! Just then it buffered for the first time. Okay. All right, but only briefly, okay. And I could also maybe turn up the, the buffer windows and stuff and yeah. That's now 60. I was like, man, that looks like shit. And like all of my setup, my HDMI capture card is PCIe based, which is just better than USB for reliability and consistency. But yeah, OBS had this set to 30. 
So now I should be this should be 1080p 30 up or 1080p 60 upscaled to 4k 60 Then it goes out to you. So this should look pretty damn good insane stream quality really I would really like to make this work and you know why I really want to make this work chat You know why? Because I want to do some fucking game hacking on stream. I do so much fucking game hacking. I do so much game hacking. And Twitch is, like, I got banned doing game hacking when I had, like, 50 viewers. That being said, I'm, I've lost all my viewership because I don't stream consistently. But, like, I think at my peak I was at, like, 300 or 400 consistently when I was streaming semi-regularly not that it was ever regular um but i should be able to do that with this setup if it scales <laughs> so if this scales then this will all work so all y all y'all are literally watching me through like i am hosting this out of my house which is so fucking cool like, I really enjoy that a lot. I, I, I like hosting my own shit. I like that kind of early web, uh, early internet days where people kind of hosted their own websites and services and stuff. And it was kind of all, like, obviously it was less reliable and it was a little bit of a clusterfuck. But it was kind of cool, right? You Everyone had their, like, little personal taste of, what kind of software they like run and you had their free bsd people their linux people you had your unix people your solaris people it's just kind of fun to host this shit yourself so what other games besides maple story so tibia i host a tibia server offline on my offline network um which is based it is the um so let's go I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get this to run. Uh, I need to run the query manager. And I need to run the... Uh, there's something else I have to run, I think. I have to run a VM, which is Tibia. That didn't open like I expected it to. I have the query manager running, but basically this is running off of the... Oh, it is running. And then do I have to run it? I think I do. I have to run like bin game. Uh, let's see. Shut down uncleanly. Yeah, not surprised. I think there's one other thing I have to run. Tibia. Um, maybe that is everything. I think the other thing was just for my cheats. Uh, game? Astif Astif? Let's go! Bin run. Bin game. Uh, rm save game.pid. Okay. Did Twitch ban? No, Twitch, Twitch banned me way back in the day, but they haven't banned me recently. But na now I can do whatever I want. If this scales, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It might be a shit show. So yeah, so Tibia had a leak. Someone, someone cored out one of their servers at one point. Um, and basically the whole, actually the game server closed. Okay. So I think that's running. I don't know if like any of my IPs need were hard coded or some shit. Um, and then how do I actually run the game? Nice. Let's see. Come on, please work. Action refused because it's trying to go to the proxy. 
<laughs> Question mark? <laughs> Proxy? Yeah, let's go! We're in! Okay, yeah, so this is, um, this is running. <laughs> There's a reason I'm running CentOS from fucking who knows how long ago. This is like 2003 CentOS because I am running the official game server as it was snapshotted when someone cored out the server in 2006, something like that. So this is Tibia 7.71. Um, so like these people are real people, right? So like these people who are sleeping, these houses, these layouts, this is the state that the official Tibia Zenera game server was in when they cored out this server. Um, so I wrote some little rust wrappers that allow me to basically, you need some like communication stuff for like login and auth and accounts and stuff. Um, but yeah, so this is the actual game as it was with the exception of like house permissions because I would have to handle that in my Rust stuff and I don't. Uh, it's so cool because it's, it's walking through the game in a state that I played it. I didn't play on Zenera, but obviously all the servers, people decorated houses in similar ways. So let's, um, I think I can get into other people's accounts by going into like uh, tibia extract user and then let's do I want to get levels let's like get the highest levels let's do a what do you see level oh is it skill zero comma six I bet that's it skill zero comma one with two more numbers and escape that uh, unless that's not level that looks like level zero comma six am i doing this wrong is it is it a group oh wait what am i doing this Okay, so there are very few people who are over level 100. Here's a level 152, Savage Saint. And the thing is, like, these people are, like, probably legendary people. Like, if I Google Savage Saint, there will probably be info about it. Tibia, uh, Zanera, here you go. Orshball has been killed numerous times. It was first blocked by Savage Saint. So, like, this was the first dude who, like, blocked it. So, this dude's going to be a knight. So, I think I need this ID. And I forget where I have to put this. I have to tear this down, which means I might have to restart the server. I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's do uh, characters. And then those are the IDs. And then let's just do, like, uh, what was his name? Savage Saints. This? I have no fucking idea if this code works. Okay, chat? Just relax. Uh, Alright. And then I had that ID. This one. And this. Yeah. So this is Savage Saint. And he probably has access to some of these houses. I don't know which house this is. But this is like some, some dudes. Like the highest levels account. As, as it was snapshotted in history, which is just fucking wild. Um, I'm curious what houses he has access to. <laughs> what the hell did he get banned for? Not streaming enough. No, I, I, I didn't get banned from Twitch. But yeah, this is literally some dude's account. And it's just so fucking cool, man. Like, 100 axe, 98 shielding. This is just, this is just like... It's it's so cool. Um, anyways, uh, this is not what we're doing on stream today, but this is what we can potentially do on stream. So, anyways, I host this offline, and I host this off. Obviously, this is well, it's not online, but it's on my online network right now. 
But I host this on my offline network where I bot and I, I do a bunch of shit and I just kind of play around with the game. And um, let's see, does this dude have some runes? Come on, give me some fucking runes, man. Yeah, there we go. There we go. He's got runes. That's what I thought. So uh, basically, I host this offline just for something to do when I'm offline, just so I can goof around and have fun and just kind of chill and have something that is not just work offline. So I normally have this up on one monitor. So I've been working on making bots. So I don't allow myself to log into other characters and, and whatever. Um, I'm playing the game solo self-found, right? Where I have to do everything myself uh, with my characters. So the only reason that I have this game in this state is because it allows me to, um, it allows me to have houses filled. So the world just feels a little busier and stuff, which is just really cool. So, uh, basically I've been working on a bunch of bots offline. You saw me do a little bit of that on stream when we did, uh, what, what did I call it? When we were doing like path stuff. And we just kept the like in-game content to a minimum, but in reality, I'm trying to make like pretty thorough bots so I can, you know, explore the game and level. And I, I really want the bots to become like quite good where they make realistic movements and they like optimize the way that they kill mobs. They, they keep distance, they run towards things. They, they have like a decent understanding of spawn timers and the spawns of places. And I think it would just be like really, really fun to, to make that better and better to the point that I want the bots to like log in as like new characters and just explore the world and find stuff. And I, I would love for the bots to like solve quests on their own, like not teach them exactly, give them waypoints to do quests, but they just go out and explore the world and end up just like solving quests and stuff i think that'd be so fun so yeah um that's that's sort of something i like doing obviously maple story cheats i've done my fair share of maple story cheats so i'd love to do more and more maple story cheats um that being said most of my maple story cheats are against live servers so i wouldn't want to do those online um i know that i know that is sad and where am i going why am I lost without a mini-map here? I'm trying to go to the Dragon Lair. I don't remember having to cross this road to go to the Dragon Lair, but normally, yeah, I remember this, so it's this way. Um, so yeah, basically, if this stream setup works, and I can afford to throw more money at this if I need to get uh, computers that are more specialized for this. Yup, uh, Jolo Robin is here, MSN to me. Yeah, like people reserving their spawns and shit. That's why I like having this in in the state the game was in. And since this is running on the official code, like all of the formulas, all of the drop rates are correct. Like this is literally how the game worked. Um, and there's no disputing that because it's it's the actual binary from the from the server that got cored out. So it's just so cool that I can do this. Um, but yeah. Anyways, that's not the point of the stream today. Uh, doing modern Maple Story would be pretty cool. Uh, the client seems to be pretty anti re now. Ooh, interesting. I actually don't have good tech for doing stuff on Windows, and that would be something more to set up. I do most of my stuff on Linux. Um, I'm looking to do a lot more like WoW stuff soon. So I had some pretty good WoW. I, I don't actually plan on cheating in WoW, but I do plan on having like a HUD, which arguably is cheating to some extent. So anyways, just wanted to kind of show this because I can chill this sort of, sort of stuff on stream if I'm doing my own bootleg stream. So we'll shut this all down. Uh, I forget the procedure. I think just control C will do it. And then sudo su, uh, uh, su, shut down H, Ooh, uh, oh. Sue so L, shut down H now. It's because uh, Espen isn't in the path for normal users. A lot of systems kind of did that back in the day, and that seems to be kind of gone. I think FreeBSD did that. So you'll find that I do a lot of like Sue dash L's to like re log in and get the profile. I, I actually don't know what L does. Does it get the profile? 
I don't actually fucking know. And then this is so back in the day that I think this is a halt. So I think I have to force shut down that can that system. So anyways, uh, I got to throw my pizza in the oven because it's done preheating. I'll be right back. As long as I preheated to the right temp, which I don't think I did. Pizza's in the oven. Hell yeah. Okay, test. Okay, you can have two of the same name. <laughs> yeah, so I have no... <laughs> of course. Okay, I'm, gl I'm glad people can still fucking meme and be shitlords. Um, so let me show you, like, what I can do. Let me show you. So here's, like, my stream performance tab. Um, once again, this stream's gonna, like, obviously we've got an end goal here to do some benchmarking, do some perf stuff, but ultimately I'm really testing out this streaming stuff. Because if I can stream on this setup, then that's fucking awesome. <laughs> because then we can do game hacking. Even if it means that I only do this when I'm doing game hacking, I'd love to do all my streaming here. Because, dude, fuck big companies. F fuck all that shit. Like, if we can host this stuff ourselves, let's do it. That's dank as shit. Um, so, this is kind of what I have, like, health status. Two out of 19 viewers are, ex are experiencing errors. Let's refresh it. Uh, yeah, two out of 19. I think there's 30 viewers now, so maybe I have to refresh it by going to here. I don't know. Logs, I don't know. Uh, let's see. So I have like hardware, a little bit of like load stuff. Um, and then chat integration. So I've integrated into the Discord. Here you can see my viewership graph. It's actually looking kind of pog. Um, I see everyone's user agents. So you're gonna get hacked. I'm gonna steal your IPs and hack you. Uh, and then emojis. So what we really need to do is set emojis here. So can someone do emojis? Do they fucking work? And I don't know how to use uh, a blob attention, a blob, a blob. Can't tab complete them. Takes a second to load, but once they load, hopefully it is fast from that point on. Yep. Nice. Nice. Ah? Huh? They work. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Okay, and then since it's my own server, we can just put whatever the fuck we want in here, right? Like, we can put, let's, let's see. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do, uh, it was like a, a fucking L angry. L angry dot ping. 
Don't hack me. And that, that should be in there. I don't know how long that takes to update. I don't know if we'll have to, like, refresh or some shit. I like the thanks one. That's a good one. Perm you're temporarily blocked from sending chat messages. No Keck W. Okay, you want Keck W? Keck W. Uh, which one? Where, where, where do I go for the highest quality Keck W? High quality. Chrome 112 update whoever is on that. <laughs> yeah, what's going on over there? Uh, Keck W. Just this? Do you want this shit quality one? Is, the, is, 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 an, is it inherently important for it to be the low quality one? Let's uh, save that into uh, da down, downloads, downloads, fucking hell, man, such a mess, uh, yep, mm -hmm. and then upload, and then uh, downloads again, downloads, downloads, there we go, Keck W, all right, and then, let's see. Recently used, custom is at the end. And then do I have to like shift F5? Let's do a shift F5, let's see what happens. Hey, we got kick W! Huh? Huh? Look at that! Look at that! The file name will be used as the emoji name. So if I do zero CD, will it change it? No. I'm sure like that sort of shit will eventually go in. Like eventually you'll probably able probably be able to add like keywords and stuff. Um, this software is improving quite quickly. I think it came out in 2021, and this 0 0.1.0 milestone is like a month old, and I think it's like a pretty big update. So a lot of things have improved. First one to find an XSS in chat. No hacking! <laughs> Anyone lose him? No, just you, noob. I like the blobs. The blobs are good, man. All right, that's all we get for now. Uh, let's do some content so we can get more people showing up. Because if we get more people showing up, then we can test the encoding better. Um... So today, chat, we're going to be working on a high-performance atomic queue structure. Um, basically, I've been working on a really interesting uh, new programming threading model that I like quite a bit. And it's not a new thing. It's been done by like a billion other people. It's really not that common. And I called this something. Um... Somewhere I have a test folder, and I forgot what I called it. God fucking damn it. You're already up to 28? Yeah, that's pretty pog. Can we talk from Discord? Yeah, you can, Converter. I'm watching both. I'm only watching stream chat, though. I'm not watching other things. Um, okay. Oh, what the fuck did I name this? What, what is the Geek Pirate Sucks folder? What the fuck was that about? That's just rude, man. Cash perf, benchmark perf, runtime, uh, uh, pay node, uh, oh my god. Uh, Jesus. Where would this have been? Cargo run? Lifetime? Fantastic. Okay. So I've been working on this. Uh, basically, I am working on optimizing the ever-loving fuck out of something that doesn't matter. Um, so that's new to me. Never done that before. Uh, so basically, I'm optimizing the startup time of a program. 
And as part of that startup time, it needs to parse a bunch of files on disk. And to parse a bunch of files on disk, um, well, unfortunately, it's not many files. If it was many files, it wouldn't be a problem, but it's few files. It's like, I have to parse like 20 files. And like two of those files are like 30 megabytes. And then all the others are like 10 to 100K. So normally what I do is just paralyze at the, at the file level. So basically do a lister and fucking for each file in the directory, spin up a thread, fucking parse the li living shit out of it. Maybe cap the number of threads if there are that many files, parse all that shit in parallel, blah, blah, blah. But I can't do that because there are two massive files, which means that I'm not really getting any threading. Like I spin up 30 threads, 28 of them instantly return in like 100 millis, and then two threads are stuck doing shit for 500 milliseconds. And I want to get my app startup time down, and to do that, I have to turn parallelism up. And to, why am I looking at myself? I should be looking into the camera. Hi, chat, how's it going? So to turn the parallelism up, we're going to need to basically find smaller and smaller and smaller units of work. The smaller the unit of work is, the more we can parallelize. But it also means the more the cost of switching between those jobs matters. And in my case, I think I can parallelize this problem down to like 50 millisecond startup time. Which makes everything a hard problem. Because we're actually optimizing for latency. We're optimizing for like making sure that we're, we're able to parse these things, spin up workers, communicate between workers, and delegate work very, very, very quickly. To the point that I plan to have tasks in the size of like 10 to 100,000 x86 cycles, which, what is that, chat? What's, uh, let's do 10 E3, 10,000 divided by 2.1 E9. So that many seconds times 1e6. So like five microsecond tasks. Am I doing that math right? Five microseconds is about 10,000 cycles, which I think is a reasonable size chunk of work. Because any smaller than that, then the, your overheads of like coordinating your work become massive, right? And any longer than that, and you're starting to have work chunks that are so big that you're just going to have cores that end up not being used, right? So we have all those problems. Look at us. Oh, I'm looking at chat. What did I miss? What did I miss? So the same as every project you've seen, Captain. Twitch does have this awesome feature where it kills your stream quality if the stream isn't your main tab. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if this shit will do that. I have no idea. I don't know if the view count's accurate. Um, but this is the this is the bandwidth right now. Looks like we peaked at 356, so we're spiking. I wonder if people like get I wonder if even though the streams are buffered, if things will like sync up to like people getting bursts at the same time. Um just due to like side effects of timing. But yeah, so right now bandwidth is really not that bad. We're at like hundred megabit. Well, averaging 73, and I, I don't know how big that average window is. N load H, N load T. Refresh interval is 500, so it's refreshing twice a second. A period. Uh, length in seconds of the time window for the average calculation. So let's do A, and then we'll say... Uh, what's a good averaging window? Let's say 60 seconds. That's like four stream buffers, uh, which I think is good. And then the max inbound scaling in kilobits. Let's set that to uh, four. One, two, three. That's four megabits. That's four gigabits. And then, oh, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this now is basically showing my like actual network capacity. So this is like the graph is going up to four gigabit, which is roughly what I can afford. And 
we'll see that average we'll, we'll just leave that up and that average will kind of average out but yeah right now maybe 90 megabit which is really not that bad i'm at what 1 40th of capacity um and if that's 28 people what's 28 times 40 yeah it could go up to like a thousand viewers and that's pretty good because i don't think i'll ever get a thousand viewers my upload is four gigabit so test <laughs> hell yeah so uh basically i want to really work on this so chat do you have any workloads that simulate this problem well so i don't want to actually use my real problem set uh because i don't want to give away too much what i'm working on because this is part of like a larger project but are there similar things to this of like 30 files where they can be split up in pieces so the files that i'm working with have like a bunch of tables in them there's like it, it, they're almost like elves uh where elves maybe would almost be a good example but maybe not exactly so they're like kind of hand compressed files where they have like string tables and a lot of things that like point to those tables but there's like 10 or 15 or i don't know probably actually like 50 different tables in there and in the header it's saying like the offset to the table and the size of the table in, in elements and all of them are like references so the table is actually an array of of offsets into the file where it can find that element and that means it's like inherently parallel because inside of a file i can like parse the file i can decompress the file and then once it's decompressed i can to multiple threads using uh, a thread scope i can hand that work off to multiple of those multiple of those threads um and then i can tell them what range they are responsible for so this obviously only works for formats where you can split up the data into chunks and there's some formats where you can't do that where you need to parse them in sequence right if you if you had to parse them in sequence then you're fucked because you literally can't split up work until you have parsed the data beforehand but a lot of formats do have ways you can split up work so uh my pizza's ready so i'm gonna grab my pizza i'll be right back fiber some weird coax it's uh fiber Great. Fill my water. Be right back. All right.
Can you do AV1 with own cast? Um, not out of the box, but I'm like under the hood. It just uses FFmpeg. How is this 60 FPS? I'm gonna actually look at my stream for my for the first time to see what the quality is like. Quality is okay. Uh, it's definitely 60. That's good. Nice. All right. So I've got my pizza here. Chat, what should we do while I eat my pizza? I'm gonna turn on some music. Uh, chat, what do you want for music today? Let's do a... What's like a good DJ set? D D D D D D. D D D. I like how everyone's fucking Benny. K-pop? I don't listen to K-pop. And I feel like I have to log into my fucking YouTube account every time I go to YouTube these days. Kind of cringe. And I, I check don't ask again on picking between my two accounts. And it's never happy. Now known as noob. What up, noob? I have no idea how to do, like, the verified nickname shit. That's kind of interesting. But. All right. Let's do... I could put on my mix, and my mix right now is pretty, pretty good. So hopefully that's not too loud. Like negative 35 dB, I could maybe go a smidge lower than that. Perfect. All right, I'm going to eat my pizza for a bit. Chat, what do we do while we, uh, while we eat pizza? What's the, what's the strat here? Do we write code? Do we try to explain things? So basically, um, I've been working on like using this as my model. So the model here is that I have like an enum that I'll manually define, which is a, a chunk of work to do, like a discrete chunk of work. And then basically I just queue up that, that fucking work and threads will pop work and then do it. So all of the information that needs to be able to pro all of the information you need to be able to process work needs to be in the enum. So like in this case, I have two things. One that is set up a filmy and another that is set up uh, some strings. And there's this new API in Rust called spare capacity mute which is fucking beautiful. Um this is, this is my, like, new favorite API. So it allows you to get the, on a vector, it allows you to get the spare capacity. So basically from len to dot capacity. So the unused part of the vector, it allows you to get access to that as maybe uninit. So you can go and init that in. So in this case, like, I'm using that here where I can queue up some work to set up a filmy here. And then when I hit that fill me, I fill it in. I allocate a vec with capacity of 1024. And then I split up that work into uh, 64 string chunks. And I push that as different work. And then when I initialize the strings, I wait one second. And then I fill in the strings. And basically, this should take two seconds to run. It might take three. Yep, there it took two seconds to run. And the reason it took two seconds to run is because I have 1,024 strings, I have 64 chunks, and I have eight threads. So each thread will process two chunks. And two chunks is a second per chunk, so it takes two seconds to run this whole thing. So like in theory, this actually, I think, works out with Rust lifetimes and everything. I'm kind of spooked, but yeah. Do we have Kappa here? No, do you need a Kappa? Benny is just broken link there. A, be a Benny is a seagull. <laughs> you can do AV1 with WebM slash dash live streaming. No idea if Owncast can do that. Hmm. I'd imagine Owncast probably uses WebM under the hood. What is the broken image? <laughs> Chad, do y'all need a kappa?
Hmm. Oh my god, chat. I'm testing the sanitizer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't hack me. <laughs> it's using HLS. What the fuck is HLS? HLS. Streaming. Hmm. I see. Can traverse any firewall or proxy server. Good. Huh. What's the WoW's streaming engine? Java based. <laughs> it's a Java app. But I want to. Oh, God, this pizza is so fucking good. I had the hunger sweats. I was starving. Uh, Chad, give me some, give me some Wikipedia game challenges. Where, where do I need to get from, from HTTP live streaming? Those are your valid characters? That's pretty strict. That's pretty strict. Can't be a dot or a percent? That's actually not very strict at all. Is there a length limit for an emoji tag? No idea. Sorry that I'm eating, chat. I had to. I know this is where I lose everyone. Someone just needs to get me started on a rant. Say something that's like a hot take. Is this thing on? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> Java isn't that bad. Oh, oh my fucking God, dude. Are you kidding me? Java isn't that bad? Some bullshit. What's up, G Catwork? How are you doing, G Catwork? <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, Java isn't that awful. Java is what most devs should be forced to use. Because most devs should not have access to pointers. Um, honestly... Dev shouldn't even have access to explicit fucking allocations. Good, good. Oh my god, dude, this pizza is killing me. This is literally like my YouTube playlist right now is absolutely everywhere mainly like older music getting that fitty most devs should use go is that true what's the case for go like why why should people use go 
Java is the spork among the silverware? <laughs> Java's fucking fantastic. Dynamic ad insertion? There's a spec for that? Inline insertion of Q-tones in MPEG TS streams. Chow, what's Time Warner up to these days? That's their headquarters? Is that a good headquarters? I feel like that's a that's a solid like A tier headquarters. Java is only big because it's taught at every single university and everybody thinks they know it because of this. I hate it. To be honest, I don't think I've ever met someone who like actually knows how to write Java. Goes FFI support is horribly slow because it involves a lot of messy pinning junk. Really? What does it do? Does Wikipedia have a dark theme? Where would that be if I was a dark theme? As far as I can tell, Go is just the lesser of two evils in every design decision. So it's just a, a simple, straightforward language for better and worse. I do think Go is a better Java, but I think C Sharp is just more established and has been around longer. And it, like... I feel like C Sharp just does everything that Go does. Except it's been around way longer. Is that a hot take? I think C Sharp's a really good language. I'd never fucking use it because I don't write slow code. But. Is that a hot take? I don't think so. Pack Bypass. I like that name. I think the browser will remember your name as well. I have no idea how to do the authenticated stuff, though. India auth? Federated? Decentralized? Why are we here? Twitch boycott? Nah, because this is cool, man. Because we can do cool shit here. We can do hacking here. We can do game hacking. One more piece of pizza chat, and then we can write code. I swear. I promise this time. I should set up my server. Uh, uh, polar salt. Trying to boot. I don't know why this is in my playlist. Feels like a sponsored thing. <clears throat> Already started at the queue? No, we haven't done shit yet, dude. I'm gonna eat pizza. Why is that timing out? Oh. Is it? Hmm. I think I know what it is. Ah. 
spam oh god i almost thought i got an ad no ads here that's another benefit there's no ads here man isn't that good I think the Go FFI being slow has to do with their M to N threading and that they have a moving GC. Hmm. If they have a moving GC, they need to wrap everything then, right? Or mark huge swaths of things non movable. Chat, what should we run for an ad here? What's a good ad? Um, Raid Shadow Legends. Oh my god, chat. Wow, this game is so good. I was just playing this game the other day, and wow, I was having so much fun when I was conquering the universe, and I play an orc. Join my clan with my clan tag, because I play this game a lot. And it's really fun. <laughs> um, so don't forget to buy Raid Shadow Legends. What's Molly Rocket? What's this? Hashtag ad. Great article I read today on what? Is this perf? You got CPU boost? You can press the boost button? Hmm. What's better here? Lower is better. Okay. I like when they tell me which one's better. Well, obviously, Rust is just the best. Wait, no, Rust is bad. It's bad. Molly Rocket is Casey Muratori's? What the fuck is that? I don't know what that is. Is this Molly Rocket? Is what? The only Casey I know is Casey Neistat. <clears throat> it's 17 times faster than C++ standard lib? That's literally impossible. You know what? I think I might grab more slices, chat. I'm sorry, but I think I need more than five today. I'm fucking hungry. Be right back. Lol. W. I'm Twitch chat. Fuck yeah. This is Casey, and this better not be a porn link. Is anyone watching the stream via like MPV? Does that work? Hello? Oh, they do programming stuff? Clean code is horrible performance? That's a hot take. My code's so fucking clean. Oh my god, chat, we need to do a reaction stream. Right? Why aren't we doing reaction streams?
Can stream be played with MPV? I have no idea. I would imagine, yes. He has great content about perf. I don't know. I don't know. No, what is this editor? Oh my god, this editor is so bad. What's this language? What the fuck is this language? C++? Function? Inter is this C++? What the fuck? What's, what's function versus internal? I ain't convinced. Philosophies of optimization? People watch these videos? Who the fuck watches perf videos? He must have great personality. And a custom editor. Fucking nerd. Looks like he does a lot of uh, graphics stuff. Hmm. Huh. Dick, what's up? Oh my god, we're up to 30 viewers? Holy shit. I swear this is the last piece of pizza. There's technically one more, but I'm not going to eat it. Are we going to have the best uh, song come up here soon? I think so. Wait another one and a half hours? I should just make a, a view botting thing. Wait, I run the server. I could just lie about the view numbers. Back to go. Rust is slow. What the fuck is this? The fuck is this? People are now writing formal academic papers debunking Rust lies about the safety and the rest. What the fuck is this? Is this a meme? This has to be a meme, right? Russ is bad for the world? There are still zero significant projects in Rust. Who the fuck cares? Learn and watch your career. Learn and watch your career die. Is, it, is this an April Fool's? Is this a meme? It has to be an April Fool's, because it comes off as, like, fucking schizo. Like, who fucking talks about shit like this? Unironically. Like, I'll ironically sh shit on stuff. Like, dude, I'll shit on Russ fucking LVM code gen all day long, because it's fucking dog shit. But that's... That's... Way different. Zero significant projects in Rust. And it's just so weird. Learn it and watch your career die with it? First of all, fuck careers, man. But look. Like, who fucking cares? Logic bugs are logic bugs. Ooh! Ooh, does he bring up the point that you can, like, overwrite a file and safe rust?
It has conspiracy theory vibes? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he's definitely not going for clickbait either. Like... I, I know that, like, he wouldn't do clickbait because he's got 10k fucking subs. So, like, if he was... If he was regularly going for clickbait, he'd have way more subs than that. Like, 10k subs is just how many you get by just having a small audience. I, just, I have no fucking subs. Because I don't clickbait, y'all. I only come at you with the truth. All right, I'm going to blow my nose, and then I'll be back, and then we'll write code, and then I'll stop making excuses. Code. He streams daily? Yeah, that's fucking lame, dude. Only losers stream that often. Uh, ooh. Oh, I think I have the big kernel in there. So we're gonna do our dev, hopefully, in sushi roll today? Remember last time we tried to use sushi roll and it went fucking awful? Uh... What did I, what did I do? Make, run? Cargo run. Here's a course that Casey made as about writing decent perf code. Computerenhanced.com. What the fuck is that link? Dad, how do you like this? How do you like this stream link? Do you like that one? Yeah, it looks good to me. It talks about like actually how computers work. Cool. All right. Yeah, sounds like it actually works. It's not just big O. Yes. Nice. Kernel source main. 152. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Core online. Bam, 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 bam. Build. Fill the build kernel. Go fuck yourself. 310. And what? Undefined behavior? The fuck you mean that's undefined behavior? I've been doing that forever. arenas okay let's just do it fucking right oh my god dude why is this code so goddamn picky chat oh just cast the use size in the middle get the fuck out of here with that shit it's been a while since i've watched a stream of robs but i remember him having some good knowledge but also willing to die on some weird hills yeah I mean, I do the same shit, right? Like, ultimately, <clears throat> anyone who's good at things is going to have shitty takes because y you just kind of have to. Uh, this is a global, Alec. Like, you're just going to have you're going to have shitty takes because you're so far up your own asshole in, like, your own fucking domain that you just lose touch with reality. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to be realistic with this, with the fact that you're a piece of shit like everyone else. You know, like just don't make, don't make fucking claims of correctness and like, and you're fine. Like you can, you can be wrong as long as you're not confident and it's fine. You know. Uh, where the fuck uh, is this code? Honestly, it might be time to c tags this shit. Uh. <laughs> All right, chat. Actually, can you get chat at on the screen? The white layout in the bottom is killing me. Can't do theater mode like in Twitch. Let me see if I can change that for you uh, real quick. Uh, uh, stream. Uh, boop, boop, boop. 
So I can change appearance, right? So I didn't want to fuck with this because I don't like presets. But what's chat background? That? Bam. Okay. Is that going to fuck the page being usable? Also, I don't know if that take. Oh, save colors. How rounded should corners be? Chat, how rounded? Honestly, a good 50% is pretty good. There you go. It's a little darker. You want it darker? Chat, give me a, a good color scheme. The text is kind of shit to read. You're kind of shit to read, all right? Let's do a dark color scheme. A dark color palette. Pick a palette, chat. What do you want? What do you want? Someone send me a fucking good palette so I can copy a palette. I like pretty dark for a background, like, like, like very dark. S Make text light darker. That's the bottom banner in the, br uh, I see. Well, I want a different color scheme. Copy Twitch. I'm not copying Twitch. Dude. That's cope. Uh, oh my God, dude, that icon is sick. Discord has a good color scheme. It's too burnt for me. It looks like a washed out screen with bad color settings. I like, I like a little bit darker than that. Down to the flow and I wanna, ah, ah, you mix so good. I don't want to leave, but I gotta. See ya. What about like the blue ones? What about this one? This looks like German. Let's try this. Copied. Text dark. Uh, let's do like a green, like a hacker green. That man is ludicrous. Woo! In the public eye. Text chat. How do you like the chat text? Page content. Let's just do fucking zero on that. Chat background, let's just do black on that. Let's refresh, see how this looks. You're not to be mad at me. This is kind of cool. It's like maybe too dark. Use the Vim scheme. I, I don't know how to view that. I like tort. I like the tort scheme. What about pop out chat? Uh, well, I don't, I, I don't. I didn't dev the software. <laughs> Honestly, this is not terrible. You know, that sold out. Right? How, how is this chat? Like, this is at least pretty damn dark. I'm down with this one. Yeah, it's not perfect, right? But it's fine. Do the damn thing. All the song. It's just a little bit darker, but I, I think that's good, right? Yeah, because I can do like custom CSS and shit, and like we could tweak it more and more, but I think this is at least like nice and dark for people. Oh, what about the text chat? What's the text box? Make the stream title more readable. It's at the top in white for me. But I can go to this for the dark text. Let's try this. Vim color schemes dark. These are too blue. Bamboo, moon, ooh, I like moonfly. 
Okay, how do I how do I view it? How do I view it though? With me. And how do I view it though? I want the fucking hex codes. I like Moonfly. I loud scripts now, everything is nicely dark. Yeah. Oh, I didn't save that new color. There we go. Saved. There we go. How's that? You're gonna have to F5 that. Um, so these are a little dark the little I think this is fine. I just wish the chat text box was dark. I don't know if I'm in control of that. Um Because that's like, yeah, I don't think I have control of that. Someone could maybe read the code and figure that one out. I, I don't know. It's at least better than what it was, right? Can the video be properly scaled? What do you mean? What do you mean? It scales correctly for me on Linux. Could be a different thing in browsers. Doesn't scale horizontally. Pop out and scale it. Can pop it out. Okay. I'm not going to change any of, like, the actual code. I'll change, like, these fucking things that are easy. Stream is kind of stuttery for me. That might just be you. Try turning down the quality. Um, yeah, because I'm not even close to hitting bandwidth issues. So, you just must have bad routing to me. Pause that, because I'm not dropping frames or anything, and I'm I'm not even close to touching bandwidth issues. So, how sick is this? Who needs Twitch? Isn't this pretty good? I think being able to change the the chat box color would be nice. But like, I actually like this kind of like super black neony color scheme. I think this is good. <laughs> let's uh, let's get this working. Uh, what do we have to do here? Oh, chat. We can do that ourselves with user scripts. Yeah. So also, I mean, it's an it's an open source thing. It's uh, own cast, right? So if you go into fucking own cast, it's all just done on GitHub. Fucking wherever the shit that is. GitHub. Here we go. So, like, you can do PRs and shit, and, and like, it's, it's under pretty active development. Like, it's under very active development. So, yeah. It's got a Go-based backend. Not at Recon? No, I'm not. Pretty solid, yeah. Yeah, and right now I'm at uh, 32 people watching, and I'm at 88 megabit right now. So basically, until like I get popular, which I never will, um, I should be able to just stream on this. I think the only maybe issue is that I'm not using a CDN. Why is my webcam darker than this is? I think that's interesting because I'm way darker over here. Let's see. Color range limited. Color range full. Oh, obviously I want limited. Um, 422. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why it's darker. 
Maybe it's just because that screen brightness is just so much brighter. Huh. <laughs> oh, what's this link? Oh, oh, God. Oh, wow. Wow, what are the odds, dude? Oh, 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 my God. Wow. Oh, you got me. Tech W. All right. Uh, chat, so one of the things that I would like to maybe start using, and it's mainly because Rust on the command line sucks ass, I've thought about maybe using Vim Rust language server stuff just for warnings and errors. Can I do that, chat? Is that legal? Or do they all suck? Because if they all suck, I'm just not going to use them. <laughs> Got me too. Helix? What's Helix? Is this censored now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, this is the song. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait how good this song is. Ready? This is the best censorship ever of any song. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Here it comes. It is the best goddamn censorship ever. It's literally like five seconds of censorship. It's fucking fantastic. It makes me laugh every time I hear this song. I actually prefer this to the original because it's so good. It's so good. It's it's the it's this very specific version. This was back when like everything was super uh, censored on YouTube. Damn right. Next flank. Here he comes. It's so much gone. It's so good. It's so fucking good. <laughs> Chad is clearly fucked on my mobile device. I, I start trying to delete stuff and it writes more. Well, don't make mistakes. All right, let me turn this down now. I think this is about where I keep it. Negative 35 dB. Insert explicit lyrics here. Dude, it's so good. I wish more songs did that. I, I think there were some... Oh, this is... An, Helix is an editor? Looks like shit. Looks like ass, dude. Fucking trash. I'll just stick with this. The, my biggest issue with Rust is that warnings and errors are intermixed based on how they're encountered as it parses files. And it leads to, like, errors can be way up the stack, especially if you, like, just commented out a bunch of code. If you just commented out a bunch of code, then you have, like, a bunch of unused stuff. So you have, like, three pages of unused warnings, and then you have some error randomly buried in there, and it's so annoying, man. Could be a little louder, the music. Okay, let's go to negative 30, then. <coughs> <laughs> Let's see. My mic seems a little quiet, too. Oh, it's spun. Oh, there you go. Yeah, my mic wasn't facing you. It was facing down. So this is probably a little bit better quality now. I was like, man, I'm not hitting my compressor nearly as much. I, I normally try to always be on my compressor. But that should be an improvement. I think there is a car... That's the wrong version of there. Zorik, that's the wrong version of there. Cringe. Cringe. Cringe! <laughs> Bad at English! 
loser. Just put an allow warnings in your file. <sighs> loser. Uh, for global allocator. Here we go. Uh, okay. So, mute, mute, mute. And why am I casting that to mutable? Keep in mind, this is like before I knew Rust when I wrote this code. This would have been like one of my very first Rust projects five plus years ago now, which is wild to think about how old this kernel is. Um, allocate size, arenas, fast heap. That just doesn't look safe at all. Layout size, align it up, 64 by boundary. If enable fast heap, is fast heap on? It's on, it's on. Um, if it's not null and there's an entry in the free list, yeah, that's just not safe. Oh, it is safe. Because it is, oh, dude, I forgot how dank this kernel is. Yeah, so, uh, basically, let's just make that, uh, let's just do this. Let's do, uh, guess we want to put the whole thing and maybe on in it. Who <laughs> wrote this? Uh, okay, so, or not unsafe, uh, uh, unsafe on in it? No, unsafe cell. And what needs to be in an unsafe cell? The whole fucking thing? Oh, boy. Um, okay. We'll just have global allocator internal. Pub struct global allocator. And then this is going to be a uh, uh, unsafe cell. Around blah for interior mute ability. Hey, okay. uh, use core cell unsafe cell. I'm glad that that's now undefined behavior. It's good. It's good that we have to do this. Chat one of four pub struct. Uh, unsafe cell new. Uh, and this is self. This is before I knew that you could use cap s self. Fucking wild, man. I, I fucking love old code, dude. Uh, mute self. Okay, uh, let's... Int internal is equal to self dot, and then unsafe cell. Unsafe cell, get mute should work, yeah. I can't reassign self, can I? I don't think so. I can't do let self equals, I don't think. So internal is equal to self dot get mute, self dot zero dot get mute. Uh, and then this is just going to be int. Okay, and then this is just going to be boop, 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 skiddy boop, bow, skiddy dee boop. And self dot with, uh, int dot. All right, now we're getting close. Maybe. Uh, global allocator internal. Come on, you bitch. Uh, global allocators, GA. I guess, should I just implement? Ah, yeah. Mm, I don't like that. We'll, we'll keep doing that on self. 
And this is going to be on global allocator int. Okay. Okay. Now we're based, chat. A uh, functioner associated item not found on GA, which is global allocator. We'll do a uh, global allocator dot get mutes dot zero dot get mute. Okay. I don't know why I'm putting it in a paren. Uh, 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 46. Alec fizz not found in this struct. Yup. I have no idea why I'm doing the two colons there, but I'm doing it. I'm skipping it. Hello. Two oh. We're getting rid of undefined behavior, chat. This is the right thing to do, okay? Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Rolling smell like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I know you like to say, yo, shit don't stand. I lost that in my clipboard, so we're gonna type it out again. And I need a dot zero dot. Chat is dead? Is chat frozen? Yes. Yes. There's actually no one left in chat. Oh, fuck me. Please. Right. Crash into a ditch, just playing. Two Three fourteen. There we go. Self mute. Now this is self dot zero dot get mute. Be a little bit closer. Smell like ooh, ooh, ooh. Is it happening, chat? Self mute. Self mute. Come on, chat. I'm not even reading the code. I'm just making changes. Arena is not found on global allocator. What do you mean? Uh, cause this is impled on, uh, oh. Hmm. What's the, what's, what's going on here? 369, old, self-mute, arenas. Oh, because I reassign it like a fucking womboid. The chat bars next to chat have a Star Trek feel to it? Is that good or bad? Dot get mute dot zero dot. Jesus Christ, just build already, dude. We have to be close, chat. Come on! Your alias mem? Oops. No, nope, that is self. Oh, let's go! We're close. We're close. 
We're close. This is CPU introspection. Uh, no way. Bam. And then we just have to make this pub. And then we just have to make this. That. Where are my use statements? Do I, do I have no use statements? Holy dick. I have no use statements. Uh, use core cell unsafe cell. Fuck! Uh, these can't be get mute. These have to be dot get. And then we'll do some casting couch. Like that. Uh, a kernel source CPU introspection, 83. What's this bitching about? A uh, clone on a double reference, which returns a stir instead of cloning the inner type. I think that was the intent. And let's update Rust, make sure we can build it. Apologize. Disabling low latency helped reduce the stutter. Yeah. Yeah, that's like pretty experimental right now. Makes it easier to spot text from individual users. I kind of agree. I, I like it quite a bit. All right, Chad, is this going to build with latest rust? Odds? Cargo run clean. Cargo run. Here we go. Here we go, chat. We're gonna figure out if this fucking builds on latest Russ. It should. I, I don't think anything's changed that much. Beautiful. Bootloader, 72% utilization. So we're good there. Ever, ever. Beautiful! Let's fucking go! And then we'll reboot that server. Chat, we're gonna be in business here. Remote control, power control, reset server. Yes! Here we go, chat. Let's fucking go. And right now, we enable AVX 512, which is cool. And then hopefully this will boot. Let's fucking go. I need a let's fucking go emote, dude. Bam, bam, ba, 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 ba. All right, let's boot, baby. Hey, 95 and uh, 96 cores online. I guess we aren't, uh, we're, uh, 
we turned off hyper threading. And now we should be able to soft reboot. Beautiful. Downloading via HTTP? How? 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 I don't think I have. I don't think I have an HTTP kernel set up. What? How is that happening? <laughs> Do I have this set up? Downloaded file. Let's see. Let's try and make a change. Let's do... Uh, let's do, uh... I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just gonna... I guess, no, it, we know it worked because we changed the kernel. Downloading via HTTP? I... I... I what? Really? Uh, Etsy, Nginx... tftp.bfa.lk Huh. Huh. All right. It's set up. Yeah, look at that, dude. Look at look at this chat. Build my kernel, fucking run it. Look at this soft reboot. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. Got 400 milli boot time. That's cringe, man. Fuck yeah. You know what? We'll put the we'll put the the no this. We'll go this way. You don't need to see the build messages. Dude, look at this. It's beautiful. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you changed this on stream some time ago. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's beautiful. All right. I think my butt getting big. All right. Uh, I did put my 10 gig nick back in today because I actually took my 100 gig nick out of this box to put it in my gaming computer for streaming. <laughs> so, so yeah, now we have networking back in this kernel. So we can actually download like large payloads and do big benchmarks and upload stuff and I don't know if I even have upload stuff, but I should have a TCP stack that kind of works. I think it's a pretty bad TCP stack. I think this might be my first TCP stack. So it's pretty shit. Uh, but I think it works. There might be some edge cases. It might catastrophically fail if a single frame is dropped. Um, all right, so what we want to do is... Yep, we have eight Numa nodes. Um, I actually want to go into the BIOS because uh, I'm just curious what state this BIOS is in. Well, I know that uh, I know that hyper threading is disabled, and I know that um, Numa, uh, or more specifically, um, what is this called? The two nodes per socket. What the fuck is this called? Uh, that's enabled, uh, SNC, subnuma clustering, SNC, yeah, oh, uh, and those are the only two settings I care about, I don't know about turbo, I don't know if turbo is enabled or disabled, um, I think that's my only concern, is I, is I don't know my current turbo state, okay, so what I want to do is I want to make an atomic queue, uh, and it just needs to support push back and pop front. So there will never be removes and the backing vector is going to be fixed size. But we're going to dev this inside my OS um, because, because my OS is better than Linux. And we'll show you why, maybe. I don't, I don't fucking know. It'll be probably hard to tell for a benchmark. 
because it probably doesn't it probably doesn't fucking matter at all. Um. Okay. And then I think I get n no local allocations in this kernel. Something like that. Is sub numa clustering the core to core latency stuff uh, you were looking into at one point? Yes. Um. That's because each physical socket on my system. On this, these are uh, Intel 65 N's, and they have uh, their 24 cores each. Yeah, they're 24 core processors, but they have two. Um, they have two memory controllers on the chip, and that means that one of them is more local than the other. So the actual like, uh, it's actually like not a huge difference. Um. LS Topo. So this system, I think, will have the same thing, but it's probably not configured. Um, yeah, I don't have this set up on this box. So this box, I don't have sub numa clustering set up. But nevertheless, the latency is only slightly better. It, it's like, ah, uh, I guess we could go. Uh, we could show you what it's like. Do you want to see what it's like? Pizza signal. Yeah, you wanna see what you wanna see what latency looks like? Yeah. If thread core ID is not equal to four CPU halt. Print line woo! Okay, so we just should have one woo. So we're just picking a, a random core here, and then I should be able to do allocations on different nodes. Kernel source m m m m m. alloc node. Oh, baby. Oh, I, oh, I have cache disabled as well. <laughs> wonder, what, wonder what that was for. <laughs> what up, Rebel, Rebel Elder? How are you doing? Um. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do some node alloc. Let elk is equal to mm alloc node uh, 4k. These are going to be page aligned anyways. This is a physical memory allocation. Is it? Eh, it gives me a slice. Um, Node 0. And then we're going to do cache disable is false. Dot on wrap. And hopefully we got an allocation here. Um, Colonel Karatomel. I'm surprised it's taking that long to build. I feel like that's a really long build time, but whatever. Okay, yep, we got an allocation and perfect. All right, so allocations are working. Oop. Could not download Kernel. Yeah, that's my shit HTTP stack. That's all right. We'll just have to reboot it. I wonder if that's a TCP issue or an HTTP issue. I missed the start. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Still don't uh, know how you choose what Numa node the allocation will go on to. Um, you'll pick the... I mean, that's up to you. It just has lower latency. So you're going to pick whatever one is closest, pretty much. I wonder why that failed. Download via that. Download in that. Could not download kernel. Hmm. I don't know. This kernel's a little bit flaky because I've I've hacked on it a lot, and it's just I don't think this kernel has really ever been in a stable state. It just kind of it gets the job done. Uh. Okay. So we're gonna do an alloc node, and then let's do that's a slice of bytes. So we're going to cast that into a slice of U sizes, I think. And we're going to need more than that. Let's grab, like, uh, oh, could we just disable cache? Can we just disable cache? <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, core, pointer, read, uh, a volatile, uh, elk, zero, unsafe. Can I just do this? And if this HTTP thing keeps being an issue, we'll have to fix it. And it's going to keep being an issue, isn't it? Okay. 200. Oh, nice. Uh, divided by uh, 1 e6. We can even do more than that. Let's go. This will be 2 bill. Ah, that's a lot. This, this is fine. Um, okay, so let's do some four node in zero to eight. Allocate the node, then we'll say node latency. We'll do like 10.6. Yeah, we'll do like 12.6. Six is a little aggressive. Node latency on node. And then we'll do this, and then we'll alloc on a node. This. This might just tell us the latency because I have cache disabled as a fucking API. Let's fucking go! God, I write such good fucking code! Oh, yeah! Time to add indie auth to my server. I, yeah, I've never... I don't know how indie auth works. I'll probably set it up on my own as well. Beautiful! Beautiful! Ho! Oh. Oh, ho, baby! Oh, ho, baby! Oh my god, are we seeing... God, these latency numbers look really good. I think Turbo is on. Uh, Turbo looks on to me because these, see how these are like 3-3 three, three and 6-6 six, six and 6-6 six, six and 6-6 six, six and I feel like something feels 30 here. So let's, uh, let's go into the BIOS. Let's do some hacking in the BIOS. We're going to put this into deterministic mode. So we're not going into maximum perf, we're going into maximum determinism. Okay? I feel like the server's booting really fast. Delete to run setup. Entering the setup. We're going in, chat. We want max perf. No, we're going for stable. We're going for stable. Okay. Uh, let's see. Boot feature, quiet boot, palm boot, none of that shit matters. CPU configuration. Hyper threading is disabled. Execute. Uh, let's turn VT off. VT is expensive. Hardware prefetcher, all of these are good. LLC prefetch, we'll turn that on. Extended APIC, we'll turn that on. Actually, we'll turn that off because I don't think I have that support. In no, I have to have that support in Sushi Roll. Um, that's all good. ASNI won't do anything. Power technology disabled. I guess, does that turn off turbo? I think that might. Chipsets. We got the uppies. I think it might already be in a deterministic mode. Where's the uh? Where's subnuma clustering? Memory configuration. Um, 
Why don't I see it? Is it IMC interleaving? I don't think so. I think it's somewhere else. Oh, SNC. So, yeah, right here. SNC enabled. Okay. In fact, we're going to go to optimize defaults. So, we've just defaulted everything. So, now... So, yeah, I think something's in there I didn't want. Um, I think I did more tweaking than I should have. So, we're going to turn off hyperthreading. Hyperthreading is off. VT, we'll turn that off. We'll turn on LLC prefetch. We'll turn off power technology. Unless that hurts us. Unless we want to do this and say BIOS controls EPB. Max performance. And then we'll set the P state control. Speed step disabled. PBF disabled. P states disabled. C states disabled. He states disabled, so let's see. That looks pretty good to me. And then we go into chipset, north bridge, memory, uh, uh, UPI, SNC, enable that. And then this is looking pretty good. And then, uh, yeah. God, and hopefully I didn't break my IPMI. Or not my IP, my, my, uh, fucking, uh, pixie boot. So let's see. This should be the most deterministic setup. I mean, there's, like, slightly more tuning you can do, theoretically. Uh, but this is pretty close. So let's see if we can measure anything in this environment. We're using core number four. And we're bypassing caches. Um, honestly, I think I need a fence. Yeah, let's do this. Um, warm the, uh, the, uh, page tables. And then we'll do unsafe core, uh, pointer, read volatile, elk. So basically what I want to do is I want to warm up the, um, this is warming up the TLBs because even though cache is disabled on the actual backing allocation, um, cache is still going to be active on uh, the page table walk itself. So we're going to hit that because this is new memory that we probably haven't walked yet. So we're going to hit the memory by force here. And then let's do a CPU uh, M fence. And then we'll do an M fence here and an M fence here. So this will make sure that that load has completed, which means that everything's warmed up in our caches. And then this is going to benchmark and make sure none of that escapes. And let's see what we have here. Beautiful. Um, and let's see if maybe I can subtract off the RDTSC overhead cost. Um, bam, let's try this, right? That's mimicking our, the cost of our actual, uh, benchmark. I think this will get unrolled for me. If it doesn't get unrolled, then that's a problem. Yeah, this isn't going to make a change because we're doing so much averaging here. Um, so what I would imagine is that I am on... Numa node one in this case. Um, it's interesting that these are uh, like this. I wonder what causes that. So these nodes, huh? So I think all this warming stuff is just unnecessary. If we're doing that much averaging, if we're trying to like single shot get a a, a number. Let's print the thread node ID. We're on node this. So this will tell us what node we're running on. 
Red is real. What's up, egoist? We're on node one. Yep, there you go. So here you can see the latency to access memory on our, our own core. On our own core's memory controller. This is the cost of accessing the other memory controller on our same socket. If that makes sense. Chad, do you need a diagram or some shit? Do you need a diagram or does this make sense? Because this is more about teaching than writing code today. It's more about, like, exploring and learning and how I do stuff and my processes and, and stuff. Where are my USB st sticks? It's 6.30. I need a cup of tea. What's a cup of tea? I don't know what a cup of tea. What, what type of tea is that? <laughs> Got him. Get it? It's like, it's like I was pretending that it was it's like a, it was a joke. It was a joke, chat. Show us a diagram, you fucking womboids. Um, uh, Let's go! Let's go! We'll do a 4K. Bam! Hello, world. All right, chat. Make the. Oops! Don't want to erase that. Let's do this. Let's make a new... Oh, chat, you probably don't like the white. It's probably too bright for you. It's probably hurting your eyes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, man. Woe is you, chat. Hello? Paste? Hello? New layer? Paste? Hello? Bucket? Oh, because I'm in a race mode. There we go. There we go, chat. All right, here we go. All right, chat. And then we'll, we'll put it into hacker colors. Uh, what's that? Like th this? 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 None of these are like super hacker. We'll do, we'll do this one, chat. Hacked. Okay. My red nose. All right, so basically, uh, what I've done here is I've showed the latency between my different cores. So I have, eh, it's a little thick, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to optimize for readability, okay? Because we know, we know chat is just not very good at reading. I should be on 100% zoom. So let's change this to a smaller size. That's still really big. Hello? Undo, you bitch. There we go. Okay. So this is my computer. And these are my sockets. Right? So these are sockets. So these are physical processors, and these processors are connected um, using uh, QPI links, and they are all going to link to each other. So, like, this is going to link to here and here. Um, it's actually a little bit more complex than that. 
Um, let's, uh, let's show you the cores. Or not cores, the memory controllers. Forgot I can pan. Okay. 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 Oh, Chad, I'm so fucking good at diagramming! Okay, and then these are memory controllers. Um, boop, 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 zoop, bop, bop. Memory controller. Okay, so we have two memory controllers per socket. And when we uh, put in some dimmies, let's put some dims in here. Let's do uh, like orange for dims. Okay, oops. Honestly, just lines are probably fine for these. Okay. Okay, this is RAM chat. <laughs> okay, so this is RAM. Slash RAM. Okay. So this is basically, uh, this Saves me grabbing the eye breach from your drawing skills? Bro. B bro. Bro. Okay, so then we have the memory and RAM. So the memory controllers actually own the RAM that is part of their controller. Uh, it says I'm 12.97, so let's just... Mm, that's a little small. Let's do like... Uh, like a uh, four right so this memory controller owns this ram this memory controller owns this ram this memory controller owns this so on and so forth right so this is kind of how these things will be linked up in the actual motherboard and circuitry is that those memory controllers will handle that ram has anyone gotten the indie auth working? Their official site tells me the site should work, but it doesn't work on here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. So we have four robots. Okay. So, um, basically, and then on each of these, let's do cores. What color do we want for cores? Let's do this, like, uh, pink. Okay, and then we'll go to, it was like 12 or whatever. We can go a little bit smaller. We'll go to like six. And then these are cores. Yeah, this diagram looks fucking sick. Okay. 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 All right, so, um, basically, uh, these are then cores. An arrow. So those are physical cores. And basically, what we are benchmarking is how expensive it is for this core to access the different nodes. So this is like the, the base architecture. Then I'll make a new layer here so we don't fuck those up because I kind of like this now. So let's grab uh, like yellow. So what we're doing is we are benchmarking. So let's say this is core number seven, which is what we're running on. Actually, no, let's say this is core number seven here. Okay, let's try and get a seven to actually draw correctly. So let's say this is core number seven, which is the core we're picking. We are benchmarking how expensive is it to access this memory, to access this memory, this memory, this memory, this memory, this memory, and all the different memory on the system, right? So, and to do that, you you go through different paths. So on in this situation, this will actually jump from this core 
it will route over to here. This will route like up probably to get to here, which will then have access to the memory controller. So all of these are done via, um, so it traverses horizontally and then vertically or vice versa. It's one of the two. And all of these cores are going to be linked up on a grid. So these cores will have like their little, their little, um, QPI, like their switches, basically the cores, each core, and I can show you on a die shot. Um, let's do a Skylake die shot. So it'll be very obvious where the cores are on these die shots and uh, how things are linked up. Let's see, where the fuck? Who's the dude who has the really high res die shots? Dual core, quad core. I, I don't even want this. I want, uh, I want, uh, Skylake EP, I guess. Skylake server. Here you can see how all the cores are connected. So this is basically the diagram I'm showing. See these UPI links? These UPI links are what hook up the uh the processors to other processors so this x xcc layout you see how there's two x upi and one upi here that means that there are two ways that this can access uh this can so these upi buses connect between uh these sockets so the reason that there are three here is because there can be up to four on a system so let's say, uh, so this whole thing is going to have, let's just draw this where we have, actually we'll draw these in as UPI uh, links. Um, like uh, this. So this will be the UPI links. And there's going to be like one here, one here, and one here. And then one here, one here, one here. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. So these are not symmetrical. And what's interesting about these is that these are going to be linked up. One of these will go to a different processor, right? So that's why you have three links, because there's three different processors that you can communicate with. And then these will do the same, same thing. So one of these will link to here and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm not going to add too many lines because it just gets too confusing, right? So basically, there, these cores have to communicate via this internal bus. So these buses here, see the memory controller here? That's basically a node. And then these cores are, are basically nodes. So there will be a different cost for this node to access this memory controller and this node to access this memory controller. Because one of them just has to go straight down, and another one has to go all the way across and all the way down, right? And the reason that you use subnuma clustering is that you have two memory controllers on this device. And when you have two memory controllers, that means that this core is much further from this memory controller than this one. So when we're running this benchmark and we see that our latency is about 10 cycles faster, that is literally the cost of routing within the chip. Like just on the chip itself, which is really, really, really interesting. Now, on top of that, if you want to go to different cores, you might be further or closer to other cores based on how you route out of your core. So if you're this core, accessing off socket uh, memory through this UPI bus, will be slower than accessing it through this bus because it's a slightly more direct route and you have to traverse, I think it's horizontal then vertical, it might be vice versa, doesn't really matter, it has the same effect. Um, so, um, you know what, I think this makes sense. Chad, I think this just completely makes sense. Okay, so we are on node one. The lowest latency is on node one. The, the, no, the other node that's on our core, so these are gonna be in pairs. So this is one socket, 
this is another socket, another socket, another socket, right? These are all clumped together. So obviously it's fastest to access things that are nearest by me on my own memory controller. And then up top, it is um, slightly slower to access across the chip. In chat, can you come up with an explanation for this pattern? Because I think I have one. I think I have one. I think that basically what we're seeing here is that these are all, um, basically we have two good, for any given socket, you're going to have two good UPI links and one bad UPI link or vice versa, right? So in my case, I have, like, let's say this is our core right here. Our core can get onto this UPI bus way faster. It can go bam, bam. And then going over to this one's a little bit slower. And I think what we're seeing is that these cores or these sockets here, these two sockets here are actually uh, easier to route. And these ones are not. I think this one got the runt. So here you see the shitty routings. Um, and I think it makes sense, right? Because you're going to have... These should average out to 560 if I add these together, right? 5, uh, Python, 545 plus 679 plus 578.70 seven divide by two 562 yeah so i think what you're seeing is these are one side is good and one side is bad right so you're taking like an optimal path through one but a shit path than when you land on the other core and i think i think that's what it is i think if you were to draw your punnett square here of your four different configurations, um, these are averaged out because we have a fast hop and a slow hop. And then this is fast and a fast. And then this is slow and a slow. Does that make sense? Does that math work out? Because you're going to have... I think that's true because you're only going to have one optimal route and you're only going to have one shit route and then you'll have four average routes and then obviously your own chip will be your own chip, right? Well, it's, uh, there's three different things because this is only talking about outbound. So there's nine combos, right? Um... Yeah. God damn. You can, like, it's, I guess it's that loud. Does that make sense? Because this gap is about 10 cycles. And this delta from 560 is about 10. So I think your routing is like 10 cycles. Would be my guess here. Eh? Isn't it crazy how fucking... Like, look how close these are. Look how consistent these numbers are. Like, this isn't a fluke. And if I run it again, right, I can save these numbers. And we'll just save these numbers down here. Right? So if I run this again, reboot my kernel, new ASLR, new settings, run node 1. Look at how fucking consistent this shit is. Right? That's what happens when you run an in sushi roll. This is what I like to do work in my own OS. Doing this on Linux would be much more difficult, especially if you're averaging over a million accesses and not way more. That is bang on, right? Isn't that fucking awesome? Um, so, if we were to switch nodes, let's go to, let's go to core number 30, right? No idea what node that's going to be on. I don't think my core numbers are in order. I think they're just sequential. So, we could end up on node 1 again. And here we go. Here we have a slightly more complex setup. So we're on node 3. 
So obviously we have our fastest access to this. We're actually beating. We have a 187 instead of a 199, which I think means that we're closer to the memory controller. So we picked, compared to the first benchmark, we probably are on one of these cores compared to like one of these cores, right? So we got a little bit closer um, to the memory controller. And then here you can see more flip-flopping. And I think that just means that we're in a slightly different permutation where now we'll probably see maybe, can none of them be averaged out? Is that possible? Because I think that's what we're seeing, right? 543, 560. So this is uh, probably close, close. This is probably far, far. This is probably close, far. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. And, and this will reproduce as well, these numbers, right? But this is why, like, NUMA matters a lot. <laughs> um, like, let's, uh, let's go back to that first one. What was that core? I think core number four, even though I said seven, it's actually four. So, chat, if we step back out of, like, this, this crazy, you know, these, these micro behaviors, think about this from a high level. Think about this from what this means from a cost perspective. A cash miss to Numa from your own Numa node is 200 cycles. So basically, missing all caches and having to hit RAM is 200 cycles on your local core. You got it to work? How did you do that? Did you do your own site? Or did you use their, like some other host thingy? But yeah, if you think about this from a high level, uh, basically the cheapest way that you can miss cache is by hitting your local node and you have uh, subnuma clustering on, so you're not hitting this, you're hitting this. Now you can see why subnuma clustering kind of doesn't matter as much. Um... Like, it's, it's really not a huge difference, right? So, like, is it worth making a node local copy of all the data for five cycles? Probably not. In theory, yeah, it is. It will, it'll be faster. And you'll find that you'll have, uh, in this case, that's like 2.5%. So you'd have like a 2.5% penalty on half your cores. Uh, which is not great, right? Like, a lot of people, when they find a new thing and they're like, oh, it, we made it faster, a lot of times it's in the 1 to 2 to 3 or 4% territory. And that's subnuma clustering just, just there alone. Obviously, you use way more RAM when you do uh, subnuma clustering because you'd have to make copies for each node. So, um, but look at the cost to other cores, Look at that. 560 cycles. What is that? A fucking 2.5x? A 2.25x? It's like 2.5 times slower. So if you were to have this server, and I'm telling you right now, this is how every fucking person does compute in the world. Like, other than like micro optimizing big fucking nerds, when you get your. Your fucking 100 core EC2 instance, and you're fucking blasting all your shit. I can guarantee you, you're probably running at like half performance on 80% of your cores. Like literally half perf. Most software isn't NUMA aware. Yeah, you're just getting fucked. Like seriously, if your stuff can scale over the network, you're probably better off scaling over the network and using small EC2 instances than big ones, because you're just getting fucked by this. Now, in reality, you would have NUMA interleaving on, and NUMA interleaving would basically at a page level or some granularity, it, sometimes it's configurable in the BIOS and stuff, depends on the arc and whatever. Um, it will interleave these pages. So one page will be node zero, the next will be node one, the next will be node two. So you kind of get an average, because keep in mind, each of these nodes has its own bandwidth. So we're only looking at latency right now because latency is all I really ever care about. I never really saturate bandwidth. 
But if you want to use bandwidth, you have to use all nodes. Uh, like, if I were to do all of my allocations on node zero, I would get one-eighth of my memory bandwidth on this system because I'd be using one memory controller and I'd have all the accesses going through the same UPI links, hitting the same nodes. Like, this only gets worse as contention goes up and things are fighting over the same paths and resources. The more you duplicate these, like, when I write my own NUMA software, I basically just treat these as eight completely separate computers that happen to have the ability to use shared memory. Like, basically, I have a very fast way of communicating and updating things by using memory and doing IPC and stuff in memory. But other than that, eight separate computers. There's going to be eight copies of every fucking data structure of everything in my, like, corpus of my JIT caches. Every fucking thing is going to be copied eight times. Unless that data is always going to be hit in like a hot loop where it's always in cache. But anything that's like random access, like a fuzzing corpus, is a great example of random access. If you are fuzzing on a multi socket computer and you are like randomly picking inputs at the start, you are probably running half of your cores at half speed. If you were to print out, the fuzz cases per second of each core individually, like each core's contribution to the work, you'll find that you're basically throwing away half your fucking compute or a quarter of your compute. It's really, really, really bad. Like, really bad. I... Ah, uh, shit. Do I even have, like, video of this? Um... It would be... Uh, it'd be some of my, like, oldest fucking content on YouTube. But this would have been running on a dual socket Xeon before, um, uh, literally just a two-node Xeon. So, like, this only gets worse as you add nodes and you add cores and you get to bigger and bigger compute, right? The smaller your computer, the less this shit matters. Um, so let's see... Uh... Okay, so uh, a little bit of, of what you're seeing here. So this is, holy dick, this is eight years ago now. So this was my uh, my custom OS uh, hypervisor based fuzzer for fuzzing snapshotted shit. And these printouts here, I think I might describe what they are. I, I probably do. Um, see how half of them, some of them are 40, some of them are 23. See how they're like half? I think uh, this one might be number of fuzz cases. Or maybe cycles per fuzz case or some shit. I think, yeah, this is fuzz cases. This is total fuzz cases, right? See how half of them are at half speed? That's because fuzzing inherently misses cache a fuck ton. Like, pretty much all the fucking time you're missing caches. Because you're in, like, really big loops of literally random data. Like, you're intentionally trying to hit completely different surfaces. So, the reason that these are running at double the speed of these is NUMA. Entirely NUMA. That is it. That's it. So this is on a tiny machine. How many cores is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is a 16 core, two socket system. So this is probably this is probably a dual uh eight socket system, right? If you're fuzzing on, on big compute like this, you're not fuzzing on small nodes, you probably don't even know this is happening because nobody does per core prints. They always do an aggregate thing, and usually it's averaged like over five-minute periods with really slow updates. Like really, really, really fucking bad, right? So... The biggest thing to doing any benchmarking in Perf 
is to have the goddamn metrics in the first place. I figured this shit out the second I printed this out. The second I printed this out, I'm like, this is atrociously bad. This needs to be fixed. I can't have half my cores running at half speed. That's wrong. That's terrible. How is it on Zen? I'm not familiar uh, with Zen. Um, with... Oh my god, what was 2011? A uh, pile driver. So I did my uh, next thing when I talk about this one, this version. This is all going to be uh, AMD based. And I have the same issues. The exact same issues. So you'll find, like... I'm not just talking shit, chat. Like, I'm not talking about, like, theoretical perf. Like, that was real fuzzing of real applications, literally half speed, unless you're Numer aware. It's massive. Because keep in mind, you're resetting those VMs. You're, like, copying from things. It, you get fucked. Um, and we can look at that. We can look at, like, my really, really old uh, hypervisors, which I open sourced. Uh, what is it? Uh, Fulkervisor beta, I think. Fulkervisor beta. This would have been designed to run on an AMD machine. This would have been a four socket AMD machine, two memory controllers, so eight NUMA nodes. And you'll find that fucking like the very first thing I do, I think it's mm, uh, where is my code? I think boot program. Yeah, so here you will see um, my hash tables, my, my full hash table. Yeah, per node snapshot, per node PDFs, per node PDF maps. So these are init node data. And if we go look at init node data, I don't know if uh, I, I'll get any symbol info in this. But init node data is going to be probably an MM. Um, yeah, node struct to initialize. So this will basically make a copy. So you'll like make your snapshot and then you'll broadcast it out. You'll make eight copies of it so that when nodes come in and ask for their data, they will get the data local to that node. Like this code is like eight or nine years old for fuzzing. And it, it was so obvious that this was so important that early on. It's wild to me that, like, people haven't made the same fucking progress. <laughs> like, and it's not like I knew what NUMA was. I fucking, I, I saw this output. I saw that half my, my cores were running at half speed. I'm like, holy shit, that's fucking awful. And I'm like, what could cause that? And then I figure out, oh, a thing called NUMA exists. So I'm like, shit, that sounds important enough to re-architect my whole thing to be designed around that. And it's fucking true. It is. It's, it's, and it's like a two-day learning curve of like, you, but to have that quick learning curve, you have to observe the data. Right? You have to fucking observe your data. If you're printing out your total core or your total network-wide fuzzing infrastructure's fuzz cases or iterations per second, you won't know that there is some dog shit going on. Because you literally don't know. And I, I, I say this all the time with the people when they're like making their coverage graphs and shit. And their coverage graphs like dumped to disk every like five minutes. So you just have these like three data points. You need data. You need fucking data. If you're plotting logarithmic data where you're getting most of your coverage in the first like couple seconds of runtime, which is all fuzzing, you need to like have like 10 millisecond snapshotting of your corpus, of, of your like, coverage and all that shit so you can see what's happening <laughs> you can't like oh it's so fucking annoying man all of this stuff is so obvious like nothing i'm doing is based on knowledge i had or skills it's literally that i'm like oh i wonder if this is working the way that i expect it to which is all cores doing 
roughly the same amount of work. Let's see, let me print all the course contributions. Wow, half of them are at fucking half speed. Maybe I should fix that before scaling out to a thousand more fucking cores. <laughs> like, that shit is so tilting to me. <laughs> but it's just more, it, it's, it even goes to the graphs, the, like, coverage graphs. Like, dude, I'm fucking telling you, like, the OSS fuzz, the fuzz bench shit, dude, this stuff is fucking dog shit. I'm sorry. Luckily, I don't work at big tech, so I don't have to pretend like this stuff is good and that I actually want to improve. This stuff's fucking trash. Like, let, let's look at the, like, uh, sample report. Is this a recent one? Yeah, it's a little old, but... Like, dude, there is nothing in this graph. There's no fucking data in here. Everything happened. Your first fucking data point is 15 minutes in. This got half of its coverage before you even recorded a single piece of data. The fuck are you doing? God damn it, dude. <laughs> you can't make changes and improvements when you have this. These are just horizontal fucking lines, man. God damn it. <laughs> like, just use a table. If all you're going to look at is, is the fucking output, you know what you do? You use a log scale, and you have, like, a, a, an ever-increasing sample frequency of this, this number. Because this number's not free to obtain. I mean, you should be able to get this every, like, 100 milliseconds, no problem. But let's be honest. They're using some big tech 500k a year engineer technology, which means that they can only sync every 15 minutes because they fucking... Network copy a file every goddamn time they start a fuzz case. <sighs> Dude, it's so bad, man. X axis starts at 15 minutes. Yeah, maybe they have improved it. But this shit, like last time I looked, which probably was in that 2020 era, literally they they dumped their like performance and fuzz cases and coverage metrics every 15 minutes. And if you look at, like, more modern stuff where the fuzzers are a little less garbage than those, uh, I'm sure you can find them, uh, probably. I, I don't fucking know. But basically, like, in any good fuzzer, especially if you're scaling out, you're going to hit, like, 90% of your coverage in the first, like, 10 seconds. And those graphs literally ignore all of that initial exploration, which is all that matters. All that you're measuring is not the total exploration. You're measuring the rate of which you can explore. Like, how much faster can you explore the same amount of shit? And, it, oh my god, dude, it's so fucking tilting. I'm so glad I'm not doing this shit anymore. God damn it, dude. Whew. Basic science here, experiments, error has to be smaller than the effect you want to measure. To be honest, a lot of things just can't measure stuff at, at this granularity anyways. Where can we learn how to do NUMA-aware programming? Um, I don't know. I kind of do it all based on, like, gut feelings, right? And the, the way that I do that is just thinking about, like, how the actual hardware ex works and just designing stuff around that. Um... But I think the best way to do it is just treat your NUMA nodes as separate systems. Like, completely separate systems. Basically, if you have any... If you have any structures that you're, you're mainly bottlenecking on latency, copy them for each node. Then, it's hard because then you have to, like, sync those. What if they're updating and changing? Well, then that becomes a much harder problem because then you have to, like, keep those up-to-date and coherent. But part of the reason why memory is so much more expensive on different nodes is because that coherency stuff is hard, right? Having a database that is coherent at all times is often way harder than just having a database that syncs every second. Because in the scheme of like computers, every second is an eternity, right? So if you sync every second, it basically doesn't matter how expensive it is to sync because you're doing it so rarely. 
Now, in reality, every second is like if you're writing good code in the first place. If you're writing fucking node backend shit, then yeah, you should probably have your sync interval be every hour because doing literally anything is going to take an hour of CPU time. But like... For anything I do, like coverage databases and stuff, dude, I sync that shit over the network on like a 10 millisecond frequency. Like every 10 milliseconds, I make sure everything is synced to like a master copy and all the nodes have those copies. It's, it's just not hard to make those duplications on intervals. Um, I don't know. It's, it's wild to me that there's... Tens of millions of dollars being spent, probably hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on compute for fuzzers that are running at probably one tenth efficiency of what they, of exactly what they're doing as is, but probably like one one thousandth efficiency if they actually wrote their code in a non dog shit way. I don't know, dude. I know it's tilting. But the really frustrating part is, like, how have these companies not fucking figured this shit out yet when I figured it out in, like, two days when I was 18 years old? It's not because I'm better or smarter. It's because I fucking care, and I'm trying to make it better. Like, it's so annoying, dude. Fuck big tech. <laughs> So tilting, dude. It's just a fucking game. All right, chat. What what else do we have to rant about? Does that make sense? Does Numa? Does the importance of Numa? Did I get that across at all? <laughs> is the music from here? Yes, it is. Key things here, caring and wanting to make things better, yeah. And actually, like, observing results. And, like, not p-hacking. Music is- oh, yeah, sorry, music shouldn't be that loud. My bad. I had it up for the video. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I fixed it. I fixed it! I fixed it, I fixed it, I fixed it, I fixed it. Okay, um, yeah, so... What I want to do is make a task scheduling queue. Um, and basically the goal is to optimize this for latency for a queue of tasks to perform. Uh, to get Indie out to work, you need to add some HTML to your website. Follow these instructions. I use link rels. However, what they don't tell you is they also need to put this in your header too. No, it will not work without it. Indie auth. Um. Sign in with your domain name. Finally auth. Rebel is a genius. Yeah, okay, what, what do you have to do for this? On your home page, link your profile, link your profiles, and you have to say authorization endpoint. If you don't want visible links, yeah, I don't want visible links. href. Do I have to make an indie auth account? Link your GitHub on your home page. Do I have to have rel me? Like on index.html. And I gotta put this where? In my HTML head? In my, in, in here, right here? Rel equals me, and then github.com, Gamoza Labs, that. 
This? Just that? Okay. And then I can auth as Gamoza Labs or some shit? Authenticate? BFA.LK? Uh, unable to get endpoint. Then the other link? What's the other link? Uh... Wait a minute. Oh, and then I need this one as well. Okay. Unable to get the endpoint from destination? Get? Connection refused? Do I have to, like, run a service? Um... HTTPS... Yeah, because this, this should be my index.hitchml. But it's saying, uh, couldn't dial the IP connection refused? Unable to get the endpoint from dest URL. Get bfa.lk dial tcp connection refused? It's not updated? Not updated. I think it's it can't connect to my server for some reason. Dial TCP that? Is that my IP? Yeah, what? Connection refused? Uh, uh, bam. And how does this off work? Like, what? 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 Is it because my page is too old? Do you link your site on GitHub? No. I have to do that as well? God, this is fucking hard, man. Finding rel me links. No rel me link was found on GitHub Gamozo Labs. Make sure you don't include that. Yep. Um. Add links to your home page with the attribute. So I need to add it to my profile. Can I just do like a bio? Where where do I put it on my GitHub? Um on your home page uh 
There's a URL box? Like for a social account? Or just my website? But the website... I don't think the website itself will have the auth equals me, right? Okay, I, I can authenticate via GitHub. Oh, it doesn't work because I'm internal. Um, that's why it can't route to that IP. Um, um, uh, Um, I guess I need to set Etsy hosts on my Windows box then? <laughs> uh, uh, whistle Etsy hosts. Yeah, it, it 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 wasn't a problem. It always has been working. The problem is that I am uh actually I need to just do a DNS override on my uh on Vios. Cuz um I manually do my own Etsy hosts here and like, if I ping that, yeah, uh, yep, I can't do that, right? I need to update my DNS to specifically add a... a thing. So how do I explicitly add, uh, well, I don't want DNS forwarding, uh, let's see, sudo, uh, SSH, okay, show config, I am using DNS no, I am using forwarding. Allow from that, cache size that, okay. So I need to add my own name server. For receive queries for a particular domain to a given name server. Uh, you can use this feature for a split horizon configuration. Um, to a given name server. Well, I'm not running a name server. So I don't think that's what I want. Maybe it is. Config. So let's do ping bfa. Uh, uh, okay, so let's do set service DNS forwarding domain bfa.lk server 192.168.1.2. Uh, and then commit. Hopefully I don't break my whole internet. Yeah, so, uh, how do I remove that? Um, so that's not what I want.
Because I would need to configure this as a... Let's see. How do I do this? But uh, PFSense has a way of doing this. And I forget, uh, PFSense DNS override. Yeah, uh, Vios DNS override. How do I, how do I fucking do this? What do I want to do? I want to make bfa.lk resolve to a local network address. Um. Okay. And then we're going to set that, commit. Um, delete, show, commit. Uh, delete that. Commit. Split horizon? Yeah. So, the problem is I'm not running a name server. Porting, listen address. Send all DNS queries. So, I don't want to do that. I want it to resolve them. Do split horizon. Domain that server address. For received queries to a given name server. Well, I need to run a name server then. So I'm not running a name server. Right? Isn't that the problem? Right? What you could maybe do is set a DNS forward service and Etsy host. Can I do Etsy hosts on my... Um. Oh. I see. I need to do this via maybe DHCP. Because gamey is mine. Um. So, uh, show. Show service DHCP server. And then I have a static mapping for gamey. Okay. So I use static mappings. Uh, can I do like an alias? Um, set service DHCP server. Subnet, oops, DCB server, shared network name, LAN, subnet, that, and then static mapping is what I'm using right now. Uh, everything's so complicated, silly for job security. Yeah, so I'm multi domain search. I mean, maybe I just add another static mapping. Uh, but can I do that without a name? Because this, I don't want a name for it. Maybe this is more of like a high level thing. Mm. 
Cult router, name server, domain name. Because my Etsy host, my Etsy host is generated by Vios from static host mapping. I think I need to set, okay. Show config. Host name, domain name. That's under system. Oh, system DNS. No. 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 Uh, <laughs> I feel like I do want system DNS. Um, cause I have like host name and shit. System. What's option? No. Justin Timberlake's such a good vibe. Yeah, I know. He's fucking phenomenal. Uh, okay. So we'll do uh, set system. And then... Oh! Static host mapping under system? Map host names to addresses. Set system static host mapping. Why is that not on here? Yeah, give it a host name, bfa.lk. Static host mapping. Host name for static address mapping. Configuration path is not valid? Oh God, dude. Oh God. Uh, oh god oh god why is this so hard static host mapping set system Configuration path static is not valid? What? Post, what? 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 Oh my fucking God, dude. How do you use this shit? First tangent created on the new server. Set system static host mapping, host name. Oh, I literally have to say host name. Ah, inet 192.168.1.2. Commit. Hey! Let's go! Okay. 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 What else do I have? Rust? Rust.bfa.lk and stream.bfa.lk. And the tibia ones I can keep. Oh, thank God, dude. Because right now, if I look up stream, it will actually go to the, uh, well, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, this. Here we go. Come on. Let's go! Let's fucking go, dude! Commit. 
save configuration, and then show configuration. Bam. So now we have mapping set on my router. Okay. Now I got to go over to Windows. And you can't see this when I switch to Windows. Good to know that set system. Yeah. Are you using Vios? And then IP config flush DNS, ping bfa.lk. Yup, ping stream.bfa.lk. Yup, and rust.bfa.lk. And I should be able to go to Rust now. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Let's fucking go, chat. Okay, so now I should be able to auth Authenticate bfa.lk auth bam bam and then I got redirected back to stream test all right so I authenticated and I reserved my name even though I'm Gamozo Labs on GitHub. So the reason is that my web page refers to GitHub and GitHub refers to this. So does that mean other people can't name themselves Gamoza? I guess they wouldn't have the verified badge, so it doesn't matter. Fuck yeah. Got a free EDU account when I was in college. I've been using it ever since. I like it. I really do. Um. Nice. Dude, that fixes so many issues because basically HTTPS is fucked. HTTPS is fucked unless your domain names resolve correctly. And I didn't have them resolving correctly. Known as Gamoza Labs. Well, you're fucking hacking. Okay? Hacker. <laughs> Dude, this is sick. Okay, that's not nearly as bad to set up. The only reason, like, the only reason it sucked is because... I am running the service that does the checks on my own network, which couldn't route to itself. But now it will, because it will just use the LAN. <laughs> In before that, like, actually fixes a lot of stream things. How's the stream running? Stream is at uh, 60 megabits right now. Dude, I, lo I love how I'm just hosting this off my fucking desktop. <laughs> when are you gonna do your, when are you doing your Rust async stack? <sighs> Hot take, I don't, I don't know if I like async, man. I think, yeah, you can dev things really fast in it, but I think fundamentally, it's always gonna be slower. Because the abstractions are just too, too strong, man. Stream is great. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, and I can add different formats and stuff, but I don't know. It seems like it's working, right? How many stutters are people getting? Only downside is chat. It can't pop it out. I wish that wasn't a hot take. <laughs> Async shouldn't have been added to Rust. I agree. I think it was stupid, and I think it was forced in by a community of fucking web devs, man. Like, async is really not that useful for many, many, many things. And now a lot of libraries are like async and also a non-async mode, but with weird incompatibilities. I don't like it. I don't like it. I really don't like it. But I don't use third-party libraries anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, only downside is chat, so let's take a look here. This is owncast. Should I add myself to the owncast federation stuff so I show up on owncast? Because I think they have a discovery thing. Directory. How many viewers do these people have? Would we, would we be, like, up there? Yeah, let's let's turn on the uh, federation. 
Although, I don't know if I'm always going to run this server. Like, I think I might turn my server off when I'm not streaming. I don't know. Thing about async is it gives you higher throughput, but higher latency. Yeah. It's also easier to develop. Yeah, it's, it's a great paradigm. It's way easier to develop. Let's see, uh, let's see issues pop out. Pop out chat button. Would be nice to have a pop out chat button on the stream page. Yup. More friendly than digging into the dock to see. Yup, yup, yup. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I don't know. Add your, add your fucking support for this. Say, like, say it's important or some shit. Because right now, there's just not enough interest in it. And it seems like a couple people have wanted it. So, like, write up why why you want it. Like, they clearly want to... Oh, God, dude, this diagram looks sick. I love these neon colors, dude. Like, actually, these are fucking sick. <laughs> Can you center the player? It's kind of weird to have a blank space at the bottom. I mean, I, I didn't write the software. I haven't changed anything in the software. And no, I cannot change that through the UI changes. Obviously, I could... I have the source. I could change it. Um, but I'd want those things to be officially supported because my plans for updating this is literally just updating it. I don't want to, like, update it and have to pull my own, like, patches along with it. It does support custom CSS, yeah. <laughs> so dude it's so cool I'm fucking verified man I can't believe you fucking big nerds verified yourselves <laughs> Gamozo's streaming palace you can do whatever you want using your uh, own violent monkey extensions yeah, dude, Geek Pirate, you're a fucking nerd, okay? You don't have to rub it in everyone's face that you're a big fucking nerd, all right? Okay, so, uh, it was cool that we had the, uh, no cash flag set there, which is really cool. Um, this stream's not stuttering? Like, it, is this noticeably different from Twitch? Other than the chat and the UI. Dude, it's actually so cool that I'm verified. I feel like uh, I'm feel like I'm dank or authenticated. That's so fucking cool, man. Okay. I just need to enhance my dating experience. Yeah, I bet you use Reddit too, you fucking nerd. Yes, Dad, you're very dank. All right. So what we want to do is we want to make a queue system that's designed to hold a. A very small number of fixed elementes. And I think the way that we're going to do this, chat... Should we do this in a li lib? Let's just dev it in a fucking module for now, and then we'll move it to a lib when, when we want to. You can use Streamlink to watch the video in another player with u this URL. HLS zero stream M three U eight. Is this the highest quality stream? Oh, let's go. Uh, this isn't the highest quality stream. Um, I'm guessing it's like three. It's three. <laughs> Wait. Is it? Uh, it says 3840 by 2160. Four, not found. This says, this says 4K. Oh, it looked like shit because I was looking at the stream through the stream. If, <laughs> because I was looking at it through MP, 
Ah, I was like, dude, that looks like shit. Okay. So if I move it up there, the red seems a little off. But clearly, that's the, the highest quality stream. But there you go. You can watch an MPV. Three. I guess it's the order of which I've defined. Yeah, it's definitely three. Oh, two? No, two for me is 720. Three is saying 3840 by 2160. Which makes sense because that is the order of which they are defined in my, in my uh, admin portal. Look at them viewers, dude. Three is 4K. Yeah, because I have video here, right? It's the last option. Zero, one, two, three, right? Uh, read to learn more. What are these settings? You know your mind. Well, well, well. Latency buffer. But yeah, he's tracking us back to Twitch. <laughs> Look at these Chrome users, dude. Big fucking Chromies, nerds. <laughs> All right, let's fucking do this chat. Oh my God. Look at those Windows 10 users. Yeah, update your shit, guys. Get on Windows 11. Honestly, I really like this neon color scheme. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Hi, I'm authenticated. Um, and then HLS. Um, <laughs> I authenticated. But yeah, dude, isn't this sick? <laughs> I'm literally hosting from my fucking house, man. <laughs> I authenticated. Oh, you can at me? Shit. <laughs> this is wild, man. Doesn't show it on it shows it on my end. <laughs> You're mine. Alright, chat. Let's write some fucking code, man. Yeah, fucking boomers. Um, what are we going to call this? Uh, Atomic Q? AQ? Atomic Q? I call my Atomic Hash Table AHT, so I might call this AQ. Oh. And then, where is this thingy? Connected. And then... Bum 
the Geek Pirate. All right. Bam. Bam. All right, Geek Pirate, I think you're a mod now. <laughs> and then I'm going to make me a mod. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby! And then if I refresh... Test. Yeah! Let's go! Let's fucking go! I hope that you have to be authenticated to be a fucking mod. <laughs> <laughs> it's hopefully it's not just a name thing. Um <laughs> Let's see. Configuration. I'll turn on show up in directory, sure. When you refresh, your messages are gone on my screen. They they work fine for me. Um, so I turned on owncast directory. And because uh, I don't think anyone uses the owncast directory. Then chat is on. Social Owncast provides the ability for people to follow and engage with your instance. It's a great way to promote alerting, sharing, and engagement in your streams. Once enabled, you'll alert your followers when you go live, as well as gain the ability to compose custom posts. Some I don't care about that right now. I do have a webhook setup and browser alert setup, so um You'll get, uh, this will ping uh, Discord automatically when I go live. I think I have everything set up. So now I should show up in the Fediverse. No way they're that dumb in 2023. I refuse to believe it. I don't know what you get to do as an admin. I don't know what control you get. I guess I get a drop down box, hide message, ban. Okay. Yeah, I guess you just get some info. Fan users, hide messages. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. There you go. <laughs> Can't rename their registered users? Oh, nice. I don't think there are any slash commands. You won't do what you tell me. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Dude, Rage Against the Machine is so goddamn good. Here's the stream stats. So this is, on the network side, zero drop frames. But from rendering and recording and encoding, I have some drop frames. I had that on Twitch because that's literally on my side. On my computer side when I'm recording stuff. Uh, this is the network thing, so I'm not dropping anything. And if the encoder can't keep up, uh, like the multi-encoder can't keep up, I, I will see those here. Literally zero. So it really comes down to the ability for this app to get you the stream and Nginx to get you that stream and my ISP to get you the packets. Like, I think everything's working great. <laughs> like, am this sick? <laughs>
But I can't run it uh, unless my clock rate's high. And it's working great in Whistle. But I should set up a dedicated server to run this and put a GPU in it so I can do GPU uh, encoding and stuff. Um, I need to buy like a 5 gigahertz server, put a uh, 100 gigabit NIC in it, and run Linux on it natively, and then just ship all my shit to that, and then that will just serve from there. Unfortunately, I am using uh, Nginx proxy right now, but I could get rid of Nginx proxy and run Nginx on the server itself, so I'm not using the bandwidth on two computers, just one, because um, I could just change stream.bfa.lk to go to that IP instead of this IP. But yeah, isn't this sick? Um, atomic Q, uh, atomic fixed size Q, yeah, struct AQ. We'll just call it atomic Q. AQ is a little too short for my taste for a name. AHT is fine, but AQ isn't. Bub mod AQ. <laughs> And this code is going to be designed to run in any environment, my OS included. So we'll actually dev it in my OS because we'll be able to benchmark it a little bit better. But it doesn't particularly matter where we do it. So what does a queue need? So we're going to need... How, how are we going to organize a queue? There's like a bunch of different ways that we can do this. So to do it all atomically, we can't... Uh, can we... We can have a separate head and tail. Right? Why do you have three Mastodon accounts? Because I fucking don't know how that shit works, man. Okay? I don't know how that shit works. Yeah, I've got one on the security one and one on, uh... Hackyderm. Hey, you're authenticated too! See, now people are going to show up to chat. They're going to be like, how do I get a fucking, how do I get a check mark? And it's going to be like, well, you, you better be a fucking nerd. Hacky Derm was moved to Info Sex Change. Yeah. Okay. So, chat. How do we make an atomic queue? So, we want to have a queue that is fixed size and, um,. What if I say that? You have no idea how much less claustrophobic I feel streaming on this compared to Twitch. It's really weird. I think I'm just, like, more proud that I'm hosting. Like, something about that is just cooler. Wrote my Docker file? Fuck yeah, dude. Okay. So, what do we want to do? Chat, how do you like your cues? Head equals tail equal uh, means empty or full. I'm going to do empty. Feels underground? It does, dude. It feels good. I'm going to pop a celebratory Eddie. Be right back.
You have to be in the know. I might put on headphones, actually. I'm gonna put on my headphones so I can listen to music louder. What a damn dude. Dude, I love these headphones so much, man. I think I can just turn this down. I think I can just turn that all the way down. And then I think I have a separate audio source. Dude, tell me these headphones aren't fucking dank. Can you tell I have headphones in? I mean, of course you can, because I have headphones in. But they're, like, pretty subtle, and I, I like that. This should have music? Fuck yeah. Now I can crank it. Check. And I can hear myself, so that's good. How do I import, import my many years of loyal Twitch subscription? Um... Maybe, maybe we can add, like, a special badge to this. I'm not trying to disrespect people's subs. But I think you'd rather be able to have hacking content than, um... Jeez, why can't I put this on straight? <laughs> there we go. How's the hat, chat? Hat looking good? Did he get the UE reference IEMs in the end? Yeah, I got the UE Lives, which was like their most expensive one. Um, I can't imagine I could tell a difference, but they are phenomenal. Um, they're also pretty comfy. Like, I can sleep in them. Like, when I'm on travel, I'll sleep with these. And then I wear these when I'm working in the garage. I normally listen to, like, audiobooks or long-form YouTube videos and stuff. Um, I don't know. They're, they're really comfy. I like them. Fuck yeah. Okay, so now... So... Okay. Yep, so I can now hear my voice through my headphones, so I'm not going to be screaming, and I can hear, like, the locality of my voice. So... With these headphones in, I should sound better because I'm going to be listening to myself through my microphone, right? Because um, if my microphone was, like, out of focus, then I can't hear myself. I'll talk weird, and it will just be strange. And then I have a slight mix in here, which is different than your mix, which kind of sucks. But I can use that to listen to music. So, um... It'll hopefully improve audio quality. I do need to readjust this so it doesn't keep popping up to an, a weird level. This mic boom kind of sucked big ass. I also got a, like a, uh, an ear piece mic that comes down your face. And I think that would probably be a more consistent audio quality. Probably lower. A best case scenario would probably be a little bit worse. But average case, it will probably be a little bit better because I can move around. Do they need a custom mold for the in-ears or do they just fit? You need a custom mold. So I went to an audiologist and they pour like a silicon in your ears and then pull it out. And you have a mold of your ear pretty deep. Like it goes probably two or three centimeters deep. Um, I actually didn't even know ear canals went that deep. It's kind of fucking crazy. Ah, uh, the downside of this is I can hear myself if I sing. Um. <laughs> so I can hear my tone deaf ass self. Okay, chat. Um, so how are we going to do this atomic cue? So 
uh, the big thing is I want uh, Q holds values which are owned and not atomic, a.k.a. Uh, Q holds T's. Right, and and that's important because that slightly changes the different operations that we can use to store these values. So, how are we gonna make this work? It's weird when you have a uh, block nose with it all being con being all connected. Yeah, we have to hear you too. So it's only fair. man. Fuck you. <laughs> Me lying, tell me how to live. Okay. Are any people in Europe watching this? Because I'm kind of curious um, how well I'm able to stream to Europe. Because that's on the other side of the world. And that adds some complications, which is interesting. <laughs> I'm in England. We left. <laughs> Sucks to suck. All right, Chad. How how can we design this queue? You're up. Fuck yeah, dude. That's really cool because there's no CDN here. Like I'm serving you from my house, and that means we probably have like a pretty high ping. But I guess just with stream buffering, it just doesn't end up being a problem, which is fucking cool, man. Germany, so worst case regarding internet. Dude, why does this thing keep fucking going up, man? I want this to stay low. Stay there, you piece of shit. <laughs> I could try the other mic setup. Brazil here, a few stutters, but good. Yeah, I'm not too surprised. I think it'd be cool if the like um the latency or like the that was more user controlled cuz like if you could set that to 30 seconds then it shouldn't really matter where you are as long as you can average the connection speed To be fair you do have a, a an above average internet slightly a little bit I try my best um Germany. Colorado here, unsurprisingly been great. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's... Dude, this is awesome, man. Um, I kind of want to try out the other mic. But I also don't want to set it all up. Because I, I hate that, like... God, this sounds so different when I turn my head. Chat, do you want to try the, the different mic? Or is that too much work? I think we're going to try it, chat. All right, chat. Asia here, stream is perfect? Hell yeah. Dude, that's amazing. So should we try it through the wireless setup? Or should we directly plug it in? Because I can do wireless where I transmit from this and receive into this and put this into the computer. But I also could just directly plug the XLR in. Uh, but then I'm limited to where I'm sitting. Let's try the direct connect just to see what the quality is first. 
and then go from there. So that's coming from my compressor. You're going to lose me here. Ooh, is this cord not going to reach? Um, do I have an XLR cord? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Let's, uh, I guess we'll just do wireless. And to do that, I need... Now this is going to be hard, chat. Why are we doing this? Why can't we have nice things? My input with a I have a, I have an XLR to 3.5. So, and it's the screw in 3.5. Glad it works globally. Dude, that's insane. So then this, this is a 3.5 that screws in. So I'll plug this into here. That's the output. And I think the output quality of this is good. Oh, can you hear me? Check. Yeah, you can. Okay, I haven't unplugged that yet. Then, we'll turn this on. Oof. Oh god, are the batteries low? I haven't charged these batteries. Um... Check, check, check. Okay. So that's transmitting. But I might need to get my battery charged. Hello? Check. Check. Hello? 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 Oh, I just turned off phantom data, uh, phantom, so that should help. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I think it was the phantom power that was fucking it up. Um, okay. How does that sound, chat? That's good now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it should be good quality. This is like a thousand dollar fucking microphone. Just this. Just this. So it better be fucking good. Check. 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 Okay, I think that's a little quiet. Maybe? Is that quiet? Is that a little too quiet? Yeah, I think that's too quiet. I could turn up the gain here. I think I'd rather have the gain on my setup here. Check. 
Yeah, I'm... Uh... Oh, and I just lost my fucking... Uh, little pad thing. Fuck. Uh, okay. Okay. Check. Check. Check, 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 check. I could just go up on the game here. Looks better without it. Oh, fuck yeah. Perfect. Settings. Oops. Set. Set, 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 set. Yeah, I think that's sometimes not quite going all the way through. So let's see. I wonder if it is just a low... I think it's just a low audio level, actually, on the transmit. And you're, you're getting weird fuzziness because it's, it's, uh, I just don't have these settings right, right now. Uh, band attenuator. Okay, so if I attenuate less, okay, check. All right, now I can go down on this gain. Let's go to like here, check, 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 check. I think that's roughly the same level that I was using before, right? How's that? How's that quality, chat? Is that fine? Is that passable? There's a USB-C connection? Oh, there's USB-C on this as well. Um, huh. I wonder if I can power this with uh, USB-C then. Oh, yeah, I think I can. I think I bought all this stuff intentionally so that I can do that. So, let's see. But how is, how is the audio? Is it good? Is it good? I think it's roughly the same levels. Hopefully it's not too high or clipping or anything. I don't think it is. It does sound like there's too much gain or something. Okay, let's see. I can turn that down and focus on it more. Let's turn attenuation on. Let's go to like six. Okay, what about three? What about six? Do you like six? I might have to turn the threshold down on this so I don't clip my voice as much. Not clipping. This is attenuated a little bit more. The quality seems off. Yeah, so like you're gonna get a little bit more like room noise because smaller mics are just gonna do that. There's, there's nothing you can do about that. You're just gonna get a little fucked by that. Let's see if I can plug this in. Uh, Hopefully this doesn't fuck quality. And I think this is still running off battery, so I'm going to restart it. Check, check. Yeah, I think that's running off battery. I'm going to... Hmm. So, this is, I removed the, the battery pack entirely. So this is now running off USB on that side. So I'm still wireless. That's fucking interesting. I just pulled the battery and now it boots USB. I can actually put it in our priority mode. Um, and then this battery is at one bar. So I should put these on charge. But, and there will be a little bit of... A little bit more echo, I think, but the quality should be better because I can, like, turn my head. So even though it's slightly worse quality overall, and this is kind of what I was saying, it's, like, slightly worse quality overall, but it's going to be better on average because it's just more, uh, like, more in my face at all times. And I don't even think I have it, like, completely set in correctly. Um, but all the gain looks good. I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting the compressor and everything. And let's see, what if I put like a high pass on there? How do, does that help? Does that improve it at all? And then let's go, let's go for some, I guess I don't really want high, maybe cut out some more high and maybe put in a little bit more bass. What about, is this too much bass? Does that make it sound like a little bit more? comfortable a little warmer and then what about my ds or
This is my DSers. Sally swims. Sally. I have to find the frequency of my S's. Where's my S? I think it's at 1K. Okay, so we're taking out some of the S. How does that sound? Much better? Really much better. Okay. Yeah, slightly different settings, but I'm still in the compressor, so I should be able to be like, fuck! Right? And that shouldn't clip. Um, it might clip through my, like, transmit stuff, but I think everything in here... I mean, all of this is, like, professional-level equipment, so it should have, like, pretty good margins. And then I think the only problem is my gate. My gate just... I, I think I need to turn my gate down to be, like, a, a two-to-one gate or something, because I'm just cutting in too aggressively, I think. You can hear the frogs. And then go to here. Okay. Check, check, check. And then we'll go, I don't know. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go to like two to one, I think, on the gate. And then the raw output, set that to zero. And I think we have a pretty good setup now. How, how does that sound? Is everyone happy with that? So now I can get up and walk around. So I'm going to actually go into the other room on the other side of the house, and I'm curious uh, if I'm gonna lose signal here, but I don't think so. And I'm just gonna put these batteries in a charger so I can have them ready when I need them. But yeah, isn't that, isn't that fucking cool? You probably can hear me perfectly fine right now. I'm literally 50 feet away and there's an entire wall between us, but I think this equipment is pretty good at this stuff. I could be wrong. Maybe it's maybe you lost me when I walked two inches away. Um, where is my battery charger? There it is. Oh, I think I have a. Looks like I have a set of fresh batteries. I got like really nice Eneloop Pro um, batteries here. And let's just take two out, which are hopefully more charged. I have no idea how long this will last, but I think having it wireless on me is quite nice. And then I'm going to swap these batteries out. So you're going to lose me right now. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, so you should be able to hear me again. Well, it probably just connected in a little late. And now I'm walking back over. So, yeah, I've got full battery now. Fuck yeah. Full battery on a new setup, and I can just throw this in my pocket, and then the receiver side is just always, uh, always going to be fine because that's just on USB, and it doesn't seem like that's putting any bad feedback through. And I should be able to put on my hat and then I can plug in my headphones. And at this point, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. That means I can take my fucking boom mic off and throw it on the fucking floor because god damn it, I hate how much that fucking thing gets in the way. Oh, I know, I know it's a slightly better quality. I'm sorry. I know the boom mic is slightly better quality, but it just is so fucking annoying to have it in your face. What up, Desu? How's it going? All right, so is everything good? Could you hear me when I was all the way over in the other room? 
Just a warning with rechargeable batteries like Eneloops, uh, sometimes battery gauges will be a bit inaccurate because they have a different voltage curve. Uh, these devices have a setting and I've actually set them all up. So my transmitters and receivers literally have three different battery modes and I have it on the, the correct one and it does report correctly. So yes, thank you for that though. But yeah, the quality should be good and I, I no longer have a fucking mic on my desk. Dude, you have no idea how much nicer that is. <laughs> Does it get authenticated? Do a latency test on the audio. And then this will probably scratch on my beard a bit because I don't have the... Honestly, I don't know if it'll scratch more or less without the, um, the foam on it. Press one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it should it should be instant on uh <laughs> it should be completely instant on the microphone side. In fact, I think I have the specs. What is the uh what is this device called? Uh Sony URX P40. I think they're like pretty picky about this shit. Specs. Do you think they'll say the latency? Audio delay. 0. 0.24. 0. 0.24 millis. <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. I think a lot of devices, I, I specifically picked these devices because they had really, really low latencies. Um, and obviously the audio quality is great. Like this is a very, very, very nice microphone. Um, and then the uh, the audio transmitter and receivers are very, very nice as well. Not nearly as nice as the microphone. And then obviously you're just gonna get ambient echoes. You're gonna get more echoes with this because it has to pick up all directions, right? It, it can't be as specific. You can get some of these that are unidirectional, um, but they're a little bit more finicky and a little bit more rare. So this is the one that I got. So it's, uh, I forget what the brand is, mm, too bad. But yeah, now I can kind of chill and listen to music. And I'm missing one channel. So is that because of this? Yes. Yeah, it's just this knob. But yeah, you should be able to hear me perfectly fine. I don't know how long that battery will last for, but now when I look away or I'm doing some dumb shit, you should be able to hear me better. And there should just be more consistent audio. Not as good more consistent. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. And my burps are more potent with this, apparently. Because I guess you pick up more like head vibration stuff with this. But you and me. Maybe there's too much bass. I don't know. Welcome to Gamozo's bass heavy analysis of code. Today we're going to be looking at, yeah, that's a little too much bass. We're gonna go down to five, a little bit less bass. How's that? Cause my voice isn't that deep. Um, all right, how do we implement this chat? This is the hard problem. So I think what we need to do is we need to There we go. The gate the gate was a little off so you're catching a little bit more background noise. So I think this will be a little bit better now. Thoughts? Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, sorry about that. Isn't a shotgun mic good? Uh, a shotgun mics are much more specific to where you are. I mean, if you put them further away, then obviously you can move more in their cone, but they're, they're meant to be like actually quite directional. I'm gonna turn the bass down even more. We're gonna go to three, which is kind of where it was before. Um, and then let's go a little bit down on this. 
Okay. I think we'll keep playing with these settings, but yeah. Um, all right. So what we need to do is we need to basically figure out... I like how you can see the paramour flashes here. That's, that's kind of dank. <laughs> that's kind of dank. <laughs> I kind of should turn off the hacker background at this point. I didn't realize how potent the paramour flashes were. Jesus, I guess I can full screen it for, for absolute ambience. Uh, I might turn these off. What if I go to one? And then that should go to sleep in five seconds. There it goes. Oh, now we're getting, now we're getting nice and romantic in here, chat. And I should tilt my camera down just a smidgen, shouldn't I? Oh, God. And make sure that that's very tight. Okay, camera's a little bit down. All right, welcome to the new stream chat. Welcome to the quality stream. Wow, you can just, you can see the music video, that's insane. Okay, um, so uh, what we're gonna do is figure out how we want to design this. So we need to handle two different routines. We need a push which is going to add an element to the end of the queue and pop, which is going to pop an element from the front of the queue. So to do this, we want to do a little ring buff reboodle and we'll do this with like a head and a tail pointer. So this is kind of tough because, um, because I don't know, let's just say, if head is equal to tail, then it's empty. I, I like the semantics a little bit more. It means you can't use one of the fields. I don't really give a shit. It's not important to me. Um, so we have the head, push, pop. So how do we implement these atomically, chat? Because I think this is a relatively hard problem. Um... I think tail. I think we'll treat these more as tickets, right? Head and tail will be tickets. So basically, when we push something, we will increment the tail, but that doesn't mean that that slot is available. Um. So I guess we actually won't know head equals tail means empty. Ooh, that's interesting. Because um, we're going to need individual locks on these fields. So for each of these, we'll need like a separate lock. And we can have like empty, E for empty. So like, let's say all these fields, I'll put it here. I think my keyword's louder, which is kind of interesting. So we need a couple different states. We need empty, uh, filling, um, or like loading or something like that. And then filled. <laughs> Elf. Um, empty, loading, filled. Do I need one for draining as well? So basically, it, it's tough because I have uh, the, the length of the list, the usable region of the list is dynamically changing. So like, let's say the tail is here. Um, oh God, that's really tough. So this would be like, this entry could be empty and this one's empty. Uh, let's say this one is, is loading. I actually like F for filling. Um, maybe P for present. Let's do that. E is empty. Uh, F is filling. Uh, P is present. So, because we're going to need locks on each 
field, which is kind of ass, but unfortunately, I don't think we have a way around it. So, and then these are just empty, empty, empty. And does this mean we can use fetch add for head? I don't think so. Because we fetch add. Fetch add the head. Uh, yep, and then in this case, it would wait until it becomes present, P. And then once it is filled in, then it will consume it, return it back, and then set it to empty. But the head is already advanced. That's where it's like really weird because the head and the tail will be disjoint from the fields. So the true Q is based on the locks of the elements. Does that make sense? Hey, Pootie, how's it going? Um, can I do this with three states? Meow. Can I do that? Is that okay? What? This song's so good, dude. My YouTube playlist has been like pretty solid recently. It's a lot of this like grungy early 2000s, some like early 2000s hip hop. But I like the playlist quite a bit. I wish my YouTube playlist would show up in my now playing songs, but I don't know how I'd do that integration. That would be very hard. Um, can I do this with tri-state chat? <sighs> let's, let's, uh, let's simplify and think of edge cases. Isaac, how's it going, Isaac? I like this uh, format. This looks nice. So if we were to have... This is scenario... Filled. So how do we handle the filled scenario? Will the VOD stay up? I think so. I think I'll upload it to YouTube. I know we went on some rants, but nothing was too weird. So this is uh, the start of the list. So at this point, head and tail are the same. Head and tail are both there. So when we want to push to the queue, we update the tail. So let's update the tail. So we do that atomically. That's an atomic fetch add. The fetch returns zero, which is this index. When we have this index, it cannot be popped until it is present. So it'll go into the filling state, but not atomically. It will be empty. The tail will be bumped forwards which means that if you were to try to do a pop operation, uh, you should be able to successfully bump the head. And then the head gets bumped, and it's pulling on this. Then it goes into filling state, and then present. Honestly, I think I can do this in dual state. So what I'm thinking is I might use uh, head and tails as U64s and actually store them in the non moduloed forms. Yes. Yes. Chat. Oh my God. I think what we're going to do. I think this works, chat.
Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Test. You're still mod. I guess it's verifying that it's you. What what was the test? Does that mean someone can take Geek Pirate when you're not named that? Or is it the whole set of names that you use? I don't know. That's interesting. Um Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that for each field. I don't know if this will be ass perf wise. But name Gamosa has already been registered. If this is your name, please authenticate. Oh, interesting. I wonder, so it's probably more like IRC then. When, when's fucking Desu gonna verify? <laughs> I bet he's too scared. <laughs> okay, so chat. I think I'm going to do a really interesting uh, Q implementation. And it might be really bad, but we're just going to have to benchmark it. But he he here's what I'm thinking. Okay? Here's what I'm thinking. Um, U64, so an atomic U64 for a head and a U64 for a tail. Then we'll have the values, which will be a slice of T's for N. And then we'll have locks is equal to a U64s for N. And what I'm thinking is basically, like, let, let's say the list is like four in length. And you get head position six. Um, then what you can do is you can compute head div by n is equal to one. And head mod n is equal to two. And this will be a ticket lock on locks. And it's not your turn to use that position until it reaches this. So it's like versioned. Right? Go to hell, Unicode, yeah. They probably should have the database for confusables um, in there, which Unicode publishes. There's a... Um, I think they're called confusables. Yeah. And there's a... Um, if I'm... Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, there's like a set that you can get from Unicode. Like... So these like exist. Um, so they could definitely dedupe on those. <laughs> there you, yep, there you go. There you go breaking it. Yep, there you go breaking things again, Geek Pirate, you piece of shit. Desu, you having technical difficulties registering or watching the stream? Because hopefully it's fine. Chat needs to behave. I agree. I snagged something somewhere. Oh, it's this cord got snagged there. Okay. I see. So I should run that down my shirt then. Um, okay. So what I'm thinking is that 
The head and tail indicate your position, which allows you to over-allocate the Q. He's got our IPs. Yeah, that's true. Oh, god damn it, noob. Good luck banning me. Uh, luckily, it, it, it does... Yeah, it's not hard. But I don't know how to unban. I don't want to risk it. I don't know. I might, I might have to ban him. <laughs> but yeah, Chad, if y'all like this stuff, like you could contribute to it and it would upgrade my streams. <laughs> it's open source. You can fix the bugs. Um, okay, so for this ticket lock... Chat, I think this just works. I think this just works. I think this is correct. And it allows overscheduling, which is wild. And it doesn't really require doing more operations. These are very cheap. And they can be done in parallel. Oh, chat. Chat, we're doing it. We're just going to implement this. And then you're going to laugh at me. Chat, remember to laugh at me when it turns out that this goes fucking horribly wrong, okay? Uh, we're gonna do const n u size. Head, atomic u64, tail, atomic u64, values, a uh, box of maybe un in it, of t's, and n, and then locks, box, Maybe uninit t of n. Um, index to the uh, this is the yeah the head head pointer, tail pointer. Raw these are not maybe uninits. These are atomic u sixty fours. Uh, raw uh, values. Um, and then this is uh. Yep, um, this is locks, ticket locks. So you want us to work for free to you making a better stream setup, capitalist pig? Damn fucking right. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm surprised this is working, chat. 43 viewers is honestly like a pretty high number of viewers for, uh... Like an open source thing like this. It's it's not easy to like test and set that up and and get experimental setups for that. Um okay. Uh impl t const n u size atomic q t n uh, and then I think we'll just implement default for this as well. Act fool. Uh, fn default yields a self. Then we're going to do a uh, self head. What's the total upload you're pushing right now? Right now we're pushing 50 megabit averaged over 60 seconds, so fuck all. <laughs> How many viewers would it take to break stream? Probably a thousand. <laughs> Unless something doesn't scale, but I think Nginx will scale, and I would imagine their Go stuff will scale. Like, the in you could write that software so it doesn't scale, but at the end of the day, the encoding is already done. You just need to fucking jam the exact same data that you jammed into other sockets into other sockets. Like, it's it's fundamentally purely just like a socket and bandwidth and, and network sa stack scaling issue. But yeah, only uh, only 50 megabit right now, which is not bad. And I've got four, uh, four gigabit upload, and I have 4 gigabit upload at all times. I think it's like 4200 is what I seem to be actually getting. 
Wood grain on the dash. Head, tail. Values. Um, empty tank. Settings, appearance. What is this for? Oh, they have their tablet set as two. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm setting mine to four. I didn't know I could change that. Four. Use fixed width when editing markdown. Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Name in the headrest, read it and weep. Okay. Um, values is going to be, oh God, uh, box, new, uninit, slice, n, try into, unwrap. Shotgun with a shotgun, just got hustle for a wad of cash. Core sync, atomic, atomic U64, use alloc boxed box. And I'm going to need a feature, I think, here as well. Oh, wow! Wow! Missing try into! Holy dick! <laughs> Where do you put it? Like, up, up top? My way to Ben Hill. Clean my windshield. Where are we, uh... Hmm. God damn it, I forgot the name of the fucking project. Name it again. Lifetime. Jeez. Edition. Oh, you weave while I'm weaving through traffic. Be like little John Kilger. Beautiful. Um. Use core mem. Whoops. Oh, and we're gonna need a unsafe cell as well. What you gonna do? Ah, oh, fuck me. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Ah, god damn it, chat. Uh, kernel source mm. It feels like I'm coding C twenty years ago, dude. You weren't even alive twenty years ago. The fool, whoa! Ah, oh, you piece of dick. Uh, kernel of source CPU introspection. Crate, crate. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, in that macro, uh, kernel source thread local colon colon. Yeah, they changed the syntax. That's dank. I'm all for it. Better. Uh, where though? Uh, thread. Macro. Okay. Uh, thread. Yeah, you piece of shit. Oh, it's in main. Are you fucking serious? Uh, one, and then uh, kernel source panic. This is crates. No. Yes. Air stack. I don't have an air stack in this, do I? I'm not using it. I think that's experimental. I don't think I'm using it. Yeah, I, I don't think we're using this yet. Oh my fucking god. How many places do we do this, chat? <sighs> uh...
Is it just that? No, there's a uh, 135. Crate. Kernel source message. Uh, what are we looking for? Like a, a white space? Uh, we can just punch in lines, I guess. Crate. 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 Oh, oh, chat, do not look at this code. Do not look at this code. Do not. Okay, it's gone. Five. God, I did this in a lot of places. Don't do that, chat. 488. Cow share? I love cow sharing. Chat, why didn't you point out that I missed that? Thought I did that one, but I didn't. Crates. Use message. This is crates. Uh, we're almost there, I think, chat. Crate time. CP on there, too. Technically, those are libraries, but that's okay. Huh, maybe. Uh, oh, I think that was fine. Uh, kernel source message. Uh, create time. This is all fucking benchmark code too. Uh, create. Do -do. And probably create snuffles too. We have to be getting close. Core. God damn it. Isn't there a thing that like automatically updates your rust? I thought there was a thing that just did that. Uh, kernel source. God, I did this everywhere, chat. Oh, my asshole. Uh, arp, arp, arp. Safecast is a library. Crates, crates, off, no worky, you didn't try hard enough, I got it working, so I had to put a link on, on my, on my website, and then a link to that website from my GitHub.
And that's all I did. So I, I went to my GitHub. I went to my GitHub. So I went to my GitHub. I did edit profile. I added a link to my website here. That's literally it. That's all I did. And then on my website, I added cat var index dot. And then here, I just had to add this. That's it. So, bam. And then my GitHub links to there. And then all of that links up together. That's all I need. And then... Two tags on your website. Make sure it's in your HTML head. One more tag. Yeah, you need the authorization endpoint. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I had to do. You can actually get rid of the tags completely, the head and body tags. How does it work? For, just. Uh, <laughs> oops. All right. <clears throat> That's what I did, and it, it just worked. It That was it. Oh, fuck, I forgot I was doing this. Can you distract me again? This sucks ass, chat. I don't know what you're about me. You're tell out of me. UCP. E. DP. I like that. Oh my god, it can't be much more of these, right? I mean, all of these would have been the same, like, library code, basically. <sighs> if. I got the magic stick. Fuck. Fuck! There we go. Pure shit dogs, pure dog shit spec, bro. Dude, if they had a better way of doing it, they would have done it. Oh, dude, I forgot I had deck, deck support in here. This is uh, this is what they use in Hyper V. It's a really simple driver. If you've never written a network driver, it's a good network driver to write. Um. And then this is uh, mm. I lay out my use statements so much differently than this. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. And let's just add another feature to this list. Don't worry about it. New on in it. Oh, 
out of me. Vox, new onion it slice in. Oh, this one's just a fucking, uh, I think vec syntax is more correct here. We'll do a vec. Uh, mm, nope, zero to n dot for each. For each map. Atomic U64 new zero dot collect. Really? Can I go here? Yes. Does this pre-allocate the box? Tensed. Nice, Desu. Fuck yeah. See, even you're off. Dun, dun, dun. Now my motherfucking P I M P. Boom, baby, dee, da, bum, bum, ba, ba, dum, bum, ba, bum, ba, dum, ba, dee, ba, dee, dee, da, bum, ba, bum, bum, ba. Desu used. Fucking slob. Okay. Um, does that pre allocate the box, Chad? On the stack? I actually don't know how collect into a box works. I've never thought about that because I don't use collect that often. <laughs> My God, Gamoza streams. Hell yeah, what's up? What's up, youthful Yonath? <laughs> I love the pre-gen names, man. They're so good. Uh... I got stuck in a hair chat. Maybe I should bend it further away. Just a, a tid, a tinge, or go up higher. No, I got stuck in a hair. It's okay. Okay. Does anyone know how collect works into a box? How does it work? Iter into iter collect vec into box slice. Okay. How does vec work? I'm guessing vec doesn't do... Interesting. Is that actually how it's implemented? Is markdown supported? Oh, dude, you can markdown. Bro, you can mark down. So, da dude, you can do this. Let's go. That's such a massive improvement. Fuck yeah. It's just back ticks, man. Just back ticks. It's just, it's just mark down, I think. Can't, oh, wow. You can do like headings. I see Desu's trying to do multi-enters, so am I. I don't think you can do multi-line. Were you trying to do syntax highlighting? But even just being able to do backticks is so nice. <laughs> just for like, 
Then I'm like, yeah, use use the new for the thing, right? Impl from iterator for box. Oh, that's what it is from iterator. Okay, collects into a vex, so that won't uh, that won't allocate on the stack. Okay, that's fine. I don't really care about the construction time costs of this. Um, I think this is the correct way to do the box, which is interesting. What it's like. No, what it's like. Okay, so the locks are all set to zero. Fancy? I know! Dude, I'm telling you, this is like, honestly, like, kind of better than Twitch for our shit. <laughs> we can do a higher bit rate, we can have more control over the encodings, and we could theoretically customize the shit out of this if we wanted to. Yo, I'm compassionate Curie! How y'all doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for being so compassionate. I know, right? <laughs> Dude, I feel like this stream is going very well for a first try. Has this not just worked the whole time? <laughs> uh, for each slot. Now that we're here so far away, pub fn push self val t push a uh, value to the end of the queue. Where ticket is equal to uh self dot head tail fetch add one ordering relaxed that okay uh get a new ticket for uh adding to the queue. Heading level one test, yeah, it, it doesn't work, but it does strip it, so it means it's doing something, right? Does the video go onto YouTube after this? I'll try. So far away. Uh, yeah, and then we're gonna do a uh, let index is equal to ticket mod n. Get the index into the queue for this ticket. Far away. Um, then we're gonna do while Uh, I think we want to compare exchange here. Well, no. Um, we cannot push our value onto the queue until the ticket is ready. Uh, I don't like that wording. So we have the index for the ticket. And then I think we have the version of the ticket. And then we're while the if ver is equal to zero, first time storing, just write in the value and bump the ticket, bump the version. 
Version is zero, so it's going to be this. Um. Okay, first time storing. Do I have value? Do we even special case that? I think we do. Um, so then we're gonna do, uh, to indicate the value is filled. I think this data structure works. This is really interesting. I like this design because it should be fair and ordered. Does the video go onto YouTube after this? It probably will if I'm not lazy as shit. You're house shopping, Geek Pirate? Hell yeah, dude. Up, going for an upgrade? Self dot... Uh, values... Index dot write... Val. Self dot... Locks dot index dot store version ordering release cyclone. Name another song by this artist, Baby Bash. Anyone know? Ordering. Yep, and that's correct, release. Um, update the version. Indicating the value is ready. I think this isn't correct yet. I mean, this is fine. I think I'm popping this is hard because I don't know if it's been read. So I actually might need two U64s. Um, we got a ticket. The value is up to date because the version matches what will pop. Uh, if ver is zero, ooh, that's the initial state. Okay, so we can't do that. Uh, while... While self dot locks index dot load ordering relaxed is not equal to ver, uh, wait until the value is updated. <laughs> I'm getting cucked here, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> the star and the shield. That's that's pretty solid. That's pretty good, noob. I like it. Uh, wait until a value is updated and it's our turn to set it. While that is not equal to ver. A lot. What are you about to rock? Is it this? If so 
uh, generation value. Uh, first, yeah, <laughs> I like that. First generation value, then it's always our turn to set it. This skips a read on the first write, but adds a branch. I think it's better for this. I don't think it's worth the branch. Um, okay, get the lock if it's while it's not equal to ver. So this will be zero. So on the first pass, it'll load that value. Is it not equal to ver? Uh, no, it's equal to ver, so it will break out of that. We'll then write in the value, which will initialize it, and then we'll bump with release to give permission to continue. Let you up to run. Is that correct? She gave fuck around with the thought. This is also not sound. Um, because we're doing interior mutability here, which is not okay. Um, okay. Um, let's just delete this. Let's get push working. Um, Fuck my ass. There we go. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Then we're going to do use core cell unsafe cell. Chad, does this design make sense? It's it's kind of interesting. I don't know if I've seen this before. Cause we're using ticket locks per cell, so we can like overcommit this. It's really it's really interesting. Not yet, to be honest. Yeah, we'll see how we do pops. I'm a little concerned about how pops interact. Uh, and then we want... Uh, I need to get... I have an unsafe... I have a maybe uninit on the outside. So the maybe uninit, I need to do as pointer. That's giving me a pointer to T, and T in this case is an unsafe cell, and then we can raw get on that. Dot right val. I think that's the correct way to do it. Uh, not, this is unsafe cell. Let's go! Let's fucking go! Geek Pirate, your bouncing dude is bouncing to the song. He's bouncing to the song. <laughs> I think th I think we actually did this correctly. Um, even even for very modern, uh, even for very very modern Rust, where uh, basically uh, the stages are that we we get that that is a um, then 
this is a reference to a maybe uninit unsafe cell t. And then we as pointer it. So then we have a const pointer to as pointer is an implementation on maybe uninit, which pulls. So that's going to be a const t, and t will be a un, uh, unsafe cell t. So then we have a const unsafe cell t, and then we use unsafe cell raw get to take a const pointer and convert it into a mute pointer to a t, and then we write our value to it. This is the correct way to do it. Since it's a ring buffer, the generation will increase every time you restart at the beginning of the buffer. Um, yes. Yes. Right. So basically, our values are our values. Our head and our tail are our head and a tail. But these ones, we don't do the modulo arithmetic on in place. So these won't wrap. In fact, we need to like panic when they hit the end of U64. U64, they'll just never hit the end. So I'm actually OK with this. Uh, U32 is no. You can exhaust 4 billion, but you can't exhaust a U64 using increments on any hardware that exists. It, you just can't fucking do it. So to me, I don't consider that a security risk. Um, no overflow check? Well, an overflow check would be very expensive because you have to do an atomic overflow check, which is a, a loop and a compare exchange. So uh, not worth IMO. <laughs> not worth. Nothing contagious. And then these are atomic U64s, which are the versions. So you're kind of... Uh, your version is the the top part, <laughs> the d divide by n rather than the mod by n. So that's your bucket, and then this is your version. Um, so we fetch add to get our ticket. We get we compute the index and the version. We then wait for the previous version because remember we're storing plus one here. So wait for the previous version to have been set. Once the previous version has been set, then we can get, uh, then we can write in our version and bump the version. Now, um, I think we might need to bump the version twice, one for push and pop, because I think we need to know uh, a little bit more information here. But this, I think, is sound for pushing. I think this is just always sound. We get a ticket, we get the index, we wait until the it's at least at the previous ver well, it is exactly the previous version. We don't have to do a compare exchange down here because this has guaranteed um due to our data structure being protected by Rust, <laughs> we can ensure the fact that if this is equal to ver thus we break out of the loop, that we then completely own that value. It's worth to use a spin loop. Sometimes it varies, and I'm, that's, why, that's why I left the curly on a new line, because that is going to go in. We'll play around with that. It, it really does vary. Um, then we store the value, and then we update the version. But yeah, I think we need one extra uh, version here pop a value from the start of the queue. This is going to be pub f and pop self yields a t uh, get a ticket for popping let ticket is self dot head dot fetch add one ordering relaxed then we're going to do index is equal to tickets same fucking logic um, but, and then we'll do wait until the value matches our ticket, or wait until the lock matches our version, while self.locks index.load ordering relaxed is not equal to ver plus one. But yeah, I think we're going to double these, and then I think everything will work out fine. 
because we don't know that we're not right now the race condition here is that we're not giving ourselves enough time to read the value out right you could basically get the right version and then try to be reading it out this notices it's on the version minus one and writes over it and then you're fucked right um so i think what we can do is we can double this version this and this and this is still really really cheap and then all of the odd versions so this will be plus one and then this will wait for it to be plus one which ensures ownership and then we're going to unlock that by writing a two and update the version now i think it's like getting very close to sound i think we might have a bug in this but i think this is all we need for like the rough logic obviously i need to read this um to signal that the value has been uh fully popped right does this make sense And then we'll do a uh, core sync atomic fence ordering uh, release, uh, acquire. As cheaply as possible. At this point, we need acquire semantics. My internet's been kind of fucky since my last ISP upgraded their modem, but has anyone else had issues with the streamer random stopping randomly having to refresh? Also can't pop if head is tail. Correct. Correct. Actually, that's fine in this implementation. It would just spin until something pushes, <laughs> which is not the behavior I want. I want to return like an option. But yeah, anyone else having issues with the stream? Everything looks consistent on my end from what I can see on statistics. Happens to you too, okay. Have to refresh sometimes, cringe. Your end should be fine, it's probably owncast itself, yeah. Um, it could also be that if you're looking at, if you're watching 4K, it's not re-encoded. And they say like, don't do that because I, because you're, your browser probably doesn't like the weird shit that I'm spitting out of OBS directly because it's a little strange. Like I have a weird color space and some just weird stuff and timing codes could be different. So I probably should just get rid of that option and then make it so um, all of them are encoded. And it will just re-encode it, but that's fine. That's basically a NOP. But then all of them have been normalized to the format that is designed to be delivered through web browsers. Because I think right now your web browser, if you're on 4K, your web browser is receiving a slightly different format than I think you're supposed to be decoding. <laughs> so, the, obviously the containers and stuff line up, but I, I could see like small time codes, frame timings being off, and maybe you're accumulating an error over time, and eventually you get fucking booped because it exceeds the the like latency window or, or, or some shit like that. I could totally see something like that. They do warn against having a pass through stream like I am doing. So, but I think I could handle the load by having um, a 4K stream. Okay, and then pop. Ret is equal to self dot vowels. Values index dot get um, uh, 
And then... Okay, so then I want to do a... I have a... Maybe on a knit. I want to do... Doesn't look like I can read. Writes and converts it. Oops. Uh-oh. Overwrites any previous value without dropping it. Oh. How do I want to read out of that maybe on in it? Just a fucking as pointer and just call read on it? Okay. Um, and that uh, we're gonna read that. This is going to be a uh, unsafe cell T. And let's do core mem read. I think you can just dot read on a pointer, can't you? Dot read. Read the value self without moving it. This leaves the memory and self unchanged. Oh. Uh. without moving it. I think I can just dot read, right? That's gonna be an unsafe cell T. And then at the end, we give it a ret and that's gonna be unhappy about that, but I can into inner because that's an owned unsafe cell, right? So that builds. Um, determined dozer. <laughs> hi, hi, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh oh. Dude, Nelly kind of fucking slaps. It's, it's unfortunate. Head pointer, tail pointer. Okay. Ticket. This will be zero in the first iteration. This will be zero, so this will pass. We will then write the value in. Yes. Because that's times two. Then we write the value in. We then update the version, indicating the value is ready which is ver plus one, which will not allow this to pass again. And then this will, so we got release, we got acquire, relax in that loop. So this will wait until ver plus one, which is what this is. So you get the same ticket through head and that ticket matches this. So this matches this. Then we fence by acquire, so now we're uh, correctly um, ordered with respect to this. And then we can read that value out, because we have exclusive ownership of it. Then we do ver plus two, which is now going to make it so this, so in the first iteration, ver would be zero, so this will write two. So it will go, the transitions will be this will be zero, not equal to zero. That's false. So that will continue. We'll write in the value. We'll store zero plus one. So we'll store in a one. And then here, we can't store into that again until it is a power of two, a, a two. It can't be an odd number. So if this is an odd number, then we can't write the value. So basically, we have given up ownership. So the ownership 
is either a pusher or a popper ownership depending on this state. And this is actually, I think this might be really fast because we don't do a compare exchange. I missed a lot, was really expecting Twitch stream. Oh, sorry. Oh my God, the stream quality, you like it? You like that? <laughs> we got 60 FPS in 4K. No fucking problem, dude. I ain't fucking scared. <laughs> give it to me. Give it to you. Okay. Chat, I think this is actually correct. I think even my ordering stuff is correct. Um, we have a memory leak because we don't implement drop. Um... And then ver plus two, which will then give the ability to this. Hmm, wait. Um, okay, so this is zero. Then it becomes one. This unblocks on one. This is blocked on one. This stores two which then unblocks this, but then blocks this. And this is atomic ticketed. I think this is fucking correct, chat. This is, like, really fucking fast, I think. Like, there's no compare exchange. I don't think this is what the Atomic Q guy did. Well, he did, like, five implementations, so one of them could be this. Why plus two and not plus one? Because this one does plus one. So, basically... The ticket determines the version. So if you loop around in the queue, your version will go up. So basically, that means that if you loop the queue around, that you can't write your value in there until the previous person has written their value in and had it pulled off. So like, it has to fully round trip. So it has to be, you have to wait for your turn in line. So this is a, a fair atomic queue which is a really interesting data structure. And I kind of didn't know this was possible. Maybe this is a common thing. Um, I'm sure people have done this. Like, it's not a fucking brain blast to come up with this. But it has really interesting semantics in that I don't have to do a compare exchange. which is really interesting. So the reason it's plus two is because I have to, basically, let's imagine that writing in a value, so this is writing in a value into the queue, and this is reading a value from the queue. Let's imagine that writing a value and reading a value both take a second, or an hour, or a month. Who cares? Let's just imagine that these take basically an infinite amount of time, right? The concern is that if we come through here, we would end up being able to push over this value twice because let's say on the very first iteration where version will be zero, this will basically do nothing. This will write in the value, which will let's say block forever, but another thread could come in here and the version is still the same. Uh, wait, is that a problem in general? No, because there's only one, the version is controlled by this. Yeah, this is really interesting. There is some really, the, the interesting properties here are that we are, there's a lot of like assumptions that we can make we know that we have exclusive ownership to this because exclusive ownership to this field is determined by this. 
because the ticket determines the version and only one ticket for each bin for each index can have a version right so there's only there's one version for each ticket and because of that we don't actually have to lock it down before writing it because this ticket gives us ownership of this value <laughs> isn't that interesting like, I didn't know this was, I'm trying to think how this is unsound, but I don't think it is. And I think I can also use relaxed ordering here because it's only when the value is going to be utilized because when, oh my God, yeah, I can use relaxed because the value isn't in use right now. That value is not present. Chat, this is sick. This might actually be one of my favorite data structures I've ever written. And my atomic hash table is hot as fuck. That is really interesting. You have a fetch add, read, modify, write, but that's pretty cheap compared to like a, a compare exchange. This is free. This is just a load. This is just a store. This is just a store. And then you get this. That's versioned. This must be ver plus one, which is this. We wait relaxed, and then we acquire semantics so that we are, we know that the value has fully been written into that field and observable. Then we read it out of the field, and then we update that. We don't even need release semantics here. Um, update the version because now, once we do this, we're now signaling that the, um, we are now signaling that there is nothing stored there because when it's in, uh, the only time when there's a valid value in there is when the bottom bit is set. So if the bottom bit is set, the plus one variant, then we can read it. Then we set it to a plus two, which now invalidates it because we have moved ownership we have moved that value out and we've returned it out. Does that make sense? And then we don't have to worry about anything getting dropped because it's behind a maybe uninit. Um, so we'll have to manually implement a, a drop routine. Right now, this will leak uh, any unpopped values. Holy shit, this is really cool. <laughs> Since ticket is relaxed, if you call push at the same time in two different threads before reaching the store, can't you end up overriding the value? Um, you, can, you can get a new ticket, but you're not overriding the value. Because when you get a new ticket, right, this is relaxed. So the relaxed in this case doesn't actually mean anything. Because the ticket, right, let, let's, say, let's say your queue is only one in length. So you... So that's worst case scenario for this ticket system because you get a ticket of zero and then the, uh, this will pass and then you'll write it in and then you'll release it. And if you come in here and the ticket is, uh, if you come in here and the ticket is, uh, ba 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 it's the next time, then you'll get a one, and you won't get past this, right? You'll get stuck here. Unless you mean that this move gets ordered above, but it doesn't matter. Um, that shouldn't matter, I don't think. Really, all that matters is the ordering of the read. And this release is saying that the value is fully written, and then this acquire is waiting for the value to have been fully written and then it reads it and then this writes over it but basically the only time that the value is actually valid in the queue is when it's a, a plus one state which is just this window this tiny this tiny window here it's not even correct after this it's only correct after acquire semantics then it's correct then we can read it then we can release it but we can release it relaxed 
Because it doesn't matter what is in that memory, right? Because this memory is only, this is always valid here and it's always invalid here. So it doesn't, I think, I don't know, like unless I'm missing something, um, but I'm very convinced that this is always correct. Obviously we have to make pop return option if it's empty, uh, which is kind of a hard problem. Um, I think this will be faster than that one dude's atomic Q. This is really interesting. This is really, really, really interesting. Because this code is clean. Chat, what are your thoughts? I, I think this is the only place where ordering matters. Because the only place ordering matters is when you're using the locked value to indicate the validity of other memory. And in this case, yeah, uh, we're, we're doing that only here. That's my, that's my view. I could be wrong. Thoughts? I strongly suspect it's technically incorrect in some edge cases, but I can't tell when. It, due to the ordering? And if n is a power of 2, the mod and div are kind of free. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right? So those mod and div are effectively free. This is the whole code. It fits on one screen. Um... I think this is always correct. Because you can't get past this until this has gone through. This is matching the release semantics here. Then we can fucking load. And then we store. Store can be relaxed. Right? Because those are still all atomic operations. How do we even test this kind of stuff? Uh, mainly, mainly just analysis, of like sta just reading through it and logging through it. But static analysis is the correct thing to do. I could fuzz this out. You'd have to like slide all possible edge cases. Run it if it's seg faults. We'll laugh at you. I don't understand how this could fail. It could be about trust, babe. I don't, I don't see how this could fail, especially on x86. Desi, do you think the problem is with the ordering or with the actual logic? Because I, I don't think the actual logic is wrong. I, I'm pretty sure the ordering is correct anyways, but I could theoretically see the ordering maybe for some reason being off, but I don't think it is. Because this is purely a right. Unless we have to be like, this has to be a choir here, and this has to be uh, a choir here, which would, what, I guess, um, ensure that we don't start doing the rights? Is that a problem? Because this right could happen before this load? I think that's actually true. I think that this write could occur prior to this, right? The processor could reorder this. It could move the store before the load, I th think. That would be very strange. That would be done on... Um... No, that, that can be done on uh, ARM. I think th that is true. And then we'll do um, make sure the uh, lock was fully acquired uh, in terms of memory ordering. 
Bam. Okay. Right? Um. So... I think this is now correct. But yeah, I think that was a bug. Right? Because now we can't start writing until we have acquired the lock. Because <laughs> technically the lock wasn't acquired yet at that point. What fence is that inserting? That will be a, uh, this will be a, a store barrier. And this will be a, a, a Z DMB guy. I forget. We could maybe build it for it and just look. But this will basically make sure that this load basically had acquired the, this is making sure that the last load of this had acquire semantics. I don't want to have acquire semantics for every load that's super loud. So what I'm trying to do is hot spin the lock until we have gotten past it, at which point then I want to ensure. But is that a problem? Because can that load be moved after th that? I don't think so. No, because the acquire is related to loads, because that's a load fence. Uh, let's see. Well, now I'm second guessing myself a lot. Um, when coupled with a load, if the loaded value was written by a store operation with release or stronger ordering, it was, then all subsequent operations become ordered after that store. So this load doesn't happen until after this store is complete, which is after this is complete. I think this is fine. In particular, all subsequent loads will see data written before the store. Well, do I need that since it's a store? Um, because I need to prevent a store from moving before a load. How can arm reorder? Um, I th somewhere had like a, I think wiki maybe, memory ordering. Yeah, okay. Loads after, okay. Dude, fucking alpha, man. Alpha, how? Alpha, bro. Okay. Uh, so, what is our concern with ordering here? So, here's why ordering is important. On some CPUs, atomic or operations can be reordered, and a lot of these things, they can't. Depends on implementation, okay, yeah. We'll just assume, I think ARM, ARM is pretty standard, right? Like power, like pretty much everything uses this ARM model. This is, this is the weakly ordered model and the x86 is the strongly ordered model. Okay, 
So our concern is, can stores be reordered after our... Uh, Loads after loads, loads after stores. Um, so our concern is a store after a load. Atomics can be reordered with loads and reordered with stores. Dependent loads can be reordered. Stores can be reordered after loads, but I don't think they can mo be moved before. It's more that our load could be pushed after our store is the better way to think about it. Loads can be reordered after stores. Okay, so this load can happen on ARM. This load can happen after this store without, without any fencing, right? Because that's relaxed, and then this is just not an atomic operation. So we could potentially store first, then check. Right? <laughs> yeah. So loads after loads, loads after stores, stores after stores, and stores after loads. Basically, all four combos can happen on all those architectures, with the exception of dependent loads cannot be reordered, except for on alpha. So basically, the ticket can be relaxed. That's fine. Unless I want to do the ordering on the tickets. Then relaxed. And then uh, acquire. If the loaded value is written by a store operation with release or stronger, then all subsequent operations become ordered after that store. In particular, all subsequent loads will see data written before the store. I think acquire is correct here. When coupled with a load, the loaded value, yep, then all subsequent operations become ordered after that store. No, I can't. I don't think it can reorder this because it's behind a conditional. It would happen during speculation only, right? Like you, you could, in speculation, you could move the store before the load, but not until after this check passes. You can't, you can't fucking move a, a memory write prior to a conditional, right? And this won't pass until this is complete. And this isn't complete until this can be tr trounced. I'm telling you, man, memory ordering is fucking hard. Relax, relax, release, acquire. Like actual locks will just use an acquire and a release. They'll use an acquire before reading the value and a release after writing the value. Like any fucking like mutex. That's going to be the semantics, right? So I don't understand why I'm overthinking that. Because, yeah, like, that can get reordered microarchitecturally, but it can't be commit. Like, this write cannot pass if this operation, if this branch has not fucking happened. And this branch can't happen until it's set. This is totally fine. I was right the first time. I, I like, I started thinking about, like, CPU fucking bugs. And we're not looking for a CPU bug. We're just trying to fucking do this right. The CPU cannot commit that to memory until that conditional has passed. That makes no sense. That would ruin, that would allow me to get execution on any piece of hardware. <laughs> like, that's so fucked. Um, so it's not that. Okay. Yep, load, version check, 
perfect. Overflow check is done during version. What do you mean? But yeah, this is this is completely sound. So the the part that's hard is now I have to figure out how I want to handle popping. And I think I know how I want to handle popping, chat, and you're going to hate this. I think. Because uh, that list will be empty while there are entries in the list. Um, I mean that if you wrap around, line 45 will prevent further changes until a slot was read. Yeah, right. Right, exactly, yeah, exactly. Right, that's why we have the plus one and plus two. Because we, we technically, they're, they're like two different states. There's either owned by the writer or owned by the reader. And if it's owned by the writer, then there's no value stored there and the writer will write to it and then update the version. And there's only ever one writer at a given time for a field because the tickets are controlled over here with the exception of overflowing a U64, <laughs> right? So, and then you update it and then with the plus one, that bottom bit indicates that it's load owned, which basically is just signaling that the value has been filled in and needs to be read. And then this will wait until it is that correct state. This will then fence because fencing is important here because we need to make sure that this write is complete prior to reading it. And we're using a different value for signaling. So we have to use acquire semantics. Then we read the value and then we set that it's no longer fucking used, which moves it back to ownership by a writer. And now the only writer that will have access to that is the person who gets the next ticket for that index. Wonder how it would behave with n equals one. It should just work because it just becomes a ticket lock, right? It just becomes a standard ticket lock because the index is always zero. So it's just one field in the array and it's, it's just a ticket lock. It's a ticket lock with one, uh, one value. Right? Well, it's, uh, it, it's interesting because it's not exactly a ticket lock because you can only, you ha do you, do you want to see? Because it should just work, right? It should just work. Basically, values are write once and read once. And that's it. They're write once and read once, and they're ordered. They're ordered in the order that they were pushed onto the queue. So it's a FIFO queue. Um, it's a FIFO queue that uh, is, is write once enforced by atomics and read once enforced by atomics, which gives it the safety to work on the uh, interior mutability across cores. Right? Does that make sense? Am I fucking crazy? An atomic uh, FIFO Q. But it should it should work. All right. We're actually gonna test this. I think we're gonna move this over to Linux into a library, um, because I want to do. Uh, I want to do tests on this with Miri. It does make sense. I know, isn't it sick? Like this is actually really cool, I think. Because it's there's no compare exchanges. There's no compare exchanges, which 
I think is unprecedented for a Q. I don't think I've ever seen an atomic Q without a compare exchange, which is fucking insane. Right? Like, am I crazy? There's a spin lock on overflow? What do you mean on overflow? And on empty queue? What? Oh, because of this? Weird. I didn't know that. I didn't know the order mattered on that. If the queue is full, push will spin lock. Correct. And if the queue is empty, pop will spin lock. Yes. And that's, that is done intentionally because otherwise latency would be awful. Well, pop will make, uh, pop I will make return. That one will be fine. I can fix that. Let's do a stress test for blah and mm, let. Uh, AQ, new, uh, let's do like, uh, fucking U sizes and then like, uh, one. Let's, let's try this. Let's try the Desu, the Desu one, uh, and then default. Oh, it doesn't have to be mute. And then we're going to do four, uh, standard thread scope. S, S spawn, move, let AQ is ref AQ, AQ dot push five, AQ dot pop. Oh. Bam. For blah and zero to 10, so 20 threads, AQ dot pop. Uh, mod test extra create standard. Get that platinum chain with them diamonds in it. With them. Damn it. Oh. I mean, who's your weed man? This, I think. Right? If T's are send, because we don't actually give refs to those. So since the T's are never ref, they're only stored. So they're moved in and they're moved out. So we actually only need send semantics. We don't need syncable T's. So if T is send, then uh, atomic Q's are sendable and they're syncable. 
So nine more. Six inch heels. MPMC, MPMC array is very similar. They don't use the like ticket locks inside though, right? Because like all these cues look roughly the same, but the ticket locks per field I think is interesting because they would have to do a compare exchange. And then they probably yield the OS, which is fine. They do? The current stamp. They cash pad the head and tail. Makes sense. Sweaty. Box slot T. They put them in the same vector. Stamp. Huh. Okay, this must just be a common way of doing this then. That's kind of cool. They do the compare exchange. Yep, because they do the compare. Oh, no. Wait, they store. Yeah, I'm not convinced. I, I like mine. I think mine is better. Okay, uh, test, 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 stress. How, how did this pass? Hmm. This? This should always complete. And it does. Of course it's better. Invented here for- Fuck you! Dude, I was so excited. I thought I did good. Fuck. I suck. Shit. <laughs> you did good. Yeah, but wait, wait for mine to be like 10 times faster somehow. Uh-oh. Oh, data race, data race. Okay, maybe it just doesn't work at all. Read? Is it because I'm not moving it out? Read on thread and write on thread. Oopsie, what did I do? Is it because this read doesn't move it out? Core pointer read reads it without moving it. Is that, that's the problem, I think. I didn't get memory ordering wrong. Go fuck yourself. Uh, how do you fucking read? Am I am I misreading that? Let's 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 do this. Does that fix it? No. What about this? Okay, you can't argue with that. Fuck. Okay, it was what I thought. All right. Thank you, Rust. Uh, acquire. Uh, nope. Relaxed. And then acquire. Fuck. 
Ooh. And then this has to be release. So acquire, release, acquire, release. Bam. Told you. Fucking told you. Okay. Make sure the uh, uh, lock is actually complete. Bam. All right, we pass Miri, which is good. Because if we fuck up anything, if we say this is relaxed, we'll fail Miri very quickly. Yup. And if this one is relaxed, we'll fail Miri as well. And then release. So I was right. <laughs> and then uh, if I get rid of this, it should fail. Yep. And if I get rid of this, it should fail. Oh, that's sickwist. Relaxed, relaxed, acquire, release, acquire, release. This will now fail. Perfect. And now this will succeed. Whoo! So, yep. Relaxed, relaxed, acquire. Then we can write. So that's making sure that this store or this read is complete, I guess. Um, and then we get acquire semantics. Then we write. Then we store with release semantics. Bam. And yeah, Miri's totally fine with this. We could even add some threads, maybe add, go to 50 threads. I don't think that helps Miri. I think Miri would have detected that issue with two threads. Um, so I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're good, okay? I was right. Chow was wrong. Oh, oh. Uh, let's not do 50. Let's just do like 20. Because that's 40. Honestly, even that's a little spice. Let's just do 12. Even that spicy. Let's do 10. I want to leave physical cores available for stream. Beautiful! That... I think was decent. Uh, time, um, yeah. XD664, RDTSC, unsafe, minus, elapsed. Chad, are you ready? Elapsed as F64, so cycles, and then how many of these do we do? We do 1 million, so 1 E6 times 10. This is the number of round trips we do, right? We do 10 million round trips. Oh, uh, yeah, this is slow as shit, chat. Oh, this is a size of one, so this is ass. Oh, this might... No, no, this will always return. But one of them could be getting... One of the threads could exit, like, really early here. But this is ass, 2,500 cycles. Well, I mean, there's insane levels of contention. 
Let's be honest. This is this is fucking brutal. Uh, let's see if this repros well. Oops, and then I have to update this. Uh... Threads, but this should be actually pretty fair uh q which is interesting iters times threads as if 64. okay and now this should go bip bip brrrip. i'm fucking dumb this should go bip bip brrrip. beautiful two five one four two ah fucking linux man Oh, Jesus Christ, it's not even in the same fucking realm. I guess we just have to average more. Two, three, eight, one. Two four two one. That's good enough. Good enough for stability, in my opinion. Uh, you want to try what is it? M M M P M C. You think you think we're gonna get absolutely demolished by the built-in fucking M P M C, and we're just gonna fucking cringe here? Cause that'd be pretty embarrassing, man. Gonna be the same? Yeah, my ass. Well, mine isn't optimized yet. I haven't done any uh, layout optimizations. So, I if this is slower, don't give up hope. Uh, shared usage. Make a channel. Yeah, but how big is the channel? And is is this FIFO? Yes. Oh, this is MPSC. Wait, is there Is there not an MPMC? What? Will there be a VOD? Probably. Uh, we can't compare it because there's no fucking MPMC. What is that used in? It is crossbeam channel. I see. Body edges. Side of the moon. Okay, so a channel of unbounded capacity? No, I want to do bounded. One message at a time, sender, receiver. Then, as long as you'll be my friend at the end. Brrr. <laughs> me Superman, I'm alive and well with you. By my side with my superhuman, my 
could not. I don't know if this blocks. That? Come on. Come on. Give me a dub ski. Come on. Make me look good. Please. Please. Okay. Fuck. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. Fuck. 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 This is a fucking lie. It's not true. It's lying. It's lying. Fuck! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You still call me Superman. Um, time to get our gamer pants on, dude. God, we gotta beat this. That being said, uh, it's gonna be hard to beat Crossbeam. I know that they've micro-optimized the fuck out of their shit. Uh... Fucking rapper see that shit too, man. Uh, same down here. I just want to ensure I know the layout of shit. Kitchen bands. Someone. Would you be savior of the broken? Come on. Give me the easy wins, man. And then we can look at code gen as well and see if code gen is fucking garbanzo beans. Because maybe it is. Summer to join the black parade. Unwrap needs to be debug. Oh, fuck you, man. Sure. When I was a young boy, my father... Oh! Oh! Let's go! Oh! Oh! Who looks like a bitch now? Let's fucking go! Yeah! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! I don't know. It might not be statistically significant. Um... <laughs> Store values in tuples in a tuple. <sighs> I think you're right, because most values are going to be smaller than a cash line. Uh, 
I think you're right. I don't think this ever is uh, hurtful. Carry on, carry on, though your day may. Uh, 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 Okay. Cash line. That's carry on. Field dot zero dot one. He's too afraid to do it in sushi roll? No, I, I wanted standard for threads so I could just do this. Uh, shared memory is hard in sushi roll. It's kind of a pain in the ass. We can do it in sushi roll. If, if chat, if, chat, if you're not gonna give me a fucking option, man. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna be a goddamn piece of shit, then yeah, I, I mean, we can, we can do it in sushi roll if that's what you really want, you little bitch. Uh, field dot zero dot one. <sighs> Damn, here I thought I was solving new problems of computer science. Field dot zero dot one. Ba 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 ba. Dot zero. Field zero. So all these should be field zeros, but then one one zero. Zero one one. Bam bidi da bam. And I was backwards, and I was right though. Because we actually want to have the atomic first. Makes more sense. Zero one and zero. Big in place. All the times fell into your bam. Quiet release, quiet release. Uh, Mary. Buckets. Ah, can't call RDTSC. Uh, RDTSC. Uh, color side your ugly, ugly like me. Uh, Kifki Miri. Siuchi not Miri. Beautiful. That felt like this morning. Oh, you bitch. What? Can you call foreign function?
Oh, fucking hell. Chat, why didn't you tell me about that earlier? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, looks like it's sound. Let's see the perf. Oh, also, this is not fair. Because I didn't say it was a U size on crossbeam. It was using I-32s. I don't think that changes anything, but theoretically it could. Let's fucking go! Oh, crossbeam who? More like crossbeam's a bitch. <laughs> no real time vod for this? No, I get fucked. Down back again and I lie. God, that's fucking great, dude. That's fucking great. That's fantastic. Let's run it again. Maybe it's a fluke. Literally the exact same benchmark in both. Same values being stored. Yep, 2066, and this will come in at like 24 to 2600. No surprise. No surprise. Um, yeah, I think having those on, on a cash line and then bam. Okay. Beautiful. How am I doing on my locks? Fetch add one. Uh, that's, I think ours would perform a lot better on arm because we're not using a compare exchange. And I think arm 64 has a fetch add. But I think their compare exchange is pretty heavy. I think our ordering is also just better. I think this would work better on weekly ordered systems. Write in the value. We have to write in the value. We have to get a ticket. Uh, versioning stuff. Yeah, so let's try it with a, a slightly larger queue. Let's try uh, 32. So we'll get both of them 32s. 32 is still a really small queue. Oh, I crush it. Slaughtered. Fucking slaughtered. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! Let's fucking go! God damn it, I'm so fucking good. Fuck! Oh, let's go! All right, all right. Time for the next Eddie. Yeah, Desu, get fucked, you piece of shit. Let's see what my battery life's at. Smile for me, Des. What you looking at? My battery life is... Oh my god, it's completely full. Okay, so we've used no battery. I see. <laughs> I see. And then I think... I have a mute on the device. I think I can hit mute. Yeah, so I can mute myself because I'm about to take a piss. And you don't need to hear me pissing. All right, Chad, I'm done pissing, so I'm going to wash my hands now, okay? This is the type of immer immersive streams that I know that you all want. I'm washing my hands thoroughly. 
right? This is the right thing to do. And then, good. And then I dry them off with a nice towel. And there we go. We're, we are nice and clean, chat. Nice and clean. <laughs> I think I'm also going to drop this down my shirt. So I don't keep snagging the cable as much. I don't know. It might still snag just as much. It's not an infinite amount of protection on that. And then my headphones, those can just float outside. <sighs> Chat, how do you like that? How do you like that I can take you on a walk? Okay, now let's try 1024, which is probably what I would actually use. Because 32 is still tight. This is now using a lot of cash lines. 278, let's go, that's good. And hello, crossbeam. Hello? Hello? Okay, so mine's just objectively better by orders of magnitude. <laughs> Isn't that fucking cool, chat? Um, alignment, uh, force to a uh, cash line. Okay. So that's on a cash line. That's on a cash line. The, we put this before so that it's slightly prefetched to this. Um, I guess storing your writing in a different order. Crossbeam yields instead of locking. <sighs> First of all, yielding is ass. This is the only place where that we spin. Hello? What did you say? What did you say? But they, but they yield? But they yield? Hello? Hello? Wait, should I run that again? Hello? But crossbeam yields instead of locking? I'm Desu who used? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's because my code's fucking better, man. You just gotta understand that my code's just better. All right? But yeah, that's fucking yielding now. That's literally straight up yielding now. Now, neither of these are really yielding because they're both in hot, hot, hot contention. But mine's still just way better. So, you know, you know, just the little things. It's all right, Desu. It's okay. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you doubt me because you think you're so big brain smart just because you know, I, I know linear algebra and Gamozo's a fucking dumb dumb. When are you writing that blog, Desu? Tell me nothing right. Is you saying something? Uh-uh, you can't tell me nothing. Uh. Let them suicide doors up. Uh, we'll put in a spin loop hint. Is a what?
Yeah, dude. <clears throat> Sorry, man. But my implementation is just way fucking better. <clears throat> because I'm not using Compare Exchange. Compare Exchange sucks ass, dude. Right? Is you saying something? Uh-uh, you can't... I kind of wasn't expecting this to be a hundred lines of code, to be honest. It's fucking tiny. It's tiny! And we've done micro-architectural optimizations now by doing the cache line stuff. So that's pretty hot. I think Mutex... Does Mutex require send and sync? What does Mutex do for... Send and sync. Perfect. Yep, I have the correct send implementation. Send and sync is only on send. I, they don't need to be syncable. Um, yeah, so that's pretty fucking dank. <laughs> it's still really slow, but let's look at the table here. Let's take a look at uh, lock compare exchange. Lock compare exchange, uh, mem reg 64. Latency of 14, honestly, that's fucking good. That's really good. Measured throughput 19. And then what about lock xad? 18. There you go, it's faster. See, it's faster than compare exchange, so it's better. Assembly time? Oh, uh... You are not a happy one. Enough's enough, we're done. Uh, how do I do this? Nothing anymore. Uh, target defines no functions? What is pub? How does this work? What's dash p? Package? Fuck. I need to export a pub fn? But I do that because I have a pub structure and a pub FN. Oh, oh, yeah, because it's generic. Yeah, you're right. Say a night without a ghost in Takes the earth underground Is that not sufficient? Is that not sufficient? Make it push and pop? I'm surprised I have to do that. This is gonna inline it. Okay, can I, oh. Well, I did. Yo, these spaces are a little excessive, are they not? Been like a dog on the floor. Imagine living like a king's. All right, uh, we load one in. That's so we can do an, ex uh, an XAD with one, so we add one. 
We then get the result of that. We shift it right by two to divide it by uh, n. In our case, n is eight, so that's dividing it by eight. We and it, and that is giving us the index. We're taking RDI plus 128, which is the offset to the, uh, I guess, uh, oh, that's values. Right, because this is zero, this is 64, this is at 128. So at 128, we get the, we get a, a reference, um, or actually we're just reading the value. RDI plus 128. Oh, that's getting, that's derefing the, the pointer to the box. Um, and then we're dividing our SI by six, or shifting it left, we're multiplying it uh, to determine the index, or more specifically, the byte offset. We're then getting the address, so the LEA is this. We're then moving our X into RDX. We're ORing RDX with one, uh, which is setting that bottom bit, because here it knows it can just OR it in. We then load RSI, uh, we loop, uh, with our pause, go to three. We got a, a memory barrier here. Pause. Interesting that it split it up into two loops, but that makes sense. You've got your outside and then your inside. Um, and then add two and then we write it out, right? So the only lock instruction, the only atomic instruction in this entire thing is this, right? It's just a lock X add. So the only thing that we can do is cut down on dependent loads. So one of the dependent loads that I'm immediately seeing here is um, having the box, right? This deref, because that is a dependent load here. So that's four cycles. Everything else here looks pretty clean. Um, everything else honestly just looks like uh, uh, contention on the bus. Right? So, that's honestly the only optimization I can see here, is inlining the box, making atomic queue uh, a question mark sized thing, and then you would put an atomic queue in a box itself. Like this whole thing would go in a box, rather than this be in a box, such that the bo you already have the pointer, you get the pointer to the box once rather than every iteration. Does that make sense? That's the only thing I can think of because this is a, that's a dependent load, right? This LEA cannot happen until this load completes. Um, and this can't happen until this completes. And then RCX is used down here. Yeah. So that's the only thing I could think of is just making this a, a question mark sized structure. And then we can check out pop, but I imagine pop is going to be the same thing. X add, this is on 64. Uh, we compute our, our uh, offsets. I don't know what this is. Uh, masking off the bottom two bits. Shift right by two. Move RCX racks and RCX by negative two. Can't say I know what that's doing. Um, and then and move, shoal, LEA, move, 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 move. This looks fucking great, man. Move five. What? Oh yeah, because R pop or R push is always writing five. And then or with one, write that in. That looks good. Code gen looks fine. Code gen looks totally fine. Minus two is masking off the lowest bit. Yeah, I'm really bad at my ones or twos complement. Okay. 
So, that is good, chat. That's good. I think we did a good job. Um, so, how can we improve this? I, I really think what it comes down to is we can do different benchmarks. So, how did the Atomic Q dude... How did he do his benchmarks? I think he had two Qs facing each other and two threads. And the fair comparison for us is Atomic Q two, a fixed size ring buffer for non-atomic elements. A faster one, which busy weights when empty or full. So this is literally mine, Optimus Atomic Q. A faster fixed size ring buffer for non-atomic elements, which busy weights when empty or full. That's everything that ours does. That's like an actual apples to apples. So that's Optimus. These are messages per second. What is this? N producer threads push a four byte integer into one same queue. N consumer threads pop the integers from the queue. All producers post one million messages in total. Um, total time to send and receive all the messages is measured. The benchmark is run uh, for from one up to total numbers of CPUs. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, that's messages per second, so let's try this. Let's see how we're doing. So, the logic here is what? Let's just do one thread. And a million messages. And a four-byte integer. So, U32. We'll just comment out crossbeam for now. So we're going to make uh, one producer and one consumer. All producers make a, thousand, uh, a million messages. Yeah. Right? Jesus Christ. Ugh. Oh. Uh. Oh. It's pretty good but it's all getting optimized out. Oh, that's per message. That cycles per message. Okay, so it's not getting optimized out. So this is actually 2.1E6 or 2.1E9 divided by this. How many messages per second? 50, 58 mil. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we're beating him. What did we say? Uh, Optimus Atomic Q2. Optimist Atomic Q2. He is getting 230. Okay, never mind. Um, min 25, max 682. Uh, I don't know how he's pinning his cores and shit. Uh, 230. I mean, he's probably clocking double what I am. That's pretty good. Oh, did he remove inline never? No, I didn't. But it doesn't seem to matter. Oh, how big is their queue? How big's the queue? Do you see info about the size of the queue? It shouldn't matter too much. But there's definitely a sweet spot. Unfortunately. Maybe it is just bigger is better. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's pretty good. 32. 6.48. And he's probably clocked twice as fast. Atomic Q. Optimist Atomic Q2. Optimist Atomic Q2. 230. I don't know what those min and maxes are. I think he also is using uh, Atomic uh, U32s, which I am not doing. It shouldn't be a major difference. I also don't know if his is safe, right? Mine is safe to the semantics that Rust guarantees. I don't know if he's relying on certain things. I don't think so. I, I think this dude has done all the work. Oh, here we go. This is what I want. Uh, Xeon Gold 6132. What's this clocked at? This is a Skylake. A Skylake at... Jeez, even this clock's faster. Atomic Q... Optimus Atomic Q2. And this is 79 million mean. And I think that's pretty close to what I'm doing when you account for different clock rates. Because that's clocking to 3.7 turbo, 2.6 base. I have no idea if he has that enabled or not. Right? Um, and mine is a uh, Xeon six two uh, six three seven. No, that's uh, six. No, what am I running on this computer? Xeon Silver forty three ten. So this is what I have. This clocks to three point three. This one goes to three point seven. Two point one versus two point six. Hard to say what they're clocked at. It's really hard to say what they're clocked at. Oh, is that why his min and max are so high and low? See how his min goes down to 13, but his max goes to 166? I think that's because he is randomly scheduling his threads. And when you randomly schedule your threads, you can get this to happen. 0 and 24. Uh, is that what I want? Yeah, I think 0 and 24. Also, I just don't think this is running long enough. Let's just do this. 39, 11, 32. So I think these are sibling threads. I think the threads are the top bank. I don't think these are threads. But then some of these are going to be really ass. Like 0 to 47 is going to be not... Oh, that's better? That makes sense. Maybe. Um, average of 79. And what's the B2? What's the Bs? Oh, B is a dynamic size. Or not a dynamic size, but a, a non-const size. So, yep, definitely a Optimist Atomic Q2 is the fairest comparison. 79 mil. We're, like, right there. Oh, yeah, I also am not changing my node. But that, that's okay. I don't even know how these threads are actually getting scheduled because uh, Rust tests use threads like themselves, which is a little spoopy. 30. Because, yeah, that's, that's pretty close to his numbers. 30? 30, 35? God, even this is running fast. 
Oh, and what's he measuring? Uh, just per second. Okay. Run for that to that. How does his Q do? So it gets worse as you add cores, which makes sense. Let's see how mine scales. I think 100 mil is fine. Let's use uh, four threads. So that's four producers, four consumers. Hundred mil might be too much now. Maybe mine really doesn't scale well. Yeah, mine doesn't scale well. Six point one mil, and he's doing thirty three mil. Really? Oh, I'm doing more stuff now. Multiply by four. 24 mil. And he's at 33 mil. Yeah, he's like 1.36 over, and let's just assume he's turboed and I'm turboed. His turbo is 3.7, and my turbo is 3.3. Yeah, this is probably a little faster. This is a smidgen. Uh, it could also be this number is just a little big at this point. What is that, 343? Oh, that was also only one run. That could have just been a particularly bad one. 358? Okay, maybe not. Holy shit, let me get rid of this mute. Jesus Christ. There we go. And then we can start doing micro-optimizations. It was probably inlined anyway, so that shouldn't do anything. You know what? I bet he's not benchmarking thread creation and deletion. <laughs> that being said, I amortize that cost quite a bit. Because this is running long enough. Like, when I do this, I, yeah, I think it's fine. I think this is running long enough. Uh, Numa control. Let's do P zero and then zero one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, just Numa control. Numa control. P zero. Oh, I don't think I. I, I think P might. Um. Preferred allocate from that node. And then I also want fizzbind CPU. Only execute on CPUs and CPU node bind on this node. So this is only ever executing on those nodes. Okay. Good night, Geek Pirate. I don't know. I, I think I'm happy with my implementation. It's pretty good. I I honestly wonder if it's that extra like DRF on the box. Eh, not at this speed. Do 10 mil. Let's see if we have a, a comfort zone here. Oh wait, that was 197? Oh! Then it was Numa. Then I might be winning. 203, 197? Right? Let's do his his numbers are specifically. He is doing 
uh, just time it takes to, to do it. So just wall clock time. I like cycles more, but whatever. And then this is messages is iters times threads. Uh, so this is going to be per second. So iters times threads. divided by elapsed. So that is total number of messages sent, iters, because that's what he says. All producers post a million messages in total, total time to send and receive, so it's total time. So there's a total time to send, in this case, 40 million messages. Okay, maybe I'm only getting 10 mil. 10 mil? He also averages 33 runs. Yeah, that's fine. How is my math so far off? Because now... Did I bug or something? Nobody out there. Wasn't it saying 200? But, oh no, that was the correct number. I see. Yeah, the multiply by four was incorrect. Okay, so mine's just dog shit. Huh, I'm kind of surprised. I guess there's just too many rights. Because he was getting um, this. Oh, I was looking at the wrong one. I was looking at this, right? I was looking at Optimus Atomic Q2, 33 mil. Obviously, I'm not going to have that. It's this. Ah, there it is. 10 mil. I think we're faster. 10.47. And we're getting 10.7. Well, whatever this is. 10.3. But we're clocking quite a bit slower. Oh, whoa. It really likes 32. Yeah, so this is the problem with benchmarks, man. Like... Like, the problem is, like, there's all these other parameters. Like, that Q size change, now that we're 32 for a Q size, now we're fucking slaughtering it. We're 3x faster. Does cache line occupy all 64 bytes or it only forces alignment? Technically, it, it means the same thing. Cache line will be... Uh, size of cache line will be modulo 64, because it has to be. But yeah, so like now we're fucking 3x faster. So like, it, it's really hard to compare these things. Um, especially we're not running his actual benchmark on our actual machine. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's crushing it. By a factor of three. And I'm looking at the right one, right? Uh, Optimist Atomic Q2. Faster fixed size ring with busy weights for empty or full. So that's what I'm doing, which is like super optimistic. And Atomic Q2, uh, or Optimist Atomic Q2, 10.4 mil. Uh, fastest was 12, slowest was 7.7. 7. And my, I'm seeing fucking 31 mil here. So like... Those are the benchmarks. Where's his actual benchmark stuff? Mm. 
me she knew my shit. Wow, and he goes to real time. And he uses large, like huge pages. And he goes absolute maximum performance. Okay. Yeah, like he he's he's doing the shit that I'm doing. It's not like I'm I'm fucking YOLOing. What's chirp? Oh, uh sets FIFO scheduling for the for the work. God damn. In source? Where where's the source? Oh, benchmarks. And I want Optimist Atomic Optimist Atomic Q2. Oh, and he's uh Oh, that's for the SPSCs. Oh, only if it is SPSC. Uh T size Q types. Size 65536. You're right. Then I'm way faster. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Uh, avoid hyperthread, same socket. So they even pin them. Like he pins them explicitly. Like he's doing everything. What if I give it the wrong Numa node? I mean, this should be ass because the atomics have to go to that node. It's still way better. I'm very confused. 50, what the fuck? That was 56 mil? Did I get scheduled on the same thread? I think that same thread will be that 45 mil. There's a 66 mil. I'm also streaming right now. Like, you have no idea how noisy this is. There's a compare exchange. Dude, I think mine is faster. I legitimately think mine is faster. And I think it's sound. I'm also using U64s. Not that I gain much. Linux noise? Yeah. So this is the same issues that I ran to in um, in uh, the queue that I use for uh, cannoli, right? So cannoli has a queue, which I forgot. I forgot I even fucking wrote this, mempipe. Um, but mempipe is a queue system. Uh, this one's a little bit different because this is meant for like IPCing data. Honestly, this fucking queue is incredible. I need to forget. I need to not forget that I wrote this code because this queue is unbelievably fast. Like, it, it's, this is good shit. This is good code. Um, running both is source and, and yeah, yeah, I know. Run it in sushi roll. Oh, fuck my ass, chat. Chat, I don't know how to do things on two different cores in Sushi Roll, okay? We're gonna do it. We're gonna learn how to do it. Because, yeah, in Sushi Roll, this should be stable. Um... How much more stable do you think this is gonna be? Keep in mind, this is now a different system. Uh, so numbers will change. Like, stop thinking about absolute numbers. We're on a completely different computer. Take me higher. 
Okay, so I need to make an allocation on one core and pass it to the other cores. How the fuck do I do that? You think variants might be high in sushi roll? So I do have a hot looping BSP. That's the one of the only problems with sushi roll is I have one core that is hot looped. It's not multi-thread, it's shared memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here's how I think I'm gonna do this. Um, I guess, will I get a core zero? No. Uh, and we'll get to, um, Um, you know what? We can just do it the correct way. Uh, dude, I do not remember how to send messages, and this message stuff is ass. I do allocations over message passing. It's really interesting. It's a, this is like a really shit design in terms of perf, but I, I like it in terms of a, a kernel high level design. Um, oh, I think, yeah, I can't do core to core communications. Um, okay. Chat, do not do this ever, 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 okay? What I'm about to do, you cannot do this. Uh, I think this kernel has an identity map. Chat, do not do this, okay? Uh, we can pick better than that, right? Uh, I do run the bootloader. I do that. Uh, chat, do not do this, okay? Chat, do not do this. What do I want to use here? What do I use? <sighs> uh, I need like a, a token. A token. My own two feet again. It's been a while. How do I how do I put a fucking like token in here? Instruction. 
I got it, chat. I got it. 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 I got it, chat. Uh, it's so it's so obvious, chat. I, I was I was dumb. I'm sorry. I was I'm sorry, chat. Um. It's so obvious that I wasn't addicted as a moon. What did I call this fucking atomic Q? Oh, and uh, let's get rid of this shit. Okay. Or we could just do it here. That's going to be on node zero, right? We can just put it here, right? Right? We can just put it right here. Right here. Feel this way. We can just put it right here. Just slide it right in there. Yeah. Da 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 ba 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 da. Okay. Uh. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Chat, are you remembering to not do what I'm doing right now? Do not do this, chat. <sighs> chat, do not do this. perfect <laughs> first time using rust today i'm learning a lot hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> oops <laughs> ha! Ha! 
hell? <laughs> Let's go! Let's fucking go! Art! 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 God, I'm so fucking good at dev. This is how you do a, a um, prints that don't overlap each other as well. This is a little trick I like to show people. Uh, GS dot, so that's the A cutie. Um, let's go into, uh, let's just rip this over here. God, I love that diagram. Chat, anyone want this diagram? We're going to save it. Uh, save as... Uh, stream, stream, stream. Uh, this is called a uh, core diagram. Okay, we'll close that. Okay, okay. We're going to just temporarily just shh. we're just going to temporarily do this. Oh, fuck you, you piece of shit. See a little slang full? Yeah, let's go! Let's fucking go! Let's go! Let's fucking go! It's beautiful! It's beautiful! <laughs> it works! It works! Barrier instead of sleep? I can't use barriers. Aren't barriers standard? Let's go! Okay. So fucking good at dev. I'm the best goddamn dev alive. Ah, that's so good. That's so good. I don't understand how the code I write is so goddamn good. Chat, I don't think you understand how hard it is to do this in Sushi Roll. You think I can just put fucking globals in here? No, you can't do that. Uh, you gotta do this. I'm, that's literally physical memory. I'm literally passing things in fizzmem. So, chat, if you're not familiar with why this is such a hard problem, in Sushi Roll, there are no globals. 
globals are thread locals because the uh, all writable sections of the PE file are literally duplicated on each core and you only get cores, not threads. So I can't make a static. I can't make a global. I can't use a barrier because anything that I can do in Rust using static will be a thread local. <laughs> so I have to just pick a random physical memory address that I don't think will be used like this. And, and then I can put my shit there, but I can't initialize it because I don't know, like I can't initialize it because the cores all come online at the same time. Make a barrier and stuff. I can't even do that because I can't initialize it. <laughs> right? I can't, I can't have an initial value. I mean, I can do that up here before I spin up threads. I think BSP, uh, where do I launch threads actually? Maybe interrupts in it. I don't think I do it in BSP entry. I think they might all be coming up regardless. Honestly, I don't even know. I might not even spin them up in this OS. The bootloader might spin them up. I can't remember what the design is in here. Assume zero, Alec, I can't do that. <laughs> because I'm using the same physical location in memory as my barrier. So every time I reboot, it would then be the same <laughs> because that memory is in the exact same state every time I reboot, right? So if I rebooted here and I didn't reinitialize that, I'd have the same old pointer in it. <laughs> it's a hard problem. It's not trivial, okay? It requires OS support, all right? So we do this. We just core out some fucking fizzmem. Run it twice, once writing zero. <laughs> once expecting it to be zero. Uh, but then what if I reboot between those two gaps? All right? I think this model works great. Have you seen an error here? I haven't. Looks fucking good. I give it a millisecond. I give it a whole millisecond. Fuck it, we'll give it 10 millis. We'll give it 10 millis to make up its fucking mind, okay? So it's got an eternity to fill that shit in. There's no race here. Ah, god damn it. I don't know what this bug is, chat. I'm sorry, but I don't know what it is, so we're just rebooting the box. Soft reboots are very, very difficult things, as you may imagine. But I think this is, uh, I think this is just my HTTP thing sucking ass. Pog website? Yeah, hell yeah, you like it? You like what you see? Are you talking about the stream website or the other one? Rip stream? Oh, looks good to me. Still sending out data. Come on. Double in with these changes. Living with these changes. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, now we want to do a barrier. Should I always stream here? Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, because here I can hack games. And, and do mobile game, uh, not mobile, uh, uh, multiplayer game cheats and shit and work on crazy World of Warcraft shit. I can do whatever the fuck I want here. <laughs> that's, the, that's the whole reason I'm streaming here. It's cool to have the control, but like ultimately it's because Twitch would ban me if I streamed what I want to stream half the time. Uh, what am I fucking doing, man? Down with the sickness. Atomic U64. Yep. So we're going to default that. 
And then uh, what we need to do is we need to now make a barrier. And that's what I just, that's what I just did. Uh, and then we'll do gs.barrier.fetchAd1 ordering relaxed. Uh, while gs.barrier.load ordering relaxed is not equal to uh, 95. 96 should never get to this point. Woo. We should never hit 96. Even though we have 96 cores, the BSP is in some other fucking dimension. God fucking damn it, dude. What is this bug? Could not download kernel? Uh, BSP. Source BSP. Mod. Not download kernel falling back. Failed to get the kernel buffer. Download. Oh, could not download kernel. Yeah, okay, so just fucking keep retrying, right? Right? Yeah. I take this, tab it in. Uh huh. And do this. Comment this out. Comment this out and do continue. And then here, fucking break. Right? I'll fix it if it works sometimes, right? Maybe I should put a sleep in here. Chill a bit. Just fucking retry, right? Printlin uh, failed to download kernel. Uh, retrying. Fuck yeah. Okay. Hey! Hey! It worked! It fucking worked! Now, why is this failing sometimes? Is it because I'm streaming and I'm just getting some weird responses via HTTP? Kernel buffer. I don't understand. I must be getting like a weird Nginx response. I mean, it, it comes back. That's 10 millis. Maybe I'm just dropping packets or some shit. And my my packet retrying is just absolute garbage because it's the shittiest TCP stack you've ever seen. Yeah, that sounds about right, but this works, okay? Uh, that's good. Okay, and then we never hit this print because we have to go to 95, run this, here we go. It's not always gonna do this now, is it? Oh, there we go, we got some woos. Perfect. If we got woos, that means that we have successfully gotten here and we've done a barrier. So we've actually blocked until this. So now all the threads are like pretty synced up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if thread core ID is equal to one, else if thread core ID is equal to two, else CPU halt. So they can go fuck themselves. So then in core one, we're just gonna do four blah and zero to blah. We're gonna do uh, gs.q 
dot push five. And then for blah and zero dot blah blah blah. GS dot Q dot pop. Uh, and then we'll do uh, IT is CPU RDTSC. Not that it fucking matters. I can just do it here. Uh, and then I like time RDTSC. And then elapsed is time elapsed since IT. Is that correct? RDTSC elapsed. Oh, God, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Gives the time in in uh, in seconds. Oh, oh, that's just so hot. Oh, and then elapsed. Oh, oh, floats in the kernel. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, shittiest TCP stack on the planet. Oh yeah. Oh baby. Oh, it's so shit. Oh, it's such a bad TCP stack. We should probably just turn off my TCP stack and then just only use Pixie Boot because this TCP stack is ass. It's ass. <sighs> Fuck. Uh... Of course, that's a page fault. Um, okay, we have to reboot this. And now that we'll have a reliable thing, we'll just reboot through Pixie. So we'll go through a slightly slower soft reboot process, but it's still a soft reboot. Um, okay, so uh, I'm getting a, a seg fault. And that makes sense because we are uh, accessing stuff from the wrong core. So we need to make uh, a cutie. Because that box is it. Isn't using HTTP in the kernel cringe? Nah, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. It's a little cringe, but it's the it's the easiest way to serve files, so it's just the best way to go. Okay. I think it's just it it's either my TCP stack being shit or it's HTTP. I don't know if I'm, like, going to be dropping any packets. I don't think so. I mean, my network usage is pretty low. I've got 45 people watching. I'm at, like, I'm peaking at, like, 100 megabit of upload, which is just nothing, dude. Beautiful. Okay, I should be able to soft reboot. Oh, fuck my ass. Oh, chat, why didn't you tell me I did that? Source BSP mod. There you go. There you go. Now it's back. Do you play WoW on private servers or pay for it? I do both. I play I play WoW wherever the party is. It's a social game, and the people are only only in certain places. I don't really give a shit about the cost. I'm playing it for fun, man. Oh my God. 
stop streaming on Twitch? I was trying this out, but I probably will because this went really well. And it's only going to get better. It's kind of no reason to stream on Twitch if I got this, right? Like, Discovery, but who the fuck cares, man? People, people find this through word of mouth. Yeah, like, it just doesn't fucking matter. People aren't randomly finding the stream. It's just... It is not. Okay, so... Perfect. So we can now do our soft reboot. So you can see that this is a slightly slower soft reboot because we're going over uh, TFTP, which is just a shittier, slower protocol. But obviously, doesn't have as many issues. Yeah, I think we're dropping packets on that box. Uh, I wonder what's going on. Huh. I'm not sure. I that's kind of interesting. Clearly, I'm dropping packets. So, yeah, and I know my TCP stack is not resilient in this kernel. So if I'm dropping any packets, I expect I'm just losing everything. So that's fine. Okay. Um, I wonder why. I must have a lot of, like, multicast traffic going on or something about streaming. Or maybe it's a switch problem. Because I'm feeding a 10 gigabit. I just shouldn't. I don't know. Box is allocated on the first core, but the pointer is used in all. Yeah, that's the problem. So I just need to, to fix that. And I don't know how I want to do that, actually. I could do it by making it sized, which I kind of just wanted to do anyways. And getting rid of the box. Like this. Uh, then this would be an array initializer. Honestly, we can kind of just do it on the stack, but we're going to have to push it somewhere else. But like a lot of these cues are actually like totally fine to have on the stack. Actually, this isn't unsized because it's a, it's a constant size array. This actually is totally fine. Uh, yeah, I like this. Uh, this is a vast improvement. It just gets rid of another DREF. It's just better, man. It's just better. It's just fucking better. Uh, so these are from Array. I forget what this function is called. Um... Uh, Array... How do you do this? What's the fucking array thing? Array from FN. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. Um. Core array from FN. Bam, bam. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. That's just better, man. Takes the index. Values. Uh, cache line. Let's go. No alloc dependency anymore. Bam! Bam! Let's go! Okay. Now this should work. Core 1, Core 2. Something's fucked. Hopefully I'm not using this memory. Let's let's go up another four gigs. 
Just in case I'm doing some like aligned allocations. I should be able to boot out, uh, reboot out of this. Ooh, what's going on? Oh, I triple faulted. Uh, okay, that means something's really bad. Uh, hmm. Right. Ooh. Uh. Oh. Uh, I exhausted my stack. <laughs> That's one of the only ways I can triple fault in uh, in this kernel is uh, exhausting the stack because I don't put a guard page on the stack because this happens so fucking rarely and it's the only way my kernel can crash. Because it's fucking rust. It's safe code. It's like very rarely do I crash things. You obviously saw I crashed there, but I'm doing fucking hacky as shit. So like basically if I ever get a reboot, I know it's because of stack exhaustion. There you go. Yeah, right. Um, okay. So that's elapsed in seconds. Uh, and then we can do... And that's calibrated and everything. That, that's like actually very well calibrated in terms of what the tick rate is. Uh, for the TSC. So let's do the math. Safe code. How big is your stack? I don't know. Probably a meg. I can't imagine it was that big. I mean, that was 64K of cash lines. So 250, uh, 64 times 64. That was 64 megs, right? That was a massive allocation. Um, and I could make this all uninit and then it would be fine. So let's do the iters. 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 And then we'll do like 12.6. Iters SF64 divided by elapsed, right? That is the iterate the messages per second. Right? We send them all, we receive them all, that is messages per second. Beautiful. So that's 13 mil. Um, so now let's... Uh... How do I initialize this? I need to kind of make like an init mem or some shit. Um, let's, let's try something. Check this out. Q is, a uh, maybe on a net. Ooh, no, it's going to be a pointer. I mean, that, and then this is self. Right? Yeah, I think we can do this. Pass a closure to constructor when initializing array from FN for this. I mean, that's just maybe on in it, though, is the problem. Ref self, right? Isn't that weird? But I could see myself doing this a lot with data structures, to be honest. Uh, okay. <sighs> Fuck, how do I do this, man? Uh...
God, I forgot how to fucking do this. Uh... Oh, uh, just this will work. Okay. I'm going to require this to be mute. Because that way I can do this dot write atomic u64 new that right that's what i want mutable reference to a maybe uninit of self that then returns a mute self. Uh, Q dot maybe uninit, maybe uninit is as mute pointer. Bam. Uh, cache line. Honestly, I don't even need to initialize the rest of the cache line. I should just do this. Deref the head? And get zero? Oh, I can just do this. That? Fuck, now I'm getting lost. Uh, that. And this, that, that, bam, head, tail, for blah and zero to n, values. Add I I uh, values add I I no can I can I do this I have no idea if I can do this here Okay. Zero. Let's go! I think that's right. <laughs> so we write a zero for the Atomic 64 for the head, for the tail, and then for each of the values, we write Atomic U64 on the zero. All of that has been strongly 
checked. Now I can do the actual benchmark, 65536. Five, and then when I do Q, uh, that's going to be... Um, Mm. Barrier. Uh, GS dot barrier. That. Um, I know this is ass chat. I know it's kind of shit. This is good. This is good up here. This is shit down here. But that's okay. Um, barrier store that. And then GS, uh, in this case, will be ref. Dref and then we'll do gs dot q dref dot as pointer. Oh, I guess we want access to gs as a whole. Okay. And then, uh, let's Q is equal to GS dot Q assume in it ref to your F. Er, assume in it ref. Bam. Uh, and then this is just Q. Because this will never allocate on the stack anymore. Whew. Maybe it will. Looks like it's running. Or it's rebooting. Fuck. Uh... Assuming it ref. Shit. I think we're making it on the stack somewhere, aren't we? Because that's a, that feels like a triple fault. Oh, no. No, it's just uh, not completing. Okay. Okay. Uh... Oh, I didn't call it knit in place. Jesus Christ. Chat. 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 Come on. Come on. Bam. <laughs> it's like, how the fuck? 77 mil? Dude, look how deterministic it is. I told you my OS is clean. Why did you fuckers doubt me? Uh, and then these aren't even APIC IDs. Let's get the APIC IDs. Because I bet these APIC IDs are changing, so I'm not even on the same cores when I'm running these, right? We had a 20, a, a 2 and a 4, maybe. A 2 and a 4 again. A 2 and a 4. Okay, I think we're getting the same APIC IDs. Oh, I initialized the cores in APIC order. So they'll always be in order. That makes sense. 
Um, okay, we could get rid of my node prints. Those are a little bit egregious at this point. Is that from the bootloader? Oh, dump. Uh, where do I fucking print this shit? Oh, this is a BSP. Mm, uh, that. Node total memory detected CPUs. And then we'll go into, ah, fuck it, verbose. We'll just put this in like verbose boot way up in this bitch. Verbose boot, verbose boots, verbose boots, verbose good. Uh, these are crates. Okay, then we can go into source BSP mod online and ready if. Create verbose boots. And then all cores. God, this kernel's so nice to work on, man. Here we go. Should just spew less shit now. Uh, what's going on here? Is this address being used now? And it in place. Uh, what's going on? Oh, launch AP. I just didn't boot the course. <laughs> uh, wow. I love how I can make that big of a mistake and I can still fucking fresh reboot this kernel or soft reboot this kernel. God fucking damn it, that's nice. All right, here we go. Bam. 758. 75848. 75844. Yeah, I told you it'd be fucking stable in my OS. That's pretty good. 7591. Is that not the benchmark that they're doing? Well, this is, uh, so noisy. <laughs> We're not even, like, running long enough that the CPU can warm up. Like, it's still, like, the wake-up time is still considerable there. There we go. 76151. 76147. How much variance is that? Oh, that's not bad. Times 100. 
So it's like uh, a 0 0.005. So it's like five parts per million right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is, this is really good. It's literally like five PPM. <laughs> Honestly, most of this, ah, uh, ooh, mm. It's probably coming down to uh, the fact that I have ASLR. I bet it's just ASLR, dude. Let's, uh, let's try it. Because uh, ASLR will change the shape of memory significantly. Which will just change, like, what's missing and hitting caches. And, uh, that'll affect our stacks. I mean, yeah, I randomized my kernel base. Oh, uh, one terabyte identity map. What's your name? Let me talk to you. Let me buy a drink. But I generate a random stack address. Ah, it'd be hard to remove all that. All right. Yeah, we're just going to have to deal with this insane amount of noise chat. How we live. Drunk and forget who we did. Um, and then that's probably all on one node. I got money in the bank, shorty. God, that's beautiful. So, what was our number to beat? Um... Ooh. I talk back. Money, I talk back. This is going to be closest to a 6132. So 6132 versus a 6252N. So here's what their benchmarks are and here's what mine are. So theirs is 2.6 gigahertz turboing to 3.7 minus 2.3 turboing to 3.6. So I should be at a slight disadvantage here. Both my clock rates are lower, so I should just be a lower clock rate. So let's see. So I need to beat 79 mil, and we're at 76 mil. So we're basically right there. 79006. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good to me. Um, what if we like move some of the, what if we move the cores a little bit further apart? Let's see if we get different variants. Different queue size this time? Well, I'm using the same queue size that they do, right? 65536, which is what we saw in their code, right? Money in the 17 million. Yeah, there's a huge hit. And I think that's why he has so much variance in his. What's his go down to? 30 mil? Or 13 mil. Yeah, I think that's what's happening, is you're, you're kind of comparing different scenarios with each other. Let's go to, like, four. Because some of those cores are going to be closer than others. And if you get those on the same hyper threads, you'll get way better perf. I wouldn't be surprised if hyper threading's on. I don't know. I thought I saw that in the blog. Um, uh, Oh, yeah, he special cases this as a 
SPSC. So I shouldn't even be able to beat him here, if I'm being honest, right? Because he literally specializes for SPSC. I thought he mentioned... I swore I read, like, uh, about the threading configuration, but um, that might have been for something else. As Optimist Atomic Q2, 79 mil mean, standard deviation of 30 mil. Obviously, I'm just not going to have a standard deviation in my environment. Okay, so let's do one to two. Oh, that's so nice and stable. Honestly, I'm probably losing some stability because I'm... These other cores haven't halted when this is running. But... At some point, you have to give up on reducing noise. Oh, I have... My turbo is off, isn't it? Dude, I have no idea if he has speed step or turbo on. Um, I guess, I don't know. How fucking hard would it be to get this into my kernel? Probably not too hard. Because let's see. He's doing 65536. And then what was not apples to apples here? Oh, because he has an SPSC. So let's go to a little bit more scaling. Um, <laughs> let's see. God, how the fuck would I... How would I do that? I'd have to write, like, uh, little C bindings for it. And then I'd have to get that into this. <laughs> how tough would that be, chat? Is that gonna be a pain in the ass? Uh, first, let's get this core shit working. like that uh four and then if thread dot core id is greater than threads halt times two Bam. And fuck. Uh... Um, God damn it. <laughs> Snag this. So, what do we want to do here? Threads core ID. If that's greater than threads times. Two, because zero is used. Then we'll have one, two, three, that are coming on like that. Threads times two, that would be eight. Equal to eight is okay, so that means I'll have one through eight inclusive. Let's say and one is zero, else. Can I just do this? Get on the other side. And then this not equal to threads times two. Long will I slide. Myself. 
It might just be taking a while, I'm not sure. Yeah, just taking a while. Yep, yeah, we got three different returns. Uh, yeah, I think this works. I think this is correctly picking uh, four producers and four consumers, which is what their benchmark does. And we're getting uh, three mil, but then we have to sum these up. I guess we can just do a fetch add fetch sub one if this is equal to one then print we'll start the timer immediately at the barrier so one of them might exit sooner but since we're averaging over such a long period that will be below the noise floor if we really cared then we could do that but this should be good Um, and then it's iters times threads, right? Because we have that many iters, that many producers. That's how many messages are being transmitted. And here we go. Okay. 11.9 mil. 11.9 mil. Yep, so that's stable. And then it was like 1024 or something made it better. Or was that the good one? We did U32s, and what am I storing? U32s, 65536. Threads four, let's do two of these, average a bit longer. Ten point eleven point nine. Where's our test? Uh, uh default. Mm-hmm. Dot right. Or AQ is uh this uh, and then that's on a box let's see i think as mute is okay here i guess i can just do this i i think it will handle that for me. Otherwise, I have to do another DREF, and that's okay. Uh, box. I have to do that on the crate root, don't I? Yep. It's okay. Not too worried about it. Everything I do is nightly. Uh, what am I doing now? Oh, because it's no standard. Oh. Is that why? It's okay, we can do this for now.
I'm surprised it like has look ahead for that. That's interesting. Type annotations needed. And we want to do uh, U32 65536. Bam. Yeah, how are we getting 57 mil on this? Oh, that's one thread. Four threads. Should be like 11 mil. All right, it should be like 11 mil ish. Come on. Holy dick. Yeah, 12.12. And over here, I'm getting 11.9, which I, I think is... Yeah, that makes sense because I don't have turbo on this box. So... Yeah, 11.92. Um... So I think for us to do more tests, I think we would have to pull that implementation in. Let's see how easy this is to build. Sure, I'll just pull on all the fucking depths. I don't give a fuck, dude. I mean, that's what I have. Ah, fuck. Benchmarks, test examples. Oh, because it's all a fucking header file. Oh, okay. Okay, so that means that we need to... Uh... Um... I guess we just need to build something that uses it, right? Um, 
We'll just put it here. I don't. I just don't. I just don't give a shit. Uh, uh, chat, you'll very quickly realize that I don't know how to write C++, okay? So we're just gonna pseudocode this shit, all right? Beautiful. Okay. Where's their fucking benchmarks? And then I want the specific one I care about is this one. Optimist Atomic Q2, because this is a fair apples to apples Buttholes to buttholes comparison. I don't know. Can I do this? Something like this. Semi, because it's C++. Got to put a semi on everything. Type. Okay. Dude, I'm so fucking good. Okay, so that's how you do templates, I guess. So now I have a, a what, a Q type? Optimize, how do I use this now? Think about us and think about me. SPSC. Yeah, dude, I think they special case SPSC. So it's just not fair, man. Um... Like, uh, okay. I don't think we need to wrap shit in type, can't we? Can't we just do this? Can't we just do fucking atomic Q, atomic Q2. T is the type, so let's say unsigned int. Uh, we'll be explicit. U int 32T. Uh, we have the size. Uh, which is a uh, fucking six five five three six is what they used, and then we had a uh, maximize throughput. What do, what do they use? What the fuck do they use for throughput benchmarks? There you go, throughput benchmarks. Yep, Optimist Atomic Q, right here. Right here. Uh, HP. SPSC Optimist Atomic Q. And then MPMC, so it's false, true, true. So it should be a uh, false, true, False. True. Let's just check what they actually fucking are. But they're using maximize throughput, which makes sense. Um, benchmark, benchmark. Bop, 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 bop. Beady bop, beady bop, bop. Let's go to Atomic Q2. So we know it's 65536, so all that matters is E 
include atomic Q this this class T size minimize contention false maximize throughput total order let's just do this maximize fucking throughput all right Huh? Huh? Do push, do pop. And then there's a constructor. Is that how that works? Like this? Oh, Jesus. Like this? Do you have to say new thing? Because it's fucking Java? Oh. Oh, God. Fuck me. Oh, shit. Oh. Hmm. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How do you do fucking C again? Oh, because this is a pointer, because we did new. <laughs> fucking dumbass. Uh, wrong number of element. Should be at least two. I think it's that that it might be bitching about. No. Uh, seven should be at least two. Or do I have to do I have to template it myself here? Is that not how you you can't type def a template? Because I have my class, my size. My contention being minimized. My throughput. False, true. Oh, did I have one extra? Hey! Holy shit. I'm fucking dumb, chat. Uh, can't you do auto or some shit? Isn't that a thing? Ah, it's so gross. Might be invention. Oh, come on. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. O2. I think O2's fine. Give it a little ripper. Get a little rip. All right. Now what I have to do is I made that. Then we do foo dot do push. And then foo dot do pop. Oh, yep, yep, it's fucking this, because it's a pointer! And then do pop. Do pop. Do push. Takes a ref to the element. What's head? What's head? Oh, I think that's some, like, internal shit. I think. Right. 
Atomic kill. That's common. How do you use this? An element, which is you? What's fucking you? What's head? Do I have to manually do my head and... What the fuck? I think there has to be a more outside implementation. Oh, it implements all these things. Because it's, it's inheritance. Because C++ is the dumbest fucking thing ever. So we just do a push, right? Push and pop. Because it's C++ and it inherits fucking everything. God, this language sucks ass. Okay, all right. All right. How will I get this to run in my fucking OS? Oh. Ah? Uh? Okay. That's how long I've been on you. How do I initialize this bitch? Get most tonight. Ever over. Is there a way to initialize this? How can I run a constructor? New pointer thing? Really? What? What? Placement new?
Let's see. That's cool. Type initializer. Yeah, all right. Is that all I have to do? I don't have to assign it to anything? That? Okay. Uh... Am I using a PE? I just build uh what target looks like windows okay uh and how do I Uh, target. Come on. Single dash. Uh, F no. Uh, hi. Fuck my ass. Fuck my ass. Uh, did I just build that toolchain quick? Pseudo su cross dev. Can I even do that? Because it's going to be a, a GNU. This is going to be like PC Windows GNU is the problem. I don't think that's going to be valid. I, I surely I can get Klein to emit this, right? Well, I just don't have Atomic. So I think this will be okay if I set up a... Uh, uh, dude, I should have one. Don't I have to have a Ming, Minji W toolchain? Okay. Let's just set up a MinGW environment. Unless someone has a, a better way of doing this. I mean, I could just hard code the path to Atomic because it's probably the same, right? Uh, 
Where would that be? Where would atomic.h be? Uh Let's try this. I don't know what this path is, but I have it. Fuck. Maybe it's because I'm building that. I don't know if that's literally what I'm actively building right now, but it might be. Um, Come on. I don't know how long it will take to build this tool chain, uh, but I guess we could... Fuck around with it over here, kind of. And I won't be able to inline these, but inlining shouldn't matter in this case. It, it just, it just shouldn't. Um, it just because the, the cost of these, it, we're doing like 200, 300 cycle ops. Like, inlining is going to maybe save you two or three cycles. It, it's not, it's not massive at this granularity. Hopefully this code doesn't call new. I don't think so. I think it does it uh, in place. I'm guessing. Yep, the elements are right inside. Perfect. Perfect. They have their states on a different cache line, which is interesting. But their states are different than mine. They have to do a compare exchange with this implementation. They're going to do this do pop any shit. And do pop any has to compare exchange. In fact, it has to compare exchange in a loop. So I, I don't know. I just feel like I'm crushing this, right? And since everything's cache aligned, it doesn't really matter that I'm using U64s versus U32s. Like, hypothetically, U32s are a little bit faster, but. Okay, I've got my GCC stage one coming in. Export functions that do the iterations instead of push pop. Oh, fuck yeah, sure. Sure. I'll just hard code the iters on this side. I don't fucking care. Uh, this is, I guess we'll just make produce pointer push five and consume. That? Are you okay with that? How do you do consts? Can I just do const? I don't need const expert. Uh. All right, now would you say this is fair? Because <laughs> it's, it's literally like inlining just doesn't matter at all, okay? 
But yeah, doing the loops here is nice. Because then it can fucking optimize that that's always a five and shit. Which is stuff that mine can do, right? And then we'll just do the same thing. Instead of doing this, we'll just call theirs. And it's going to be basically the same model. And we're just waiting for this to build. Yup. How's the stream going for everyone? Everything looks good on my end, which is wild. Need to make money. What do I want to have for dinner? Sometimes doing the buffer thingy, but fine for the most part. Yeah, okay. FPS was down for a moment. Interesting. I think a lot of that is maybe that I'm doing that pass through stream. The chat stopped working for me? Huh. My chat's been working the whole time. I haven't refreshed my page at all. Had a small F. Interesting. Okay. Still building. We're still on stage one. Hey, now we're on the Minji W runtime. I'm hoping I can just build this with Minji W. And link that in. Because I think it will produce an object file. I can't remember if it makes dottos. If anything, at least we'll maybe get the fucking headers to a passable level. Diary of Jane. And then all we're gonna have to do is link to this. Uh, that's not too bad. Let's just get it ready. Like that, do you like that? Okay, I have no idea how big their queue is either. So I'll just make a massive allocation and stuff it in that shit. mm alloc node zero as pointer unwrap oops these are types gs dot there q just break this up to a hundred now uh because we're doing an allocation their Q is equal to uh, mm alloc nodes. Uh, let's just do, I don't fucking know, a gig. Uh, that should <laughs> that should be enough. And uh, node zero unwrap as pointer as u size. 
There we go. And then we'll do alloc aqgs dot their q. Uh, and then the keep cache enabled. Stage two still building, but this should be close. We should be able to nearly just link this in. Maybe I can link in the dot. Oh, I have no fucking idea, to be honest. Maybe all this is for naught. Maybe I can just link this in as is. Because I think Rust uses dottos for all the intermediate. Oh. That was wild. Yeah, literally OBS just shit itself. Probably because I'm compiling stuff and it fell behind or something. <laughs> literally OBS failing. Out of all of the weird shit in this fucking environment, OBS is what fails. That, you learn something new every day. Oh, nice try, dude. Nice try. Come on, dude. Still building stage two. Like, clearly what you're trying is not going to work, dude. <laughs> clearly, clearly it's not escaping even remotely how you expect. Come on, dude. Just build, you fuck. I do think our code is good here. I think we're ready to drop it in. I just need to figure out where to smash it into the path here. I think I can do like, uh, uh, yeah, where do I want to put this? Build kernel. Kernel, uh, I'm in kernel, cargo, config, yeah, we could just add it here, right? I'm pretty sure we can just add the path here. It's kind of, it's kind of gross, but it's fine. Uh, just still waiting on that tool chain. Hey! Been to the flan yet? It's your pin and if the flan yet. No idea what you're saying. Come on, you bitch. <sighs> Let's go. God, I'm so fucking smart. Whew. 
one 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 nine mil to beat. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that pointer needs to be a physical address. Ah, fuck my ass. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll just do this. We'll just do, uh, mm-hmm. Perfect. Actually, we'll put this at, like, 1-1, one, one, and this one we'll put at 1... Uh, we'll put this at 1-4, and we'll put this at 1-8. Uh-huh. Should have seen that one coming. Let's go. Come on. I'm good. Let's uh, remove some of these. Well, that's not going to change anything. So I guess the question is, is it running? Let's just do this. Uh, uh, let IT is time RDTSC. Let elapsed is time RDTSC elapsed. Turn LN took blah to init. Just so we see if we're like getting fucked here. And just dot six is fine. We just need this to be over because uh, we're using. Uh, oh, 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 Jesus. Bro. There you go. Don't you get winners calling conventions? I have no fucking idea, dude. There we go. That's working. And we're crushing it. Of course we're fucking crushing it. God damn, I'm so fucking smart. Uh, I just, I sometimes, sometimes I, it boggles the mind how good I am at dev. Dude, I'm fucking crushing them. They're not even close, man. This is what their benchmark is, right? A hundred million iters, six five five three six size, and unsigned ints, optimized for throughput. Yeah, I'm fucking crushing it. It's a way better fucking implementation because I'm not using a compare exchange. Can you do a lap the six? Yeah, you can. It's still taking a long time to get used to it. Jelly feeling himself. Fuck yeah, dude. We're crushing it. We're crushing it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Where the funny got no end? Bum, bum. Can need someone and I'm a pain. Okay, let's try and make this code nice. Uh, just there, Q. Okay. Going and I gotta stay high. You da pop. Huh? Huh? Let's 
Just uh, use the exact name that they use. Optimus Atomic Q2. Unless I'm not running the Optimist one somehow, but I think I am. Let's do this now. Uh... Go to Oh, fuck off. Uh, really? I mean, Right? Uh... Bamboos. <laughs> this is fucking awful. <laughs> uh... Uh, this is an A cutie. Can I just do this? A, B, like this? Can I do this, Rust? Can I do this, Rust? Will you let me do this? You little shit lang. Oh, you bitch. Oh, I wouldn't be able to find them here, right? Can I? Can I not do that? It's not, not legal? Oh, this is like it sucks ass, man. Why can't I do this with closures? Oh, because uh, of different return values? Is that why? Has, it, was this going to work the whole time? I just need to put little semis in here? Box it or having a trait object. Oh, fuck off, dude. Fuck off. <sighs> I was just trying to make this nice. All right. Yeah, I guess those clo you can't do that with those closures. What if I... Even if they're move closures, I guess, because they have different captures. Oh, this language sucks, dude. Oh, oh woe is me. Uh-huh. Zig time? Yeah. Yeah, time to go to Zig, man. Um, what would be the best way to do this? Zig doesn't have closures either. Ah. I thought I could do this because they had the, the same type. Oh, wait, can I do it here? Oh, 
Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do that, am I? Uh, rip to your grandfather, yep. Fuck. <laughs> okay, you can't do this. You can't do this shit. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck. Fuck. A two, you said a tuple of tuples? Like this? Because these are all different types. Are you thinking like this? But you can't do this. I don't understand how this helps me. Because I can't do this. Alright, I wish I could do that, but I can't. Uh... Alright, fuck it, we'll go the other way. Yeah, we're doing it. I know what to fucking do. You little fucking bitches. Should have done this from the start. It's trying to be cool. It's trying to be cool. Mm-hmm. 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 Tuple tuple is dumb dumb. Can't iterate? Yeah, yeah. That's really dumb dumb, to be honest. Not surprised, though. We're not... And this is gonna be uh, C++, uh, whatever the fuck it's called, this. And then my atomic Q. Okay, name. Mm-hmm. Let's just say like 30, uh, eh, 30 on that. Bam. Eh, something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Ah, I need more. We don't need that many sig figs if we're not doing, yeah, there we go. And then let's make sure we're actually using the atomic, this one. A faster fixed size ring buffer, which busy weights. And it's for non atomic elements. Stand up. This is atomic Q, T, size, and then it's just false on this. What's false for that? Four, five, six. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm maximizing throughput. False. Uh, 
this total order? Is that it? Uh, one's an atomic Q2. That's an atomic Q2. Oh, retry decorator. Oh. Okay, so mine's already the, the super fast. Yeah, good. Is it still running? Not drinks. Or is it failing? Or does it take this long? How long did it take to run before? It's only like half the speed. Wait, where did its print go? Uh Oh, this is not a sound um barrier. Um We'll make it a sound barrier by doing a little bit of a little bit of sleepage. <laughs> Hundred millis. That should be plenty of time. <laughs> Just put a fucking sleep in there. There you go. There's the, yup. Yeah, dude, I'm crushing it. I'm crushing it. Chat, do you have a, a fucking, a proof that I'm like doing something scuffed here? Let's run it again, see if it repros. Yeah, repros exactly. Like, it's a very stable environment here. Yeah, I'm fucking clobbering them. They're getting fucking schmeckled. Like, unless I'm doing something different here, that's the same number of digits, it's the same operation, produces push, this is pop, we're building it not optimized. Okay, now it's optimized. Okay. That could make a difference, probably not. I don't think it will, cause it's uh, cause it's all header stuff. Yeah, I made an improvement, but I didn't fucking change the characteristics of it, and that should reproduce at five seven again. There's not that much variance in this. Yeah, five seven two. Yep. Yeah, the numbers are coming out the same every time. Yeah, I'm just crushing them. I'm I'm using this. I'm I'm using atomic Q. T size, minimize contention, maximize throughput. I have all those set to the what they were. So min, max throughput, false, and false because it's not SPSC. Dude, it's it's literally implemented the same way. I think I just have a better fucking design. I don't think people have this design, chat. I don't think this is like a design people have. I think this is weirdly unique. Unless it's not sound, but I mean, Miri doesn't complain, and Miri would find like tiny, tiny race conditions. It can find, it can find memory ordering issues. Let's try it on one thread. Maybe I, maybe I suck at one thread. I'm still better on one thread, but my advantage goes up with scalability. I guess. I guess I scale better because I'm a fair Q, right? Let's do 16 threads. 16, those are all on the same core still. OK, 
Can you test with multiple consumes? Yeah, the, the 2X is with four consumers and four producers. That, that was one in one, this, this most recent one, the 53 mil and the 73 mil. But I think I'm just faster. God damn it. I wasn't trying, Chad. I wanted to do some benches and shit. Unless I'm somehow doing templating wrong. If someone can show me that this is like way fucking off. I'm building it optimized. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if like Ming, Ming GW. I mean, this is like bleeding edge G, G++. What if you what if you have more consumes than producers? Well, I won't. <laughs> so, so I don't really care and I don't really want to write that benchmark to be honest. Uh, come on, dude. Is it not done? Do we have to cut down on itters? Let's go to 1 mil itters. Honestly, my environment is so fucking stable. I'm comfortable doing 1 mil itters. 65536 built Built, let's make sure we relink, relinking, so we'll get the new .o. These numbers would be way off if that uh, .o didn't get updated. Am I missing something? 16 threads times two. Oh, because, oh, we are going across a NUMA boundary here. Let's just do eight then. It's just going to be really slow across that boundary. Let's try this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're double. Sushi roll is so good that two hitters would be stable. You want to you wanna see? You want to see what we can do in this shit? I bet we could do a thousand hitters. And get these same numbers. So this should theoretically yield the same numbers because it's per second numbers. We're just going to be running a very short benchmark. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, dude? Isn't that insane? A thousand iters? Look at that! That was, this was a massive averaging. And this is just a boop. And there we go again. Oh, God damn. <laughs> Dude, that's actually pretty impressive. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. All right, let's be real chat, okay? Uh, don't get don't get too excited. I, I don't think this would even be measurable on Linux. C++ version can optimize the object pointer. Uh Don't know if it makes a change. I wouldn't think so. I mean, in theory, this is a hard-coded address, and maybe Rust is optimizing that, but I really doubt it is. I really doubt it is, but I can't really do anything about that. Right? Also, I just don't really see what that would allow it to do. We'll go back to a million. I think that was a reasonable runtime. There's a possibility of a DREF. Yeah, because my Rust one could use like, well, I mean, these are 64-bit addresses, so you need to DREF them anyways. Because you can't, you can't use a 64-bit offset on a, on a load. 
right? So I just don't even think that's possible. And I don't even have LTO on and shit, so it's really not too crazy. So obviously here's the calls to produce and consume. So all of that got inlined. So this, uh, these functions got completely inlined. So absolutely nothing here is doing a call. Look at the compare exchanges. Dude, this is shit. There's a, there's a compare and exchange in each loop, man. Mine's way better. Dude, there's no way this is about pointers. Like, these are already, like, beautiful pointers, but let's, let's see. Let's see what mine looks like. Maybe I have some absolutely ridiculous code gen. Mm, here's the lock ink on RBX. Oh, that is the, the, cat, uh, the first line. So, yeah, it does look like it might be optimizing that out. Compare with 10. Okay. I mean, this is my code gen. It's not, I wouldn't say this is particularly better code gen. Here's the start of my benchmark. So I, yeah, I load absolute addresses, but I have to load them into registers, right? Because you can't use a 32-bit offset. So at the end of the day, it's just the same as a pointer regardless. Right? Here's my producer side, my consumer side. So, like, m maybe you could make a... M I, I don't think there's an argument there, to be honest. You use Clang on the C++ side? No, I used uh, G++. Um, yeah, but I just have the lock XAD. And my dependencies are way larger. I mean, that's a close dependency on that shift. But I have to do that. Beautiful pause. And then that's, that's the end. Uh, that's the end of my barrier. And then here's the timestamp to end the benchmark. So like, I'm still loading that shit in a register. It's no different. I guess I don't have the outside function call, but at the end of the day, all of my internal stuff is assuming that like R9 and, and shit. I don't know. Both of them have the same layouts where they're flat structures. They're not nested allocations. So they, they have the same properties as long as this ends up in a register. Now, if these were really low addresses, then in theory, I could get rid of these moves, but these moves don't cost anything anyways. I don't know. That's, that's my thought. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't, think it's, uh, I don't think it's a minor side effect of that. I think it's that I don't have compare exchanges. And compare exchanges are very, very, very expensive operations. Um, yeah, I think I'm just, I think mine's just better. Do you want to try the other queue? What was the other queue in uh, fucking Rust? But yeah, I'm, I'm fucking slaughtering it. I, I don't know what, what else to say. I could go to, uh, we could cut this down from a mil to 100,000. And then we can start doing, like, uh, benchmarks across Numa nodes and shit. Which really starts to get wacky, but let's go to, like, 32 threads. So, all of them are going to be, like, pegging one of the Numa nodes, but it's fair. Because it's the same threads, the same allocations, and, and everything for both. Arguably, I'm giving one of them 14 and one 18. I could flip them. 
You want me to flip those? Maybe I'm somehow giving one of them a more advantageous one. Maybe I'm terrible in this benchmark. Oh, no, that was mine. Uh, wait, there's didn't print. Let's just add a bigger sleep. It's kind of shit, but. I'm beating that. Um. Okay. And yeah, I guess the only thing I can think of is that maybe for some reason I'm just getting slightly better memory. My GS is in line with this, so my GS will be right here. In fact, I have the barrier here, which actually, let's do this. Now it's apples to apples because my Q starts at the start of GS, which will be at 14 and theirs starts at the start of theirs. So this is now apples to apples. Maybe they flip. No, no. It's it's not a it's not like a small memory layout thing. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense because I don't think we're straddling a, a Numa boundary with either of these allocations. So yeah, it's just it's just almost twice as fast with multiple producers and consumers. Um. That's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> if, if I do say so myself. Uh, we're not benchmarking latency, but I'd imagine that I had a better latency too. I think I just have a better design. I think another issue that I, I spotted in his, and I, I'm, I'm not sure, because once again, I don't know how C++ works. And, and I'm not trying to shit on this dude, because this dude's obviously fucking brilliant. Like, this is a great design. Um... There's a reason that he crushes pretty much everyone else in benchmarks. So, uh, in, yeah, this is the Atomic Q2. So, this is what we're looking at. So, this is going to do do pop any and do push any. And first of all, I think he keeps his uh, tails maybe mapped. I'm not 100% sure. And when he does pop any, he does a, a compare exchange right away, right? And it's pretty much never correct, in my opinion, to ever do a compare exchange prior to doing just a straight load. Like, you should never go immediately into your atomic. You should first do non-atomic compares, quick fucking non-barriered compares, until you have proven that it's in the state, and then you can try and, and win. Now, this is actually fighting. Mine, mine's a fair queue, and this is an unfair queue, and I think that's one reason why. It, it's the same advantage for a ticket lock versus a non-ticket lock, because this is fighting uh, to get ownership of a queue entry, whereas I am inferring ownership based on the ticket that I get, which is really, really interesting. Um, so in my case, I don't, even, I don't even do an atomic operation until I've proven with non-atomic operations, because these loads of relax are just loads in a loop. Just, it's just a load in a loop. So I don't even bother. Uh, well, in this case, I actually know I have ownership at this point. I, I, think, I think mine's just a better design, dude. I literally just think it's a better design. I think his is fantastic, and I think it's... 99% of the way there, putting things on cache aligned boundaries is important. The layout of your data structures are important. But like, I think if you were to, to probe expected for, uh, yeah, if you were to probe for expected prior to doing the compare exchange, because this is in a loop, right? Um, wait, wait, no, it does it ahead of time. Maybe I misread. Uh... It does the compare exchange right away, and then it waits until it is stored. If maximized throughput, which actually is set in my case. Do speculative loads while busy waiting to avoid broadcasting RFO messages? Yeah, and that totally makes sense. So RFO is request for ownership. So that's a, that's a cache um, 
that's a cache coherency term. Basically, when you write to memory or you try to write to memory, you have to basically tell the other cores like, hey, I need control of this. I need ownership, request for ownership, which you're blasting to all the other cores on the system. It's super, super loud. Like just reading and writing memory is very expensive. So you want to keep writes to an absolute minimum. So yeah, I think maybe I'm just winning on not doing compare exchange. I, I think it's interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm also doing probably a slightly different benchmark than he's doing. Um, I, I don't know. Like maybe maybe there's small nuance in the difference of our of our things, but we're using the same Q sizes, the same Q value. Like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's working kind of in the same way. Um, I don't know. I, I think I just have a really good design, man. Like, I don't know what to say. I think it's just better. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a dick. I think it's just a better design. It's fair. Basically, you, you get exclusive control over your index, and then you don't grab ownership of that until you wait your turn. So if there are multiple people stampeding for the same slot, like... I don't know. I think it's just a better design. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible, honestly. Like, I didn't... This was not the plan for this stream. I was planning on doing, like, completely different wacky things. I, I honestly didn't think of this design until we just started writing it, and it kind of came to me. But I think it's really good. I think it optimizes really well. And you, you got a really, really, really weak uh, ordering here. So you just, it's super, super nice and chill. Like, this is all relaxed, and this is all relaxed. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think I like it more. Thoughts? Are you going to publish it? Probably not. I could. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Atomic Fix Size Q. Well, right now, it, it, it has some blunders in that you can't get an option out of this, but, um, I actually have a solution to that. Have we tried on ARM? I don't have any ARM boxes with reasonable cores. I only have, like, an 8-core ARM. So, that's pretty fucking good. I don't know. I can I can just put this in a paste for now. But the the way that I actually would handle this is basically here. I would say if ticket uh is greater than uh or equal to self dot tail dot zero blah blah blah. You know, if this then uh return uh error uh ticket and then you come back with the ticket. So the API would be like, you, you, if it fails, or, or if it is empty, I say like, yo, you tried to consume something, but nothing was there to consume. When you come back around, use this as your ticket, because this ticket needs to be used. Like, you can't discard that ticket, because you, you reserved your place in line, and if it... If you find out that the list is not empty and you come back to revisit it, you have to pop that entry, which means that we should be able to introduce that with basically like no additional cost, right? So anyways, yeah, we can just post this up. Let's get rid of, I got rid of the cross beam dependency on there, I think. But yeah, I mean, it passes Miri. Like, this would fail instantly, pretty much, if there were issues. Especially if we want to, like, fewer, fewer entries and shit. Yeah, I think it's good. All right, chat, I'll post this.
Um, looks good. Even passes Clippy. Let's go. MPM CQ. All right, so here is the code. And I'll put it in show and tell as well in Discord. All right, chat. So I'm going to wrap it up there just because it's fucking six. I should go to bed. So thanks for stopping by. Uh, I actually have to join these videos together because OBS crashed. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to do editing, so I'm not going to immediately be able to put up the VOD. But I think this was actually a really interesting stream. I think we did some interesting benchmarking and perf stuff and showed some of the benefits of Sushi Roll and Low Noise and talked about Numa nodes. And I think it was just an interesting stream because at the end of the day, it's only 100 lines of code. Like, it's not hard to understand what we're doing here. Um, so yeah, I, I will be curious. Maybe I found out in the next day or so that like I'm missing a, a massive fucking thing here that's like an obvious blunder or mistake, but I'm pretty sure this key works. I don't see why it wouldn't. Like, I'm pretty sure this is actually just correct, and I think it's a really good queue design. So thanks for stopping by. Hope you had fun. Don't forget to join the Discord. Uh, I have a Discord. Uh, you can find a link for it on the on the streaming thing so under the streaming palace there's a discord link join the discord the discord will announce when the stream goes live um yeah hope you had fun with that all right see you later